Old World Florida. Old World Florida. Old World Florida. Dude, I'm telling you, dude. Dr. Narco Longo came on and dropped the hammer of the guy. America's mother, daughter of Atlantis. God sent the weatherman. The devil sent the Spanish. Florida is Eden, the phantom of Newton. Kali is deception. So Florida is the truth. Welcome to Florida, baby. What's up guys? How's everyone doing out there? Let us know how our audio is sounding, etc. as everyone fills in. And uh, very excited about today. This is a, you know, momentous point time in history, you know, etched forever. It is the birthday, you could say, of Florida. Three, three, and there's a lot to unpack there with the numerology, with the astrology, Pisces, Florida, fish. But um, we're going to be celebrating Florida. We're going to be talking about a little bit of Florida history. Definitely some alternative, you know, critiques of our mainstream history. We're going to be talking about what Florida has offered the world since its inception as a, you know, American territory. And... We're going to be getting into a lot of stuff, but we've got our Florida VIP varsity all American team right here. What up, what up? We've got, we've got El Chosen Juan, the uh, Puerto Rican pirate himself, the, uh, <laughs> late, the ladler of, of homunculus uh, gravy. Then we've got Spencer from Florida. You guys know TikTok, et cetera. Matt, Matthew McHarrelson, as we like to call him, <laughs> um, Woody, McCon Woody McConaughey. But, um, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, you know, he's our go-to guy for weather mod, maritime law, you know, a lot more to come. It's hard to sum up. Then we've got Henry Shagler here, the man, the legend himself, Seth Balin, author of... Oh, what do we got here? The Fruit Companion. Okay. America's number one guide to fruit, grocery store fruit. You know, the different uh, classifications. Nice. Things you want to know if, you, if you're getting into holistic that, living. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's too modest, too humble with his, uh, with his stuff, but he's killing it with the book. It's going and, on the website. You know, Seth's a pretty good authority when it comes to music, when it comes to clean living in general, and that's why he's here. You guys know him. You know all these peeps. But Thank uh, thanks for being here, everyone. Thank yeah. you for having me, bro. Appreciate it. Juan, Juan, what do you think about Florida's birthday? Did you know it was Florida's birthday? When did you find that out? When you called me earlier this week and was like, hey, let's do a stream on the third. And I was like, three, three. What? Really? And I mean, I've covered Florida history quite a quite a lot. And 
Henry Shagler here, we were talking about how the the mainstream history that they present to us is kind of unbelievable. And I, I want to get his thoughts on that because I've always talked about the Flaglers, all the Henrys, Henry Plant, John D. Rockefeller, all these guys. And it's like it's, something's up. But yeah, I found out when, when you call me Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. So interesting. And I linked it to some other stuff, which we can get into because I know we talked about Siesta key not too long ago with the quartz sand and how it's all being drawn into that one spot how it's a magical place and i've gotten this question a lot it's like what is it about florida that's so special what what's it what's in the water in florida what's going on in florida what kind of homunculi are they making in florida and i got some really interesting stuff i want to share later on today which i, I want to get y'all's opinion on so i'm excited to get into this one Sweet. Awesome. Spencer. What's up? Dude. What's up? Florida's, Florida's birthday. When did you catch wind of that? Um, I, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I believe I've heard you mention it a year ago. Did you know about it a year ago? Yeah, I definitely mentioned it in some of my videos. I think we did a live stream around this time last year. It wasn't on the day. We caught it this year. Yeah, I believe but that's I think, I think when I first heard about it. With Mario, I think, was when we dug went into that the deepest with uh, now, symbolic studies. Shout out. And how do you decide the birthday? Who decided the birthday? Is this the uh, commercial state of Florida or the old world state of Florida? Wonderful. I don't want to I don't want to skip over Seth here. I was going to let him do uh, a little intro. Cool. But that, ahead, that that is the fucking home run that I want to get into. But All right, let me Seth, write it down then. Seth, my dude, when did you catch wind of Florida's birthday or, you know, just your first, at a first glance, what did it kind of mean to you? Yeah, so just over a year ago, I started listening to your podcasts and you were talking about how Florida is Pisces because it was established in March, you know, and uh, I always appreciated that link to astrology. It even looks like a fish, you know, all the way down to the geography. Um so that's really interesting. And I'm thinking more about 3-3, three, three, you know, and obviously if you know anything about secret societies, you know, that's the highest degree that we know of, of the Scottish Rite for Masonry. It's also the degree that ice changes from a solid state to liquid. So it has to do with transformation of, of state of matter. And one other little thing I'll add on to that about 3-3 three, three is that most of the zip codes in Florida begin with, yes, Three three. Mine so does. All of all of the three three blank 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 codes belong in Florida. Damn. They also have some three four and some three two. I was like really digging around and trying to see, but they have all of the three three XXX um, zip codes. Coming out with dude. dingers, Seth. Damn. You just came For out with some dingers, bro. For real, <laughs> dude. Seth just changed the game right up right <laughs> off the top. I did not know that. I punch that in almost every day. Never thought about that. Never thought about other states having different starting two digits. What Dang about your man. parallel? What about your Dang. parallel? Well, 30, oh, yeah. 33 is a little north. Just a little north. Of we have the 28. Florida. Yeah, Miami's at 25. 31. Miami's at 25, and Jacksonville is about like 30 or 31. What was the yeah. 33 over in Clearwater you covered by the Scientology? What was that going on? What were we... Is that a line of longitude? Well, I, no? think, I think that was just... Uh, C crystal C's letter three, letter mm -hmm. number three. I don't remember exactly, but they have the crystal classic in Siestiki, which is a three three. There's a lot of three threes over there. I'm not there, sure though. We what you talked mean? about it on your channel. It's part of the it's part of the uh, longitudinal line. Maybe it's the thirty third line going through Clearwater, and they bought up all these properties. Maybe a Scientology or something. We well, yes, Sci that much I do know. Scientology owns Clearwater, Florida now. The I'll majority of yeah. private property is in Scientology hands. I don't know about the the um so three three, but Disney yeah. is Disney, Cape Canaveral, SpaceX, NASA is on the twenty eighth. And I'm I don't know if Plants Hotel crosses the twenty eighth. Twenty eighth degree of Templarism is the degree of the yes. sun. Sunshine state. We know that the sun Provides a lot of life for Earth. 
you know, can also take it. According to some, I mean, I don't know where you guys stand with it. I don't know if space is fake and gay anymore or what it is, but what is the sun? Right, we, where the sunshine state is the sun a portal? Is it a star? Like what? What are you? What are you guys' thoughts on that? Right, the sunshine state. We're gonna get into all this, especially the the, the numerology with the three three. And you brought up a good point with Disney. You have the thirty three club, the mm-hmm. thirty three. Uh, you, you know, uh, that's something that Disney, Mormonism, and um, Scientology all have in common is they kind of published the secrets of Freemasonry without being permitted or given the official green light for doing so. And that's okay. We're, we'll get into that. Spencer brought up my favorite question pertaining to this topic. Three, three. I know that there's someone out there in the comments already. You know, it's completely organic reaction to you know celebrating a birthday is well of a place not a human would be well three three like isn't that just some political you know quick little artificial arbitrary like man's creation you know did just because we named a place something and it joined some republic that god's never heard of you know that mother nature's never heard of does that matter now there's truth to this critique that, you know, Florida joining the Republic does not make it uh, matter. You know, the 3-3 three, three is not a significant date. That were, that would be the case if in ancient times the people of Florida did not attribute it to the constellation of Pisces. Florida was a Pisces in ancient times. Now, it's, it's hard to say, you know, was a Pisces, but Florida's birthday today is 3-3, which is in Pisces. In ancient times, I can't tell you when they signed the legislation of Florida into place, but I can tell you that all of the ancient burial mounds, earthworks, shell middens, all of them in Florida, if there's any exceptions to this, I haven't came across them, all of the mounds in Florida are aligned to the constellation Pisces. All of them. All the aspects of the constellation of Pisces, all the neighboring uh, micro, you know, smaller constellations are represented in the earthworks of Florida. So, not only that, if we look in the micro at one mound complex, you'll have one mound here, one mound here, one mound here. So the micro arrangement will be two Pisces. Then you zoom out, go to Google Maps, and you're looking at the state of Florida. And you will, in the macro, the arrangements will be. You'll have Crystal River on this part of the state. You know, uh, like Jackson Mounds over here and farther north. So you can plot all the sites that we were already looking at into the bigger state and zoom out. Even then, they align to the sign Pisces, align to the constellation of Pisces. This is like Egyptian empire level city planning and astro architecture, astro topography. So I'm going to show you all this too. You know, I hope, I know I didn't do a good job of describing it, but we're going to look at it. We're going to look at the alignments. Shout out to Andis Collins, who did most of what we're going to look at with the constellations. But, um, Seth, we'll start with you. What's, like, what is, you know, what's your take on that? The Astro and... I mean, I don't even know if that's true. If it is, it's pretty mind-blowing. It, it is indicative of how in tune these natives were with the cosmos. But, like I said, at this point, in my mind, that's just a claim that's been made. I have no idea if that's true or not. Um, but it would blow my mind, I think. <laughs> I think it would too. Well, we also have, I mean, we, we did a Miami full moon meetup and we walked to Miami circle, which has a similar type of, uh, you know, astrological stonework there in the ground. And I forget exactly what that one reflects, but is it these, it seems like these motherfuckers were like, just so in tune with the cosmos. 
and the natural world. I mean, I'm going to be bringing in a little bit of the element of the the natural world in Florida as far as like the flora. I mean, flora, duh, Florida, right? And Ooh, you know, nice. Especially in Miami, you just get botanical garden after, you know, preserve after orchid garden after coconut palm, you know, groves like. So the natural world was was huge for these people. And the fact that it was including the cosmos, I think I think that's beautiful. Are these the ones you're talking about, Narco? Well said, Henry Shagler. Awesome. Uh, Juan, did, like this is what we're looking at, yeah? That's what a typical Florida earthwork, you know, mound, temple mound, city. These are, these are, there were old metropolises in Florida, guys. Tallahassee, Tampa Bay, depending on who you ask, Miami. These what are, is the cities that have been here for thousands of years have had hundreds of thousands of people congregated together around them at different points in time yes Spencer. what was that crescent moon shape i see those in um in like lakes and stuff that the crescent moon shape what is that it's very familiar pattern for me right well usually what they're showing is i don't know how to say it but it's like the lunar max they're they're mapping the, the span of the sky where the moon will at its southernmost set and at its northernmost will set. Um, even though it's all okay. to the east, you're looking at where the moon kind of, uh, you know, sometimes, some days it'll be far away from where the sun rises, sometimes it'll be farther south. And they're mapping the span, the widest path that the moon can take on two separate days of the year. Wow. Wait, I want to just add one one more thing in on the um, the Pisces, because would this potentially mm -hmm. indicate that they were building these mounds in the age of Pisces, which would have been in the last two thousand years? Ooh, that's, that's definitely what other ancient peoples have done to like prove their place in time forever, so that it right. can never be it can never be confused, it can never be you know written over. That's Definitely. Like you get the bull sacrifice, bull statues, bull deities more in the age of Taurus, 100%. However, in Pisces, I think they were aware of a link between Poseidon or like some sea deities and Florida. And the fact that it's like every you know, one in Florida is being built in the shape of Pisces. We would have to see a bunch of others like uh, built during Leo. Like I don't see any Leo mounds. I don't see any. So well, what about the, um, the sphinxes the, that look like lions and stuff? Yes, they did. 100% in Eurasia, you find tons of complexes mapped to Leo, mapped to to other ones. But here's my thing. You could you're you could be 100% right. Uh Mr. Shagler, but it would have to be that in the last 2000 years they built a whole bunch of stuff and then for the 20,000 years before that they built nothing. And then in the age of Pisces before that they would have been built. If if you're like strictly adhering to that of they only built during Pisces, I think it's more of a location a local link to a god or a constellation that they want favor from where they see a link between their place like in in um you know it's it's the qualities it was astrology was more intuitive back then they didn't have a book where they just listed off the qualities of a, of a sign uh, pisces is wet it's flowing water you know it's elderly old people like it there it's got this element of youth and rebirth or well, el elderly, staying young, trying to stay young, that's a very Piscean concept. When you go to a place like Egypt with the Sphinx, you see a very hot, dry environment. That's totally indicative of Leo too. So it's it could work both ways that they build, you know, during a sign to show mark their point in time, but also. They would simply just liken where they live 
to their favorite constellation or the proper constellation. And the fact that Florida came back around and was was punched, it, it had its modern ticket, you know, punched in 3-3, three, three, I think is that God, you know, works the same way through different ages. He Even though a bunch of people voted on it and you said, oh, well, this person signed it and they delayed it one day because of this, it's still God at the end of the day. And God wanted it to fall back in the same spot. That's yeah, just... even if even if it wasn't a planned ritual, but it's like, let's be serious, everything a lot of these controllers do is ritualistic. But even if it wasn't, give people the benefit of the doubt, then there may be this element of synchro mysticism where it just happens that way. Because like you yes. said, God was just like, no, 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 this is this is the pattern and we're going to just play it through. <laughs> yeah, really... that, 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 that's at the it's core fun. of a lot of ideas, right? Are these people in power into this sort of stuff? Or is it all coincidence? And by this sort of stuff, I'm talking about the occult using numerology, astrology, whatever it is to. And it goes back to even the ancients, I, I think, believed. And it's all about capturing the essence of said constellation or said, right, drawing down that power from those stars, that cluster, that group of stars and being able to then use that in whatever in a ritualistic. I mean, we can't ignore the fact that the indigenous people had their rituals and had their superstitions and had their their mystical beliefs so and if we follow that same line of thought and if we follow the fact that these elites come in and corrupt that or use it for their own benefit it would make sense that they would put it right where the indigenous people wanted it to begin with you know what i'm saying too because they know that that's the whole thing with skull and bones skull the bones right it's like well they're magical they're talismans so let's keep them. And what happens if, if I keep it? You know, I'm, I'm going to have some of that rub off rub off on me. And I think it follows that same train of thought. If our friend Henry Shagler is saying, if these guys were into this sort of stuff, which in my opinion, I think they were. I'd like to chime in on uh, superstitions and <clears throat> physics and metaphysics, because something as simple as a rain dance like most people think it's just metaphysical superstition but these guys are creating a vortex around a fire it works just like a distiller they're literally pounding boom chica, boom chica, boom chica, boom you have a vortex going vertically these are negatively charged dust particles going straight up into a vortex when it hits a specific part in the point in the atmosphere you have what you have is this like combustion location the electrostatics they were creating rain they were using weather modification. That is the real deal. You can recreate that and make weather. So there's always like when you hear a metaphorical story that sounds crazy and exotic, we tell our kids to sing songs to understand things. And it may sound silly, but there's almost always a direct physical reference to the metaphysical. And when you really learn the both of them, they almost become one in the same, like the dielectric. Do you guys know what the dielectric is in physics? Like Ken Wheeler always talks about. Yeah. So to me, it's like, I can connect with both sides because I'm like, there's always a direct connection because you can't have one without the other almost. And so every time I hear this stuff, I'm like, wait a second, there's more to that metaphysically or there's more to that physically. There's a connection. It's not just, uh, that's, that's where I stand with like that kind of stuff. So there's always more to what they were doing, why they were doing it. I think the stars, I don't know if you guys know, do the stars directly connect to ley lines and, and ways angularly and geometrically? Well, there's, there's astrocartography. So based on, you know, your astrology, there's these parts of the earth that will light up energetically for you. So I don't know, like Longo, what, what do you know about all that stuff? Yes, that's a great point. Ley lines, astrocartography, to me, ley line gets is one of the most overused, like, you know, watered down words at this point, you know? Yeah. And then you have the other side, it's like every spot on earth is perfectly good for everything so that's true too but there are certain places if we're linking astrology to um ley lines i just want i just like to think real simple like real simple i don't need to see a chart to convince me of you know every time i see map ley line maps they're just like it seems very empty to me like i don't i'm not convinced i don't see a system that's that explains the reason behind it There's yeah no i see a model. grid it's like a grid. principle and I, i'd like to say that to me let's keep it simple the the biggest ley line the only ley line that's really going to matter to me is where do people want to live 
where do people actually move their bodies to and gravitate there? yeah they're drawn to it so i come across this the 31st the 31st to 30th degree parallel north is the most desired place to live people choose to live there the majority of the world's population lives in the 30th degree parallels north and south the largest group of people anywhere live in the 30th degree parallel north the 30th degree parallel north determines the border between florida and georgia the 31st degree parallel north determines the border between florida and alabama and texas and mexico it. and mississippi and louisiana yep so i want to get into this we're uh, but let's not get ahead of yeah. this we're all we're all bringing up too many good points i want to talk about the pisces you know let's yeah. see the let's see the uh see the seed potatoes yeah here we have the macro this is the mars this is the stars of cetus 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 however you want to say it which is the whale sea serpent sea monster depending on who you ask it's the whale or the sea monster right next to pisces just crossing into pisces too so what you're seeing is the macro view of florida and these are some of florida's most significant sites starting bottom left with the red arrow pointing up that is crystal river site one of florida's most significant ancient mound complexes there's three mounds plotted in in a style that the maya used and this tv network went over there and they said okay well there's three here i've studied maya pyramids elsewhere and i know that there will be a fourth well where's the fourth it's in a swamp it's not in the park it's right where the fourth should be but it's not included in the park it's in a swamp and they said okay they lidar it sure enough mayan step pyramid <laughs> in florida and they know it was a step pyramid you can go see the lidar scans yourself it is clearly geometric it's not like one of these florida earth mounds that's kind of ramped you know they got ramps it slopes up this one was more step style but it was submerged in like a swamp so that's crystal river bottom left right there they find maya glyphs there maya mammiform tetrapod pottery which is unique to the maya but found in florida oddly enough the archaeologists don't really like to touch this they say that this area is home to florida's only known petroglyph that's not true because there's one in newport ritchie which you guys have all seen on the channel with the two faces that one's not far though from here so that's crystal river site and i won't i'm not going to go through all of them but just so you understand the gravity of how big that one site is all these other uh points plotted across florida are similar sites like mounds earthworks a temple complex so all these pl plotted points are mound complexes so what you've got is the exact stars corresponding in a very close, you know, mirrored, like they're proportioned the same way. And you decide. We're going to flip through some more here. That's the macro. Bro, the, the Wendover go Boggs? The, micro. the Wendover yeah. Boggs is one of those? Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. Now... We're going to go into the micro here. So it's going to switch and, it, it, you know, it'll be harder to tell where we are, but you're going to be seeing mounds in relation to each other, like at one, each one of these sites. Okay. Now here's so you can see yourself, the comparisons. He's not trying to convince you, but if you'd like to screenshot that and overlay them yourself, you could wow. see how close they get, but he doesn't want to just tell you it. He's giving you the material to check for yourself. You know, do a better job than him if you if you want to, you know, st uh, stress the star maps, etc. 
Yes, Spencer. Longo, um, when I see that, just because something isn't perfect when you're, um, imagine you have a light above your head and there's a throw projecting downward. That wouldn't ex necessarily be exact. There's a throw. So, you know, angularly from the point in perspective, depending on your cosmology, I mean, to me, it's pretty amazing. According Yo, to my idea of cosmology. Dude, if that's right, and you're actually dealing with an angle, an angular throw of light from above, then it can actually, you can actually triangulate when exactly they may have built these things. Now if, we're talking time. If you're talking the about the light coming from the constellation Pisces, does it come down? Does it cast a shadow? Does it then, if you know, hey, you have elevation of a certain amount, I'm not sure. This is making me think, man. I don't know. I, I, I see that there could be, everyone wants everything to be perfect, but like, like what I'm saying is depending on your belief of cosmology and how light would come in, whether you're a firmament, you know, or still a, a heliosexual, I mean, there's always a, there's always a throw involved. <laughs> there's always a throw involved. So, I mean, it's darn close considering the cosmology I believe in. If you, I don't even want to get into explaining yeah. it, but you got, you guys see what I'm saying, right? Oh yeah. Does your, t does your Tinder profile say geosexual? <laughs> Heliosexual. I'm a global sexual. I'm, a global guys, sexual. I'm a Cuomo sexual. Um, I'm geosensual. <laughs> I'm a Cuomo sexual. Hey, Longo, the Cross Creek mounds are still unincorporated to this day right now in Alachua. Um, by Alachua right. connecting Orange and Loch Lusa Lakes. That's a big deal. Unincorporated is always a big deal, in my opinion. Wait, it's you said nice. Alachua? Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a short stream connecting or Orange and Loch Lusa lakes. You know, it has that has the word Allah in it. And I drove Allah Tua, Allah Tua. Yeah, I was I drove through Alapata in Miami today, and there's okay. Aladdin City, Aladdin City, which also has the yeah. word Allah. And then yes, I mean, sir. Longo brought this up last like years ago. Yeah, yeah. I've been keeping a running list of more towns and cities and rivers and locations oh, that yeah. have the word Allah literally just straight up in there or all, yes. you know, starting with AL. I mean, here yeah. we go again. Just and if, another if one. You're, if you're new to the class, you have Alabama, Dallas, Tallahassee. Yep. I mean, it's right there. So. Yeah. I overlaid the Allah. constellations. If you want to see it, Narco. It, wow. It, it kind of, I mean, dude, it's not perfect, but. Again, it's not ever gonna. I don't believe it's gonna be perfect. So if you lined oh, up, that's pretty three, dang close, though, dude. It's pretty close. I mean, but think yeah. about it. the The concept of Florida aligning geographically with the the star. I mean, that's that'd be wild. That'd be wild. The chances of that happening. And I mean, these are not just random. These aren't just like you know a little mound in my front yard. Let me <laughs> call and get it plotted. These are the major sites in Florida. This is also, I would say, you know, it's not. Damn, dude, you're pretty good with that. Wow, Juan. You like that? You like what I do? You like yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, faded it. Fuck, let me, baby. Let me, show, let me show you what else I can do. Fade it in and out like that. <laughs> what are the two on so the here, side? It tick eye. Hang on. Window I don't want to. Let's let's keep it moving, guys. I don't want right. to rest. I don't want to rest the whole theory on one. There's a shit ton of these that we can flip through. Okay. And that's that's the macro. So here we have Shield Mound, Grant Mound, and this is, would be the Fish Hook, which Hold is... On. My bad, bro. Can you show it again from the beginning? No, that was... Yeah, that's it. That's just where... That's where it was. Oh, I skipped one. Yeah, I did skip one. Rollins Shell Ring. This is the Rollins Shell Ring. Topographic map select highlights and the corresponding stars at the Fishtails in Pisces. So you have the fishtail of Pisces being represented here. You've got the stars plotted on the right, the map, you know, the topographic map of this place on the left. Pretty dang close. The Rollins shell ring and mounds at Fort George Island Cultural State Park in Florida mark stars of Pisces from the tails of the fish upward. The entire complex represents the profile of a human head with the upper stars of Pisces marking the hair. And I think Andis Collins, if Andis Collins is the Andy Collins, who's been involved in like uh, Atlantis in, in the Caribbean and Bimini, this guy's like huge 
instrumental in the uncovering of Bimini and a lot of the strange things they find around Bimini. Well, what was so his name again? And this, this is and this Cowlins, K A U L I N. That's that's uh weirdly similar to Collins, yeah. Cool, and yeah, hard to double check. And yeah. also, right, we're, we're on this. You said that long, long, uh, longevity is that how you say it? Long, longevity, uh, you know, longevity. longevity. I'm, I'm a little slow. Uh, no, longevity, immortality. Uh, long life. You said it's our Pisces qualities, Longo. Is that what you said earlier? Because Bimini was where allegedly yes. Juan Ponce de Leon was told that yes. the fountain of youth was, which again was a land allegedly occupied by the Maya. Yeah. So good point. Let's zoom out here. We're going to keep flipping through these, but let's just do a recap, a little quick little Florida history recap, because it does connect to Pisces and the fountain of youth. Florida was discovered discovered 1513 Juan Ponce de Leon set foot uh, not far from right now but I think it was late March or April um, it was you know it was a uh, Easter Florida takes its name officially from the Pascua Florida celebration the what Our celebration Pascua Florida. I live in Pasco. Is, I live in Pasco County. Oh yeah. I made that link also links to Pisces. My man. The, fest, the festival of flowers. Um, nice. This is the, in the Easter festival. And at that time when Ponce de Leon named um, Florida, Florida, he hadn't discovered Florida, you know, obviously if, if you're critiquing the mainstream, but even in the mainstream, you had a map made in 1510 by Peter Martyr, I think. And in 1510, they labeled Florida as Bimini. Florida's name was Bimini. Not just the little island off the Bahamas. This was Florida itself, known as Bimini. Why does that matter? Because when Ponce de Leon went through the Caribbean, went through the Bahamas, he was told by the Lucayans, that by the Taino, that by the Arawak, that there is a land called Bimini, where you can get restored back to young age. And, you know, believe it or not, the, the original account of Ponce de Leon searching for the Fountain of Youth was not him trying to stay young forever. It was him trying to regain his sexual performance. He was impotent. It, it is rumored that it is imp that he was impotent. But when they went through Florida, it was commonly remarked upon by the Europeans that Flor Floridians had no such problem. They had never even heard of erectile dysfunction. Whereas the Spanish, even on this organic grass fed, you know, uh, pork beef from the 1500s, even though there was no chemicals and, you know, factory farming uh still were dying at like 45 couldn't get it up you know you could blame it on the rum they were sailors and conquistadors but whatever <laughs> they were having they were having all these issues the floridians were not having those issues and the floridians especially were known for their you know vitality for their real for their you know sexual energy let's just say it especially and the Spanish went to Florida. That's a wonderful map form. Thank you. The Spanish went to Florida. Is that Cetus right there? Yeah. That's sea the, monster? That's the sea monster. Yeah, that's the dolphin. I think they, they used to call those dolphins or something. Like wow. Neviathan. Um, well, I was thinking about the word. I didn't mean to cut you off, but dolphin has the word fin in it. I know like yes. fins and finish, you know, there's just a connection to the water travelers, but... Mm -hmm. a little yeah. interjection there no for sure the phoenicians you know there's all these links between the natives of florida and israelites ancient phoenicians ancient canaanites we can get in, into that too um ponce de leon was looking for the fountain of youth and this whole pursuit of anti-aging 
is one that is a signature that Florida still carries to this day. So to say that Florida isn't the fountain of youth, you know, is kind of foolish. It's, um, you know, you've just got to widen your interpretation. And it, it clearly does meet the mark. And you've got the highest concentration of freshwater springs in Florida. So the water itself is clean, pure, fresh, right from the tap. It oozes up. It doesn't You don't have to climb a mountain to get it, like mountain spring water. It literally oozes up from sea level. It's, you know, few places in the world like that where water, fresh water bursts up with such force that there's freshwater vents in the ocean off of St. Augustine, off of Tampa Bay that push up with such force, such magnitude that you could drop a bucket in the ocean if you're on top of one of these places and pull up fresh water because there's such a large outpour of fresh water. So the whole state is pretty much like that. That's You've a wild map. Springs. It is a crazy map. It says Espiritu Santo right here. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Bay of the Holy Spirit is, depending on who you ask, they referred to Tampa Okeechobee, Bay right? by that name. And then they were referring to some parts of Tarpon Springs by that name, uh, Spring mm. Bayou. Laguna del Espiritu Santo right here is, I, I think this is Okeechobee because I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Laguna, yes. so. Do you know the year on that map? I am looking for Dude. it. Let's see here. I don't see one. This is UI. I've got that map too. I don't, I don't know. How to do it. it doesn't say a year, but I can find it. This, map is, this map is interesting because have you guys ever seen that uh, doomsday map that's out there that has the flooding of like, California's flooded and like there's a lot of flooded um US land and I was a little surprised that Florida most of Florida was like on the doomsday map was not <laughs> was above water and I'm like what's going on here but then you looked at what the doomsday map like literally Bill Gates owns all of the land on the doomsday map it's pretty funny Yikes yeah but Flo well, Florida was like guys high. only like, let it be known only god can flood the earth the illuminati never can they never will they, they can for a day they can flood it for a day or two but that's about it i agree like they can hit a bot they can cause tsunamis but we're in a fishbowl folks <laughs> if, now, if, if the if the iceberg melts come on put ice in your glass put ice cubes in your glass when it melts the water level isn't going to yes change. exactly yeah you could fill up a glass of coke as high as you want to a mountain of ice sticking up out of the top as long as that coke's not overflowing when you sp started that sea level's not going anywhere but down so it's not the narrative they're trying to push on us but there is something that we need these to be mountains cognizant Flo of. the floodgates the floodgates the gates well, of heaven like sometimes i do definitely believe to that level thanks to you guys we don't have anything to worry about I'm not so, worried. So long as we don't keep waving the rainbow in God's face, oh. rubbing it, rubbing it in, rubbing in the promise that He made to us, mm -hmm. I will not flood the earth again. So long as you hold my covenant. Well, the rainbow was the sign, the fingerprint, the the signature on His promise to us, and you have these these uh. LGBTQ letter mafia homunculi mocking God's promise to us through their inverted, perverted, false six color rainbow. It's lacking what array, so it's incomplete. And six exalts Saturn, whereas seven exalts Jupiter. Jupiter's symbol is a 21 disguised as a four. That's seven plus seven plus seven. Jupiter's the jackpot. Juan, you like that one, don't you? I uh, love that seven, one, bro. Seven, seven, seven is the jackpot. Six, six, six is Saturn. That's the devil. That's material existence. Not necessarily evil, but if you're restricted to that, yeah, it's evil. Yeah, it's bad. And what you have is them mocking the covenant, them tempting God. They're teasing God. Oh, look at me. I'm going to hack all my hair off. 
gain a million pounds, work at Starbucks, and worship Satan, you know, give every g cool New Age topic a bad name by associating with it, you know, all these slobs with blue hair and stuff like that, um, those people are begging God to flood the earth again. Begging. Okay? And if they outnumber us, I'll welcome it. Okay? But if we can turn the tides on that, no pun intended, if we can turn the tides on that and stop mocking the rainbow or at least get the proper rainbow up, you know, on the flag, we need to take back the rainbow, which is, we're going to take back the N-word first, then we're going to take back, <laughs> then we're going to take back <laughs> the rainbow. Okay. Wait, so, what, so what color are you adding back Jeez. in? Are you adding in, indigo? Yeah, I think they're missing a blue. They miss. There's like blue, indigo, violet, and they just have blue yeah. and purple. A lot of times they'll add they'll add uh, brown for sodomy, I assume. <laughs> for right, but you've got the. It goes red. This is you know the God's rainbow, the real rainbow in nature that's naturally segmented into seven. You don't have to plot it. You don't have to twist it. You've got red. You've got orange, yellow, green, okay? Then you've got blue, but it's like a lighter ray. It's like teal or sky blue almost. Then you've got indigo, which is navy blue, almost at purple. Then you've got your violet, which is overtly like purple. Yeah, thank you. Dude, the Perfect. chat yeah, is can... killing it tonight. Yeah, we're going there's, in. They like it. They like it when I roast the rainbow, rainbow crowd. And by the N word, you mean Nephilim, right? Is that what I saw? Yeah. <laughs> what up, my Nephilim? Oh, I gotta start saying that one. <laughs> but um, so Dude. that's just. I always have to say that. Any anytime anyone talks about the Earth flooding, give me a break. They wish they had that much power. They wish they could create something where they would have a chance to use their bunkers they're not going to get to use their bunkers okay they're just hiding devious disgusting acts in their bunkers there's just so much more media coverage every person has an iphone you have to do everything underground you know the masonic lodges there's good masons out there you know i'm not i'm not saying anytime i rip on me prove it hey guys i'm still cool please let me in at some point just kidding illuminati um, confirmed <laughs> Masonic, lo Masonic lodges do not have windows. If they do have windows, they, they block them out. Um, certain things don't need to be seen. Certain things are done behind closed doors. Evil things especially, and the more evil on the earth, the deeper they have to dig to cover up what they do. So, you know, hey, guys, paint your, paint your roof blue if you're worried. You know, build your own bunker. By all means, go do it. But it's also not a great way to live your life, thinking Speaking. that you're just some some ant that can be reset at any given moment. I detest this this narrative. Speaking this. of underground, speaking of Florida, I want to talk about this story that I saw because we covered Siesta Key not long ago. The seven year old girl that died after getting trapped in sand at Lauderdale by the sea beach. Apparently, they dug a hole in the sand. Little girl jumped in. And the ground sucked her up. They couldn't find her again. And yeah, it's really dark. This happened of this happened on the February twentieth. So I thought it was kind of sort of interesting, Florida news, given that we talked about Siesta Key and the sand away in the courts and everything. And or you mentioned Disney earlier, and you're talking about going underground, underground tunnels. Well, we know that there's an entire complex of tunnels underneath of of Disney. Did they create those tunnels? Because we've always been told since I could remember when I first moved here to Florida, I was like seven or eight years old. You can't build anything underground here because, you know, the water table is too high or whatever. But you have Disney with an entire complex. Did they find that complex and that's why they're there? Or did they actually build it themselves? Like, what's the story there? Because I know we have the tunnels at, what is it, Ybor City? Over oh, everywhere. Toward... I've been in them. I've been in them. They're amazing. Endless. So they're, they're below sea level? Oh yeah, yeah. No, well, they yes. Now Tampa Bay does have some of the highest coastal elevation in Peninsular Florida, 
But there's one of these tunnels. They are they are below sea level. One of these tunnels, guys. If you haven't, if you don't know what tunnels we're talking about, go check out my Tampa Bay Uncovered video. Ebor City, the first 15 minutes is them going through tunnels in Ebor City, which is an old historic district in Tampa. There's the Hillsborough River, I think, which is the one that they're talking about when they say this one chick has a big, like, basement that connects to a tunnel. Yeah. And guess what? The tunnel goes under this, this one under the river under the river and comes up on the other side of town dude you're telling me in the 30s <laughs> a bunch of prohibitionists chiseled underneath a flowing river in a state that is like a complete it's a sponge you know everything's wet everything's connected under there for them to know where they were going and not strike like an unseen you know uh, just void no. filled with water and, and to just flood themselves out and flood the tunnel. You know how dangerous this is to make this tunnel yeah. under a flowing river? So it makes, more sense. it makes more sense that like these tunnels would have been established and then there would have been some type of flood and many of the tunnels remain. Many of them got swallowed up. Uh, yeah. it, and that could I've explain seen, some of the, the mud floods up north as well. It's a good theory. And it's I've red seen, brick too, right? Yeah. I've seen yep. some some tunnels that are like a little more exotic than the others too. Some of them seem like straight aqueducts, water aqueducts, old world, and then some of them seem like pretty elaborate, larger than the other ones, and they're similar to like Chattanooga and um, St. Augustine and um, uh, where else were, did I see those? Um, Pensacola. So like there's there's some tunnels as old as Pensacola and St. Augustine in Ebor, which I thought was crazy, but but some of them are like really just like, but there's yeah, there's no way they always say in the newsreels they're always like, oh yeah, the mafia used them for the prohibition. Were there any Jews in these? The tunnels? mafia used them for the prohibition. <laughs> well, who built them? We know they re used them. Who built them? Damn it! Yeah. The underground, the, the hollow earth Jews. Shem's in the Shem these. is in the tunnel right now. Somebody said in the chat. <laughs> now he's in that tunnel right now. Ebor City. It is worth noting. Yeah, Shem's over the guys. We got Shem on the streets, under the streets, ch <laughs> chasing down leads. He's going to check back with us when he gets back from underground. Y'all are but, brutal, um, man. Shem's e in the tunnel right now. <laughs> uh, guys, Shem's not even Jewish, by the way. I hate to break it to everyone. Ah, come on. He's, he's, Hisp he's Hispanic. He's, uh -oh. he's full blood. He's just Hispanic. Like, he, whatever. I'll let him you know reveal hey, the joke longer longer whatever I, I love tunnels before before i i'll shut up but literally the mind unveiled episode of pensacola in the middle of it they talk about there's a there's a badass tunnel that the people confirmed and they've been in connecting a catholic church and like a children's hospital in pensacola bay under pensacola bay just like you're saying and it's an awesome mind unveiled video it's long but in the middle of it it picks up and it, and it literally proves to you that there's a gorgeous tunnel going through Pensacola Bay. When I say Shout gorgeous, out. it's the same style that I've seen that I've been in. Shout out to Mine Unveiled. Yeah. Daddy Mine Unveiled. Yep. There, there's some OGs. They're OGs. I'll give it to them. I love them. They're Juan, like my you, foundation. Juan, you asked if there, if you know Jewish people had anything to do with the tunnel in Tampa Bay. Ybor City actually was founded by Cuban refugees. Jewish refugees, Russian refugees. It was a huge melting pot of strange, like, you know, groups that had been kicked out of elsewhere. The Cubans came there because they were kicked out of Cuba. Um, cap, you know, capitalist cigar makers, they got kicked out. And then you have, um, yeah, Ebor City, you know, is Ebor, I believe, is Russian. It might be Cuban, but Russian and originally, I don't know. For not sure. a good look, bro. That's all you I'm going to say. You guys will not believe this. It says, look at this, Longo. Can you read yeah. that? No. If you move it over, I think we can. Here, Is I'll that the we'll week? Put you, Which way? Put you that over. way. Oh, shit. <laughs> there you go. A little more. Ybor City is right known there? for boutiques and vintage shops, which also host Cuban and Latin American eateries. The Centro Ybor Mall offers indie fast food and bars and a cinema. 
Housed in 1920s bakery, Ybor City State Museum has exhibits on the cigar industry and the area's immigrant communities. The Gay Boar District? You've been there, what bro. The fuck? <laughs> what the, the fuck is that? That's on the, Google Earth. That's Narco's favorite place. District around... Move it to the left or right a little bit. Your left? Right, no, your right. left. Yeah, the Gay Boar dis- <laughs> The Gay Boar District. <laughs> Their words, Gosh. not mine. YouTube. Guys, go. this is on Google Earth. I just read that. I'd never heard of the Gay Boar District. Gay Boar District man. around 7th Avenue and 15th Street attracts... Damn, crazy, bro! You you That's were. That's why just they like their cigars. Talking about that, you were just they like putting the cigars that. in their mouth. That's, that's why wild. it's Gabor. That's in, that's like I, I can't believe that's on Google Earth. It's interesting. Yeah, but huh. um, you know, what? let's uh, I think we're in we're in great territory here, but <laughs> let's maybe just zoom it out to our uh, you know, the birthday celebrations here. Yeah. We've, got ton- we've got tunnels in Tampa Bay. You've got tunnels in Miami. We've got tunnels up near Pensacola. Florida's got tunnels, no doubt. Uh, another theme of this, you know, of, of paradises throughout myth- throughout mythology, throughout world mythology, you know, whatever religion you're you're operating with, you've got paradise in almost every cosmology. Paradise is positioned right on top of the underworld. You find this in Greek mythology. You find this somewhat in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you find this in Egyptian mythology. You find this in kind of your Shangri-La. You've got the demon realm, the underworld, so close to the above ground paradise, the angelic you know, kingdom. And to me, I've linked this to Haiti being south of Florida and Hades being south of Paradise. Um, I've linked this to the subterranean passageways in Florida. The whole state is built on top of an aquifer. The aquifer is like a whole you know, network web of underwater passages that we've had divers on to talk about. And... Um, mm. To me, this shows like a another link to a paradise, this mythological paradise, perhaps the one described in the Old Testament, Eden. But um, yeah, what else did we want to talk about? I guess we can, let's get more into the numerology. So yeah. We don't gloss, so we don't pass yeah. that by. Yeah. Really quick, I just have to add. I just have to add about Ebor. It's why bore? Why bore these holes? <laughs> Okay. Ooh. The word bore, bore. No, exactly. that's a good one, and I—that's a really good one. I had not thought about that. Bore. That's a really boring company. The boring the company. Exactly. I think the boring company is honestly just a front to do something in these dumbs. You know what I mean? Well, dude, that—that's like today. I'm the Atlas Stone in Newport Ritchie. I don't know if anyone's seen that. It's the stone that I show with two faces on it. That Saxer kind of kicked off John Saxer's whole search quest for the Saxer stones, you know, studying them. He saw this rock outside of Johnny Lever Rocks. <laughs> Se- seafood restaurant. Johnny Lever Rocks. Re- seafood Dude. restaurant. They had a rock, and he's from the Northeast. He had that name before he came to Florida. Moves down to Florida and opens a seafood restaurant. They're dredging the seafood restaurant and for their, for their deck to go out into the water. And they strike this altar, stone altar, giant megalithic stone altar, you know, boulder, 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 boulder. boulder oh, no, you're tripping, boulder, man. Boulder, boulder, Uh-oh, bro. Boulder, you're tripping. Boulder, 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 yo. Boulder, boulder, boulder. I can beat out this shit. Boulder, 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 Let's go, boulder, baby. Boulder, boulder, boulder. Yeah, you know, boulder. That yo. Yes. There you go. Damn, okay, we're about to go okay. hard. Every every time I'm, I'm at that boiling point, when the gravy starts boiling over, <laughs> they just... <laughs> They just scramble the the Fauci bots, right? The Fauci ouchy. So So the boulders, boulders, boulders. I mean, what I was saying. Boulders, you know Gosh, I am gonna sleep like to that. That was like a chain smokers song. But, yeah. um you've so got, you're, you're, you're talking about Johnny Lever Rocks, right? Yes. It's got, the same thing as like 
So I'm, I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep no, going. Well, no. That, Are you connected it. to a different mic, Narco? Because you sound different now. I am connected. I had to. It okay. always does that. Can you turn it up a little bit? He's all the way up. Fuck. All right. Let me unplug my shit. I think I can get it it's back. A, it's okay, Longo. Don't get upset. It's all right. We're here. We can I'm hear here. you. It's just like a tiny bit. It's going to be okay. A tiny bit. But while he's doing that, I'll mention like, okay, they use names a lot of the time to, to um, paint the picture of what's going on. Like that guy, that legend Johnny Appleseed in Massachusetts is where I grew up, you know, and apparently Johnny Appleseed was an alcoholic who planted all these apple trees so that he could make wine. What type of alcoholic is going to invest in this long term, 20 year down the road payout for booze? I think, I think personally that his name is used uh, to cover up the fact that those apple trees were already there and maybe a lot of these rocks were already there when the other johnny came along you know and it kind of ties into all the names i see around miami like coconut grove and uh, loquat street and avocado lane and royal palm drive and like they you name things after what's there already mm -hmm. right you yeah. name things after landmarks that are there so almost it's everything's a cover-up in that sense i agree yeah, it's not like they looked at a blank piece of woods and was like, let's plant coconut palms here. No, no, no. There were coconut palms there, and they said, this is coconut palm drive. So, yeah. continue your story of Johnny Leverox. That was, that was it, really. I was just going to describe how the name, like where the lever comes in. You know, they, they found this rock when they were building the deck for the restaurant, and this rock has two faces carved into it. You know, very unique. There's websites that say, there's only one petroglyph petroglyph in Florida and they don't, it's not this one. So they really sweep this one under the rug. They don't admit it. They don't acknowledge it, but they found this and they brought it up to the front entrance of the restaurant. Once they made the restaurant and they left it on display. Thank God. You know, think about how many of have it, you know, we're just lost or whatever, but they lift, they had to lift it up out of the muck and then on a crane and then drop it in front of the restaurant. They literally levered the rock, level, lift, lev, levitate, lever the rock, and then drop it in front of his restaurant, Johnny Lever Rocks. I mean, Is that how we segue into Coral Castle. Let's, that's a good one. I think so. I have a video. I don't know if you guys want to watch. I don't know if you guys have seen it. The guy who was moving these megalithic stones in his yard with like the most basic tools. Yeah. And yeah. he said that he had figured out how they did Stonehenge. And it was one guy who was, wood. yeah, with wood and, <laughs> and these weird forms. And he put these things up and they were, they weighed tons and tons. And it makes me think of when you go to Coral Castle and you see all these weird marks on the stones. And the fact that he only worked at night, obviously the imagination is going to run wild. And one similar one thing that I wanted to when I brought up the sun and how you how you talked about the sun worship uh, before we start recording long ago and the fact that a lot of people in history, such as Edward Leedskallen, he came to Florida because he was sick and he came to Florida because of the doctor's recommendations to go down to Florida to be healed. I think it was from I want to say tuberculosis, but I could be wrong. But some sort of thing that he needed the sun, similar to Henry Flagler's yep, TB. White. It was it was tuberculosis, just like the sixteen. He's obsessed with the TB, putting it everywhere. Like he even there's even a TB etched somewhere. Tampa. Oh Bay, really? Tom Brady. You know. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey, I just found a Yalaha, Florida, on Lake Harris, and there's a golf course connecting to it. Yalaha, Florida. I'm like. Dude, oh, I'm you, add that to the list. You, yo, the best one is Alafaya. Best yeah. one, it, nail in the coffin. Nail in the coffin is Alafaya. Alafaya is an Arabic greeting. It means like good health, or something like that. Like I wish, you, I hope you're healthy. You know, Alafaya. Then it's a place in Florida, and that's an Indian word, Native American, Florida word. Alafaya. Come on. Alafaya, Alafaya River. I've spent a lot of time on the Alafaya River, boys. A lot of time. I have a property in Alafaya, Florida, and it's it has some sort of contamination, some some perceived contamination of arsenic on the property. And guess what the the number for 
arsenic is in the periodic table. It's 33. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's that's one of the wow. most common fillers, too, for all these products, dude. They, they're they legally allowed to put it in everything as if it's so, like, harmful. Like, this leads me to my – I don't know if you guys want to talk about – Coral Castle, but I have something on the 33 that I found really interesting because when Narco called me and was like, hey, let's do a stream on 3-3, Florida's birthday. I even told my wife today, I was like, hey, we're going to do a Florida stream. It's Florida's birthday today. She's like, 3-3? I'm like, yeah, 3-3. Obviously, I'm into alchemy, into all that stuff. Yep. Part, of, part of alchemy is the elixir of life, immortality. That's, again, Piscean. It's the whole Juan Ponce de Leon stuff that he was looking for. This fountain of youth, if it was to cure his ED or not, who knows? But there's something about that. And 3-3 three, three in alchemy is the sign for cinnabar. And let me pull this up cinnabar. here. Yeah, cinnabar, which if anyone knows anything about alchemy, cinnabar is where they extract mercury from. Now... If anyone in the chat, we have over 500 people watching right now. If anyone in the chat is a geologist and can hit me up, I want to <laughs> I want to decipher what it is I found because it turns out that there was a study done where enhanced dissolution of cinnabar by dissolved organic matter isolated from the Florida Everglades. Wait, mercuric sulfide. So the sulfur... Yeah, that's so cinnabar is. Yeah, that's it. yeah, Isn't cinnabar. Isn't that where is. you get lead and like red mercury from cinnabar? Red mercury, Ye I think, comes from cinnabar. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's used in a whole bunch of different things, especially in the alchemical sense. So, it's again, it's it's needed in the in the alchemical process, right? And even even in China, they've made various. So cinnabar is a mineral with a reddish brown color and its most common source is mercury in nature. So this was linked to right the philosopher's stone, the search for immortality in Chinese alchemy. They used it a lot. They would build entire sculptures out of this stuff. Let me see. I Wait, I got to I got to interject one thing. You, you say immortality and I see all your pictures of the threes. Yeah. You put two threes together and you get an eight. Oh, which yes. is infinity, baby. Infinity, infinity, no? Yeah, Pisces. Pisces. That's the Pisces symbol. In Pisces. Finity, fin Infinity. Is, the, is the fin of the fish. That's also, a great number. That's immortality. A great number, guys. Let's take those two threes. And that's the serpent, and we've got and the serpent mount we'll too. Take those two threes and then roll them over. You have two M's. Which your double oh, M. Shit. Which is immortality is two M's at the center of that word. Thirteen. Um, thirteen. There's a 13. lot of lot of places you could take that MM. So oh. check this. Out. One more thing on the thirty-three because it relates directly to Coral Castle. If you look mm -hmm. up the address, the Coral Castle. Let's the go. Zip, the zip code is three three zero three three. No way. Yeah. And Coral Dude. Castle TC is three three. So we got the CC. And there. Coral Castle is three three. Dude. Wait. What? So what have they done to zip expensive. codes? Oh, <laughs> real, real quick, Spencer. We're gonna, I'm gonna hand it. I'm gonna hand it right to you, Spencer. But just got to throw in there. Masons no. take pilgrimages to Coral Castle. There were masons there when I was there. It's it's a pilgrimage that many masons are encouraged to take, is to go to Coral Castle and to ponder, ponder on the monuments. Oh, that's geez. what that's what they're told. Oh, Contem geez. Contemplate, reflect. I went three years Real. ago. <laughs> hey. Went, so, uh, man, never mind. I'm just, there's too this much gravy, on Google. gravy overload, right? You listen, guys listen. have given me so much on Google Earth just from this episode alone right now. I'm like freaking out, but there's just too much. So just keep going. Lead, lead longer. Uh, Juan, or Juan's going right now. Let's hit it. So I want a, a geologist or somebody to, to, to hit me up to, to, cause there's a lot of mumbo jumbo in here, but the organic matter samples using the experiment where I said it from various locations and they give you the exact longitude and everything here from the northern everglades in florida it's interesting that they were right dissolving mercury now again what is it about florida that is so magical what is it about florida that draws people in what is it uh, you, you always get that that question and it might be the actual ground itself now i said mercury florida turns out that there is F florida is high in mercury because of the a lot of runoff but it does occur naturally in the ground, right? In in the in the soil, and it runs off into 
the the water supply and here so some of the previously de deposited mercury in Everglades peak can be recycled back into the ecosystem by natural processes while the rest is buried. Mercury is being supplied to the Everglades in stormwater, runoff, groundwater, discharge, and atmospheric dep uh, de deposition, deposition, Definitely. rain, dust, and gaseous dry. So we are pumping it in to the water supply. Now, wait, wait, it was here though, right? Or you're saying we're pumping it or well, it was already here? In there the are Everglades. some deposits, but the way that the Everglades works, the Everglades is a, a giant filter. Filter. Agreed. So 100%. How, how uh, Henry Shagler was saying that we can't overtake nature. Nature will always find a way. So Florida quite literally purges itself, but it purges itself in an, in an alchemical way. So the organic material in the Everglades can break down mercury. And, and part of the alchemical process, when I think of mercury in, in alchemy, I'm thinking of the alchemy in mercury, mercury over the waters, right? We're, we're, we're going to get into, into the book of Genesis, right? Where when I think of alchemy, I'm thinking of, damn, I can't find the freaking plate, but there's a plate where mercury is crossing over the waters, right? The salt water is part, again, the salt is part of the alchemical process. And I found it super interesting that they, that the Everglades is able to break this down. Now, oh, here it is. I found it. This picture right here. I'm thinking of mercury over the waters, right? And this could be, again, this is why the book of Genesis was revered by a lot of alchemists as the book that showed the magnum opus, like how Bach. to do the great work. So my my next thing was, I was going to ask you, Narco, I said, is there any links to Atlantis and I don't know if Narco was there, but Atlantis and gold? So, of course, I'm, I'm going down this rabbit hole and I start to look up different minerals in Florida and I'm going down and I find out that in Ocala, Let's go. There's something that they call pyrite. Wait, Ocala has the word Allah in it too. O Ocala. 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 Damn, there's another one. I'm gonna add that to the Ocala. list. Shita. Ocala. Shita. Okay. Gosh, so I never even got that. Turns out that there's pyrite in the Ocala forest. Now, where ooh, where is that at? What's interesting about pyrite? comes uh, from the Greek word pyre, fire, because pyrite emits sparks when struck by metal. Pyrite is called fool's gold. To the novice, its color is deceptively similar to that of a gold nugget. So again, we have this fool's gold here in Florida. And again, I don't I don't even know what to think of all this stuff here. <laughs> I I found. You said um, mercuric sulfide. And if you if you type that into a duck duck go and then type conspiracy it takes you straight to red mercury <laughs> and then you can click on like that on so red mercury is that mercuric sulfide and if, if you've ever spent time in the swamps like i have i mean you have sulfur springs there's a lot of sulfur everywhere as soon yeah. as you you know the bottoms of all of our streams and everything is so sulfuric it's it's incredible so uh um, Isn't that yeah. what they mine with the big that leaves like a radioactive byproduct after the fact? Isn't it? For no, the no, that's that'd be the lime. That's all the phosphate mining. Stuff. Phosphate, phosphate. Well, you know, I I just know from experience I've eaten probably a hundred or more more pomelos this winter, Florida pomelos. And if you burp after eating one, you'll taste sulfur. And sometimes even you can just taste it as you're eating it, like because I had enough radium water and sulfur water just to know kind of like that eggy sulfur taste. Really, mm -hmm. the citrus is high in sulfur. I got some wild pomelos uh, down the road off from a uh, old, old, uh, um, it's called St. Leo University. There's this grotto that Longo, I took Longo to when he visited. And it's ain't just old, old, old grotto. And um, way back in the woods, there's some pomelos hidden and I've got a spot. So I'm tasting that next time. I'm going for it. That's yeah, awesome. man. And like um, the, these citrus trees are tapped into the, the ground water, you know, the water table, whether it's yeah. a river or a canal or a lake or something from fresh water. And so it just must be feeding straight off that water. And honestly, I think 
that's where it's at. It's feeding right off yeah. of a lake that flows under the road yeah. into the woods across. So you're mm -hmm. right. That's exactly mm -hmm. how where they're growing. And Longo's done, a, you know, a lot of work on the oranges and how they glow in like the radium. And Central Florida is known for those sulfuric radioactive springs. And oh, that's sure. where all the citrus grows. So, yeah. Yeah. Longo, we were just mm -hmm. talking about how, how you can taste the sulfur in grapefruits. Oh, and yeah. And some oranges. Dude, if you, I think that's one of the main reasons they pasteurize it is you don't get that in pasteurized orange juice. Whoa. There's, there's no sulfur smell. And sulfur's, guys, you know, the mineral tape, the table of elements is not as like, you know, understood as we think it is. Sulfur is mildly radioactive. Magnesium, even more so, and potassium. So these are halfway radioactive. So sulfur, beings was such an alchemical um, concept, you know, material, because it can dance over water. It can dance. If you set it on fire, it does all these weird things. It turns, changes colors. You know, it's, it's very like a transient um, mineral material. Now, <clears throat> boiling it, it's sulfur is like a very... It's almost like dry ice. It can, it can behave like dry ice. Like it can be there and not there. It can sublimate very quickly. It can evaporate very quickly. You know, it goes solid to vapor, like um, it skips over the liquid state is what I'm trying to say. So there's a lot of weird, uh, you know, Dick. things that sulfur does, but boiling it alone could strip the sulfur out of water because it sublimates so easily is, is what I'm saying. You could get all the, the sulfur out. And people don't talk about sulfur being something you get from orange juice, probably because they're never really testing fresh pressed orange juice. They're usually testing things like Tropicana from the grocery store for nutritional value. It's concentrate. Um, whereas <laughs> it's not even real. I'm trying to look down. I'm going to pull the picture here so you guys can see. Um, and also when you draw water from any, a lot of aquifers, actually, it's has the sulfur smell. It smells like rotten eggs. It stains yes. everything. So yeah. that's definitely a, a, well, is, is there, is there like an alchemical alphabet? So like, is it possible that we mistake old world letters and numbers for alchemical symbols? Or is there like all, all different types of old world? Like if you're looking at like, you know, you think you're looking at these hieroglyphs or something like what if we like misinterpreted letters and you know stuff for alchemical symbols it, or are there some one that you know about we go ahead. does that make sense there are there are basic alchemical symbols are you familiar with what mercury salt and sulfur like look like no I, i'm thinking like old world yeah so that's what i'm looking for no oh. yeah so i'm not familiar with it that's what i would love to have i would love to have a printout of that on my wall actually Bro, yeah, you got, got the it? sun. You got the sun as one, which is hydrogen, right? Whoa, that's awesome. Well, that's the hydrogen, the the high dragon. Dro Whoa. Dro Whoa. Dro Whoa. So, so I'm that wrong. that take take that into account, Longo, because I and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've because this ties into again. I want to keep it in this loop for for the meantime of the alchemy because, and correct me if I'm wrong, Longo, but I've heard you talk about Georgia. And the dragon. Am, am I remembering that correctly about I Georgia? I love not this. Yeah. No, right on the money. This is venturing into like mythology, like you know, wow. top of top of I don't know how you said topological mythology, like you know, mythologizing the shape Gosh. of America. But what do we have? Tigris and Euphrates. Euphrates means dragon. Okay. Or serpent, or you know, flying phoenix, depending on who you ask. Euphrates means dragon. When you take the 31st degree parallel north, it goes through Florida. It goes through Jerusalem and the exact point where the Euphrates and Tigris split. Then it comes over to Florida. And guess what? The 30th degree parallel north is the border between Florida and Georgia. The 31st, the border between Florida and Alabama. So let's just say George, St. George is always represented as a dragon slayer. 
In my videos, I've shown that dragons, as remembered by Chinese and European mythology, are alligators. Everything else that flies or has wings is a griffin or a sphinx or a, you know, a um, cockatrice or something else, not a dragon. Dragons are wingless and have, they drag along the ground, hence their name, dragon. Great episode. Great episode, Longo. And everything that the alligators do, the churning of water, they can produce cymatic patterns in the water above them when they... What? When they do when the they belly growl? When they bellow, yes. Yeah. And it's called a bellow because it's like bellowing a fire, like a dragon would do. So an alligator is a dragon. I go through many, many things. They don't age. They have caves. What, what flying reptile is a cave? You know, alligators make caves. They make lairs. And they don't live, you know, they live forever. Uh, you know, it doesn't uh, age the way other animals do. They could have grown long and large, but blah, blah, blah. Where was I going with that? The slain the dragon, George uh, is actually- Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, George is the dragon slayer, St. George. George is always depicted as trampling the dragon, spearing the dragon on top of the dragon, on top of the alligator, right? And even in St. George's Cathedral, in one of those countries in Europe, has a crocodile, alligator, clear as day. It's not a dragon. It's always really? been an alligator. So dragons are good. You know, winged dragons are cool, but that's an astrological composite animal, like a griffin or a cockatrice. Um, that's not a dragon. A dragon is a water deity. Is this always why, Longo? Long is this why in a lot of alchemical labs they have crocodiles or alligators hanging yes. from the t from the ceiling? So yes. it's a representation of the dragon. Wow, all, dude! All those crocodiles you're showing. The only reptile that actually ever Whoa. ventured into guys go watch my alligators uncovered video. It was phenomenal. Alligators are dragons. Um, the only animal that has ever ventured into a European town, grabbed a girl, and ran off to its lair is an alligator. Is a crocodile. We know this because every city in the Mediterranean, just about, has a crocodile on display that ventured into their town in the medieval times, and one heroic man killed, and the whole town celebrated him. They named the crocodile and hung it up on their wall. Come on, guys. Quit watching Game of Thrones and all this garbage. Oh, come on. <laughs> All alligators are real. There's only one animal in the Chinese zodiac that's not real. It's the alligator. Hey, that's the alligator. The drag Dragons are alligators. Alligators. The only the only <laughs> animal. And to alligate to the you know the allegations. This is an allegation. Alligators. To alligate with an e is what is means to connect things together. To link things together is to alligate. That's where you get a ligature, you know, or things Even like that. Even the word that. Re religion has lig in it. It's binding. It's connecting. Good. Yo yeah. Yoking. So the alligator is the only animal that is the dragon 100% physical, tangible. Why? Guys, for those that don't know, they keep it a secret. This is another panda situation on our hands. At China has alligators. Oh, yeah, yeah, China yeah. has cool. alligators. Alligators are only found in two places on Earth, Florida and the surrounding areas. China. And China. 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 Okay, so you have China and alli alligators. China is where you get the lung, the lung. They even tell you in their own mythology, the lung is the Chinese alligator. The lung oh. is the Chinese alligator, but all these goddamn white people who've seen too much, you know, Star Trek and Game of Thrones think that every and lord of the rings i love tolkien but think that a flying dragon is somehow anything but an alligator okay it's it's evident they're trying to bring us into the realm of fantasy just look at the chinese zodiac all of the animals are real except the alligator but it is real it's it's sorry the dragon it is the alligator i just want to highlight uh ben ben just said uh what was it can't scroll back up, but George is Georgi, which is Gorgon. Ooh. And 
pretty obvious when you look at it like that way. A lie gator. A lie gator. <laughs> so I'm making this big argument. Why? Because Florida, the dragon, this mythology, the symbolism of George trampling the dragon. Well, and I've shown how the Holy Land, the same parallels that run through the Holy Land determine the border of Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. Um, and the Earth's only four-headed river system, which you can... There's so much to say. Go watch my other videos. You know, Earth's only four-headed river system in Florida. Same parallel. But if George is the dragon slayer, and Georgia is named for St. George, not King George, as they tell us, mm -hmm. then Florida would be the dragon. Florida is the dragon being trampled by George. George on his horse is Georgia, and down here is the dragon. It's mystical. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. it. It's mystical toponymy, so using the actual lay of the land to portray a story, but let's go to the dragon. The dragon has what has the gold, has the knowledge, so it's representation of the knowledge, and then the spear piercing the dragon that could also be a sort of metaphor i mean we can get symbolic with that right it's the the typical typical archetypical hero's journey right and, and it's interesting because a lot of people come down to florida to live out their last days almost like some sort of pil you mentioned the pilgrimage aspect of of that earlier so i found it interesting and also in the bible right to to relate it to pisces because dragon fish they're not the same but in the Bible, Jesus says, I'm going to make fishermen out of you, right? Like the whole fish aspect of it, of, of that. Maybe that's some sort of initiation or a revelation of some sort of knowledge of some sort. Like, again, I don't know, but uh, I don't know what to think of the stuff that I found out here. But I was hoping to present it and maybe people can come up with some stuff after the fact. There's the fool's gold. I don't know if you heard the fool's gold aspect yeah. in Ocala. That was good. Uh, that was good. The pyrite. Because I was, I was trying to find, you know, what. So when when I was going down the whole sulfur and uh, cinnabar aspect, uh, I was looking up different minerals in Florida because we did the whole Siesta Key, the, the, the sand that's coming down from, where is it? The App Appalachia Mountains? Is that where they said it comes from? <laughs> Al Alachua? Yeah, the, the... No, Appalachian the, Mountains. Yeah, Blue Ridge Oh, yeah, Mountains. Appalachian. Yep. Yeah, the Appalachian Appalachian. And then it turns out in Florida, we have uh, naturally occurring is the the pyrite, which is the fool's gold, which comes from the Greek word pyre, which means fire. And in and, and all these mythologies, fire is representative of even though this is the fool's gold, which was used in alchemy to fool the hierarchy, to fool the monarchs that were like hiring these alchemical courts and, and they would do these transmutations, but they would use this pyrite to fool people, right? The fool's yes. gold. No. And go ahead. Uh, the, the idea of fire in all these mythologies, we're talking about stories of creation, fire in Prometheus, right? What was he shunned for? What was he exiled for? What was he subjected to an eternity, well, before he was rescued by Hercules, of torture, getting his liver eaten by the eagle because he gave man fire, Okay, so I found that interesting with the right sunshine, kind of sort of like fire in a sort of way, right? It heals you. It can be enlightening, right? We, we know that the sun is good for you. And again, I don't, I don't know what to think of this, but yeah, I'm just making connections that all come back down to Florida. Dude, I'd love where you're going with that. Are you like linking, you know, pyrite being a gold? that the dragon is like hiding away I either would, or knowledge or yeah. actual gold who knows right right, right. yeah we're going the literal path in, uh -huh. admittedly with this but did you guys know that if there's you know this dragon ancient dragon symbolism from florida because you know china has alligators but florida is the only place where alligators and crocodiles are together and caimans are right next door so you have potentially the original spawning point where they split off 
it would it almost seems like it's the only huh. place where they're together on earth but going back to the gold that's a really good point with the pyrite i didn't even know pyrite is in florida and i in ocala <laughs> Dude, that's really good. That's oh, a new one for me, man. That's Ocala, great. a lot of people link to like Oculus and like the looking glass. And there's, so, there's so many caves in Ocala. Yeah. And the, the caves in Ocala used to have a giant standing in front of them, guarding them. It wow. used to walk between the legs, the giant's legs, to go into the caves. Why? Because they found giant's bones in the Ocala caverns. But I want to focus on the gold. Point. Did you know that Florida and Georgia have the purest gold in the world, on Earth, by far, measurably? Wikipedia Bruh. approved. <laughs> um, let's check this out. I'll pull this up for you. This all feeds into the whole Garden of Eden theory. Um, not only should every American care about Florida because America started in Florida. It's the birthplace of the United States. What we know of as the English Revolution, etc., is more akin to a adolescence or a puberty than it is a birth. So America started in the Spanish period. They were the first here. Then the English came. Then you have your New England, etc., etc. The St. Augustine, you know, colony was Decades before Jamestown. Oldest in the country by far. Uh, 15, Pens six, yeah. 1565. Pensacola was attempted earlier than that, failed, yeah. but was but was still in Florida by the French. Right. Then you had a potential even earlier colony in El Portal, which might have been the 1530s, before the Huguenots even became known as Huguenots. They were just Calvinists. They had a little little-known colony in El Portal, Florida, where there's a cave, where there's a mound with a cave going into it. I have a video on that, El Portal, Miami's underground portal. But I want to tie this all back into the gold in Florida. Everyone was coming here, you know, uh, they hightailed it here during the age of discovery. It seems almost like Columbus was aiming for Florida and bumped into the Bahamas first. He essentially landed in Florida. He was uh, twice the distance from South America from where he first arrived in the Americas from when, if he had just landed in Florida. Do I make sense? Columbus was half yeah. the distance to Florida as he was to South America when he bumped into the Bahamas. So he essentially discovered Florida and the Americas, but I won't you know, stretch that. But why were they coming here so much? They were told that there was gold here. El Dorado, the gold, the gold, the gold. And the Spanish didn't find any gold in Florida, we're told, right? Oh, they just took everything from the Aztecs. They took everything from the Maya. Boo, boo hoo. Well, guys, did you know that Florida produces the purest gold in the world? North and Florida. Wh wasn't that location in Georgia? I, mean, I used to pan for gold in Georgia up there when, as a kid in the summers. Is, wasn't that Florida in the times you were talking about as it went way up? So that yep. was still La Florida if you look at the old world cartography. Am I wrong? In the, yes, absolutely. So that's still Florida. And not only that, this area of North Florida was known as Iracana. Iracana uh, by, oh, the, by the Tamukua people who wow. were Iroquois. Flip, flipping giants. Oh, yeah, Iroquois. They probably got that from that. But, um, even Arkansas, Iroquois, oh. Cherokee, um, Iraqi, of course, you know, all very close. Arawak down in the Caribbean, too, even. Um, Columbus said he thought he landed in paradise, etc., etc. Okay. Georgia Gold Belt also extends down into parts of North Florida. Why you haven't heard of this? Yep. Da Dahlonega. 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 How Dahlonega. You say? My buddy's got a wedding venue there and a lot of land. Yeah. So the America's number one gold mint was Dahlonega, Georgia. No shit. I was just near. There. Yep. Right near Florida. But guess what? You haven't heard about it because you can't mine for this gold. You can't rock and tunnel, tunnel into rock and hammer, hammer it out. You have to 
um, shit, people can't even see me. You have to pan for it or get it out of the clay. It's super hard to do. It's, you know, kind of laborious. And the gold in Georgia has been measured as high as 100% purity. Wow. 24 karat, 100, and it's not just the Wikipedia that said it. I just searched it up. You can look this up. Uh, E.E. Calloway talks about it. For those who need to be caught up, maybe, Noah's Ark is said to have landed in Eurasia. We do not know where it departed from. Florida's 1936 Republican candidate for governor wrote the book called In the Beginning, where he theorizes, asserts, that Florida is the original Garden of Eden, particularly the Florida-Georgia border, where Earth's only four-headed river system is located in an area called Apalachicola, the Apple of Eden. Um, and one of these things is he, he strictly, literally holds up a criteria for Eden in the book of Genesis. Number one, an eastward landmass. Well, first, sorry, back up. God created the land and he brought it up out of the, the, the ocean. Well, that is Appalachia Mountains, the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Appalachian landmass was back in the 1980s believed to be the oldest landmass on earth you know 50 years ago everyone thought that eastern united states the southeastern united states was the oldest piece of solid land on earth and so old that the mountains the blue ridge mountains have collapsed in on their own footprint like they're so old they're falling there, whereas the Himalayans are so new, they're still growing high. Where the Blue Ridge Mountains were taller than the uh, Mount Everest and Kilimanjaro's are today. Blue Ridge Mountains and Appalachian Mountains were taller and rockier and higher, and they grew and they soared up once. Now they're falling down. That tells us they are ancient. Atlanta now, is right at the bottom. Yep. Atlantis. Recent. Recently, they have, with the whole Afrocentric, you know, out of Africa, Darwinist theory, of course, now they have to say, with your Pangea model, that there's a uh, stone belt, they call it, down in South Africa, that they think might be older than the Appalachian. But even now, they tell you, even now, they'll concede the Appalachian Mountains are among the oldest, if not the first or second oldest land masses on Earth. So, right from the beginning, wow. there's, a, there's a basis, there's a precedent, there's a foundation to this argument that goes beyond just believing in the Bible. So, then you have the fact that God planted a garden eastward in Eden. This was a flat, well-watered landmass, eastward of an already established landmass. Well, my guys, my dudes, my uh, gals and girls, that is Florida. The Florida Peninsula jutting out away from the American landmass. This is, you know, what he was putting together. Then you have, then you have um, the fact that he watered this area. He brought up the the wells from underneath and water this landmass. Florida is the most well-watered landmass on Earth. Highest concentration of freshwater springs in the world. Then you have Earth's only four-headed river system, as perfectly described in the book of Genesis. Now, that's if we're interpreting it literally. You could say that God created us all with a four-headed river system right here in the forehead of man. There is a four-headed river system, which feed your cranial nerves, which, which, you know, lubricate the brain with your cerebrospinal fluid. That is perhaps the four-headed river system, which nourishes your pineal gland. It's, you know, you don't have to go with the literal. If you like your astrotheology, if you like your biological interpretation of the Bible, go with it. It's valid. That's the beauty. It's the mul most multifaceted document to have ever existed. So take it whichever way you want to. But if we're interpreting it literal, literally, it could only lead us to Florida. 
eastern landmass, well watered. What do you do when you're choosing a when you're planting a garden? You choose the flattest, moistest land you have, or you create it. That is Florida. It has the properties you need. Well, then you have all the animals which Noah would have preserved on his ark should he have set up shop somewhere else after a flood, which is also laid out in Genesis. Well, the horse, the camel, the cheetah, the lion, the, you know, you can go on and on with animals you would never have, have expected to have developed in the southeastern United States, are present in Florida, are present in South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia. These were all here before the flood of Noah. Then they disappear during the Ice Age and appear in Eurasia. Okay, I'm getting to my point here. <laughs> these, these are all laid out in, in the beginning. Then on top of that, you have the gold, the good gold of Havilah. In Genesis, it says, these four-headed rivers, one of them went to a land, Havilah. Ethiopia, Havilah, and um, Assyria, and one more, I don't know, one more. But one of these rivers went to a land rich in gold. And guess what? One of these rivers in the Florida-Georgia border goes to the Georgia gold belt. In fact, they all probably do, but one especially lands leads to Dalanega, Dalanega. And what do you get for the, that area? And what do you get? In Genesis, it says good gold. If God is saying that gold is good, I'll take it to mean really good, right? And you have perhaps the purest gold on earth right there at the Florida-Georgia border. That's got to count for something. That's the Would you gold. Think, do you think that that giant was also guarding a hoard of gold or something? That giant okay. in Ocala? Well, hang on. Guarding brings us to another thing, because I think it was you or Spencer who brought up the flaming sword or a flaming angel defending something, maybe. Maybe mm. I heard that wrong. Pyre. But, um, pyrite is fire. comes from the Greek word fire. I, yeah, that... I think that was it. But um, in the Garden of Eden, when mankind was cast out of the Garden of Eden, they had cherubs. The cherubim guarded the way back to Eden with a flaming sword. Everyone interprets that to mean... <laughs> everyone interprets that to mean angel with wings like a human. And it does not say that in Genesis. It says cherubim which are the four fixed signs of the zodiac, the four corners of the sky, the four cardinal directions. The, the sword, sword means a cross or a T-shape. That's, you know, the corners of the sky. Okay. That's just the last bit. Wait, do we, do we have the four elements represented? Spencer, when's your birthday? June 30th, 1988. Yeah, he's, you guys are both water. Okay, so we don't have an earth, we don't have an air sign. You're, you're Taurus, right, Juan? Yeah, Taurus. All right, cool. Never mind. But Earth, you, earthy, right? You, you're talking about gold, and you're talking about Florida, and you're talking about like geologic time scale almost. I was pulling up this geologic map of Florida just to see what the ground is made of in different parts because I know here in Miami we have this, we have coral. And for people who don't know, this is going to tie into Coral Castle. Like the ground is just made up of this petrified plant matter, which is coral. It's basically porous limestone. It's very high in calcium. It creates alkaline conditions. I know this because we've tested our soil. It's just very high in calcium and alkalinity. But it's only over sort of like southeast Florida, the My greater Miami area. So we have this coral bed. But then in other parts of the state, you have more sandy conditions. And, and I'm not even, I can't really barely read this map. But it looks like Florida is a hodgepodge of all these different geologic conditions and formations they call it i mean it's their word on this site like and different geologies so my question is time scale when was the ice age when was the great flood when were these mountains built because the state of florida as it is a you know a government agency under the united states is only 179 years old we know the land is a little more ancient than that but it's hard to tell what went on. Was it lower? Did the sea level actually rise with this flood? Like, and what time scale are we looking at? Does anybody have any any guesses on the, on those things? Six thousand years, bro. 
<laughs> uh, you know, 6,000 isn't a bad guess because they tell us your major sea level. Sorry, YouTube, that's someone else's car, not us streaming uh, copyrighted music. But, um, <laughs> you know, they tell us the major shift in sea level as displayed in the Florida coastline was 7,000 years ago, I believe they say, when you had a big shift, okay. kind of a rapid shift from Florida being twice as wide as it is and roughly same same length, just twice as wide, to then going skinny and the water rose. So what we're at is now the high ground. Everyone in Florida right now is merely standing on the high ground of what was a slightly larger, maybe twice as wide, Florida 7,000, 10,000 years ago. Now, the geo you know, the geologists, the mainstream tells us that if you go back farther than that, if you go back farther to um, 100,000 years-ish, Florida becomes just a little tiny chain of islands, they've said now. There's also an, a strip of sand in central Florida um, known as, uh, what do they call it, Juan, do you remember? Which, uh, which part, I'm sorry? The strip of sand, the ancient coastline. Oh, the Lake through. Wales Ridge, right? The Lake Wales Ridge is filled with this like aeolian sand or aeonian, aeolian sand. And quartz like sand, that. too. And they say that this is this ancient coastline of like a million year old beach. So it seems Florida's also, they also tell us Florida's like 33 million years old. That's another funny number, 33 <laughs> around there. Someone look that up, double check that for me. But um, like, what is, what is diatomaceous earth? Like what is Florida really made out of? Like, it seems like it's all just, imagine it's just a bunch of crushed up shell compacted. What is limestone? What is phosphate mining? Where a giant peninsula, an island that floats up and down according to water level, it's not chert rock. Where does the chert rock start? Like all of these questions that I think are very important to understand. We're standing on, you know, a bunch of limestone. What is limestone? What is all of this? It's nothing like, is California like that? Like you guys have seen the, um, since we have similar climate, like think about that, the in, inland sea. And all the old maps and California was an island. Was California similar to us in that sense? Or, or is our our lime and all this like compilation of um, silicon based crushed matter different? I think it's different. I think it's very unique and special. I don't think it's like that under California. What do you guys think? Well, also, it's so flat. It almost seems like something the water levels could have risen and then subsided and like sediment could have just laid flat in this spot and then dried mm -hmm. out and baked or it or since we have this petrified coral was it was there a heat cataclysm like mm. i have no idea i'm so lost when it comes to like okay how far back am i looking what did it look like back then and is that why florida is like such a new you know a newly established place is that was there a cataclysm and did people have to sort of like get back here and rediscover it mm. speaking of tolkien the highest point on this Lake Wales Ridge is Iron Mountain. Yeah, baby. And yeah. at the top of that summit is the Bach Tower Gardens. Well, Juan, let's talk about the sand and the materials in the sand in relation to the spiritual significance of uh, Iron Mountain. And the citronelle, I think that's related to mercury also. It definitely has iron-rich there's something iron rich to this mountain. That's why they named it Iron Mountain. And there's a reddishness to the sand there, just like the, uh, you know, Lake Wales Ridge with the Aeolian sand or whatever they call it. Man. But this iron rich mountain, let's think about magneticism and religion, guys. We know for a fact the natives would worship Iron Mountain, Florida. They revered it and would do like pilgrimages or like you know, I don't know, they would come around it, go up, climb it, they would, you know, they did something. They would congregate around Iron Mountain. Now, we have a lot, a big congregation, big pilgrimage happening in 
um, Arabia with the, uh, you know, Kaaba. And the Kaaba being a magnetic, you know, piece of an asteroid that fell down from heaven, as you know, they say, they, they fear, theorize. But what if you have another magnetic, you know, magnetic mesmerism effect happening here? Where mm -hmm. the iron rich soil or the mercury rich, you know, this or that, the heavy metals, whatever they are, can put people under a spell, kind of, you know, produce their own gravity in the true sense of that word, not the not the fake heliocentric model, but if things have weight and a magnet mag you know, magnetic charge to them, you can throw things in in orbit and religious you know, ceremonial religious, religious Sp compulsion that people don't understand. Hey, so at the top of this ridge, so if you zoom out on Google Earth and you're looking at this, it's like a perfect ridge, right? That you guys are talking about your Lake Wales Ridge. At the bottom is Venus down by Lake Placid, but what's at the top, like you're talking about right now, Longo, is the Magic Kingdom. It's right there at the top of it. I'm like, what's at the top? What's at the bottom of this ridge in Florida? It's freaking the Magic Kingdoms. At magic, the top. magnetic, mag. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So the, the yeah, the lure is that there was a, a meteorite and it left the area magnetic. That's why you have the the mountain where car or the hill where cars go up the. Uh, where they roll up the the hill, Spook yeah, Hill, yeah, Spook, Spook hill. hill, and also the local school mascot is Casper the Ghost. <laughs> it's interesting, but you're saying up here is what? What, what were you saying about this, uh, Spencer? So you can see it clearly, right? You see that giant slit. So the bottom mm -hmm. is down by Lake Placid, and at the very bottom is Venus. But if you go to the very tippy top of that, you're at the mm -hmm. Magic Kingdom, brother. Okay, this is what Orlando. Lakes are these? Yeah, yeah, you're right in Disney. Nice. Crazy. Really? Lake Toho is here. This is this is Lake Toho. This is East Lake Toho. Yeah, so this would be Disney area. So again, uh, across this entire thing is the 28th parallel. So there is a sort of magnet, the most magical place on earth, right? Uh, Disney. Now and we're talking. Now we're talking. Disney is not going to buy worthless land. It's, oh, it's just a swamp. Why would you build there? Mind you, mind you, Roy... Walt Disney's brother, because everyone talks about Walt Disney being a Mason. He wasn't a Mason, and he wasn't the one that established the Florida Disney World. It was his brother Roy who was, in fact, a Mason, and he was the one that oversaw the expansion into Florida. So, And mind you that Disneyland in California, it's on the 33rd parallel. Okay, Disneyland is on the 33rd. Disney World is on the 28th. So... Again, in Templarism, the degree of the sun. I don't think that is a a coincidence. I think that's done on purpose. And again, uh, it's interesting that it ends right here on this Lake Wales. Uh, the story is that this was a chain of islands, and there are only there are species of animals only found along this ridge here. A certain tortoises that are only found along this ridge here. So this used to be a chain of islands once upon a time. People also need to understand like how epic Central Florida used to be for citrus. You wouldn't tell oh, now because you drive through and like the citrus industry is just kind of tanking or it's it's hopefully being reborn into something new. But ever since the concentrate boom of 80 years ago, like green the citrus, all the green, all the citrus industry is going totally down the tubes. But it at one point was a veritable paradise. Um, even down to Columbus's documents when he came ashore, what, what did he find? All these epic fruit trees, subtropical and tropical fruits. And there's just countless examples of that. And even today, I think Miami and Homestead is a great example of like the remaining vestiges of, of um, the Garden of Eden, like all the botanical gardens, fruit and spice park, just the fact that the coconuts everywhere, like fruit just cannot stop growing out of the ground. Um, and, so Central Florida, you know, was just booming with citrus and every, all the other subtropical fruits, just endless, totally endless. I, want, I mean, at some point, it would make sense to me that people didn't have to do anything because food was so abundant. I truly think we should someday actually dive into greening in Florida because when I was a kid, I, I just find it too convenient, the story, the timing, 
everything that I hear after all I've learned as an adult, I'm 35 now, you couldn't drive anywhere without smelling these orange blossoms, orange blossoms, mm -hmm. honey, everything. And now it's like, wait a second, the conglomerates just took over after Greeny. Oh, they got it all figured out. It's too convenient. One day we're going to figure that shit out and debut it on Old World Florida. And somebody in the chat said the flag of Wales, right? Talking about Lake Wales Ridge is a red dragon, right? Iron Mountain has the reddish soil there. Interesting. And also, isn't the Florida flower the orange blossom? Yes, uh, which, which is which would have to be the most alchemically significant fruit tree that there is, is the orange. Number one, orange is lettered 33 in Pythagorean numerology. Really? Ooh, ooh. Orange equals 33. It is one of the only words that you can't rhyme with. Now, unless you're M&M. &M, you know, porridge, porridge. Yeah, like you can stretch it, but there's little to no words that rhyme with orange you Carnage, can try you, know, you, you can get real close but it orange. is such just such a unique word i'm not saying it can't be done but it's forage unique you know then you have what well, it rhymes with origin origin, origin. the origin Originate. of mankind you know oh, according shit. to the box saga we came from an ape was that an orangutan was that an original, an original oh. father, you know, species? And I'm not, wow. I'm not going the evolution route here. No, I'm they probably saying. did that as a play on words for indoctrination. That's why they then, used it. Then you have your Duke of Orange. You have orange being the sacred color of Buddhism, Hinduism to some, depending on who you ask. Uh, Naranha, right? Yeah, that's where you get the orange. Orange is a transliteration from straight from um sanskrit and why is it alchemically significant because it blossoms flowers and fruits all at the same time and you can have blossoming flowers and fully ripe picked fruit at the same time and there's oh, there's more to this that i'm blanking on but Lots of weird things with the male and female. There's something unique about about uh, orange trees too. But alchemically, they have all these weird properties. Well, so what was them. every what was every American drinking for breakfast between 1950 and? Oh today? yeah, oh I mean, yeah. Every American and most of that came from Florida. Now it all comes from California and like even Africa. We I see oranges from Morocco and South Africa because, and I freaking live in Florida and it's just yeah. like. You can't get good oranges anymore. Like, no offense to the people who are still producing great oranges, but you just don't see them. It's so low a number. And yeah, um, the Croom yeah. family. Yeah. Going back to the name, um, Aura. This oh. is your aura. aura. This is orange. orange. The aura, the range of your aura. Expand the range of your aura. It's the orgone. Orange. You know, this is all right in the same ballpark. Or, too. Your golds, your precious metals. You know, you, there's ore inside of the fruit. There's, it's gold, liquid gold, liquid sunshine. Truly, it's an octave of gold. To to put it musically, you have helium, which is like the gas form of, of gold. Helios, you know, in a gas. Then Can we have, go down that route, uh, Narco? Because I pulled up here the first ever diesel-powered passenger train, and I know we talked about the steam engines and the helium right the 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 helium what would you say the you related to the dragon somehow but how they took us off the helium and put us onto the petroleum with the standard oil because henry flagler was john d rockefeller's right hand man and you were talking about the airships before we started recording and we can kind of segue yeah where's the airships um I don't know. I don't even know what to what to run. It's too much to say. Oh yeah, someone in the chat's dropping gems. You know they, they are, aren't they? What's going on? Always well, on. you may have just mentioned this, but like or or and uh, gold in other languages, right? Yeah, oro mm -hmm. in, in Spanish, oro. And it would make uh, sense, right? Oregon, 
the isn't that the sexual energy and if you look at the yep. peninsula of, of florida is yep. the phallus of the united states the yes. life force right yes even fl fla is the abbreviation i mean it literally <laughs> says fa phallus you know flaw your fly is down hey guys you know <laughs> and got, well yep. fruit is the sexual reproductive organ of the plant yes. and so yeah. the climate here and the water just promotes uh, the sexual nature of reproduction beautifully. Yes. Yeah, you've got your orgasm, orange. Scorpio has the or, that's the sexual you know, part you know, of astrology. And Pis Pisces also has a link because it's piss and wisdom. You know, it's, 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 if you're using your, that appendage for that, that's ruled by Pisces. If you're using that appendage for, you know, procreation, that's Scorpio. Just to, you know, the golden that. showers. <laughs> yeah. Well, Whoa, Florida dude. is known for its sun showers. Um, it's one of the only places yeah. on earth where it can be sunning half the sky and raining the other half. Ooh. And you can be getting poured on and has, still have golden sunshine hitting you. It's very strange. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's an uh, interesting connection there. But, yeah, the oranges. Oh, but... I got something I pulled up a lot, like, a half hour ago that I didn't never got to pull up when we were talking about orange juice. Pull it you out. Guys, you guys ready to have your socks knocked off? Okay. Yeah. We're, we have here on the left. There you go. We have here on the left store-bought. This is not bad orange juice by any means. This is pure, fresh, but pasteurized orange juice on the left from a name brand from a grocery store, but not concentrate, 100% orange juice, non-GMO, you know, good, reputable brand on the left. That's the yellow juice, man. Florida yeah. orange juice. On the right, you have fresh squeezed fresh squeezed by mm. you know a, a girl friend of mine that with her hand squeezed that and it in an instant snapped a picture can you see the difference and these are yeah. both florida yeah. sweet oranges you know we, we don't know if it was cara cara versus this or that but you know this is a batch from an orange or orchard we know it's not cara cara because then it would be pink but right right yeah and these are conventional florida juicing oranges so we're gonna assume that these are you know somewhat close to the same orange if not the same orange very likely because the ones on the right are florida juicing oranges also just bought in the store and juiced hand hand juiced look at the difference orange juice on the left isn't even orange juice it's yellow juice. So you're drinking yellow juice. Look at my shirt. It's the same color as my it's the shirt. Same exact color. It's yellow juice. Wow. Well, and this this goes for every food. Like yeah. Not just oranges. Like you're gonna want to get whatever you're eating or drinking, the the freshest, most unprocessed, hand you know delivered product that you possibly can. So oh, yeah. you you know this can be in interpreted widely. Hey, I have a theory too on that um so obviously i'm getting into this freeze dried system and you know i had this thought it's like wait a second is there some oh is it possible that when you freeze dry some of these like super chemical oranges that you could be pulling the water the chemicals in the water out of that and if you rehydrate it with some high quality h2o like you could be eating like a uh, you could literally like fix fruit. Does that make sense? Like say you have a fruit that was sprayed with chemicals. It seeps through the skin yeah. and all that heavily well, sprayed. Then you freeze dry it and you suck all that shit out. But then you rehydrate it with like some sure. high quality distilled or structured water it's, and let it charge in the sun. Did you just do something like legit? No, I, I don't know about legit. I'll, I'll let Seth answer this for sure because I know he'll have, you know, I mean, well, I know what I prefer. I prefer oh, right off the freaking tree. I got them all around me, but I mean, I, I agree. Just... I always want to stress to people 
there is no better food than fruit. There's no None. better food. Because hey, you know what? You know what I'm a believer in? Self-interest. I think that every human should have a big dose of self-interest. On if you're on the airplane, what do they tell you? Save yourself first, because you can't save anyone if you're dead. You get it? Yep. Put your mask on, then puts make sure everyone else has their mask. You yep. Know? What I'm saying here is fruit looks after itself. Fruit wants to stay alive. Fruit wants you to eat it so that it can stay alive. Yes. Fruit is the only food out there that has its own immune system. You can debate all you want. Oh, you can't build this much muscle on fruit. First off, you're wrong, but that's besides <laughs> but that's besides the point. Yeah. It's not the if point. Fruit will boost your immune system. We know that. It's everyone on earth will concede. That is true. It is the number one immune boosting food. Now, it has skin. The, the orange specifically is so coveted, so exalted because the skin is thick and, it, you know, it is an active organ. It is a membrane, but it is a selective membrane. It, your fruit skin can absorb water if it wants, but it can expel chemicals. Beautiful. Fruit, fruit skin can expel chemicals. If you nick nice. if you nick an orange, if you nick an apple or a tomato, it will scab, it will heal itself because it is not done. It is not out of the fight. When you have meat, it is out of the fight. It is dead on arrival. You are not suffering. Lot, yeah. You are you are drained. Please people. Enough with the oh, but I want to go be in the gym and look like I I cut trees all day, but I don't actually. I just work at a desk, but I want to shape myself like another profession. Those people are stressing the wrong things, okay? Yep. Fruit gives you everything you need, but just on the point of Im immunity, you have fruit having its own immune system. Why would you eat something dead that is at the mercy of every bacteria that is just craving to get its hand at it, to sink its teeth in? Dead meat is just ripe for putrefaction, you know, putrefication. It's, it is just, yeah. We're necrovores, not why meat, would but, you, you know, uh, why America. would you, why would you freaking pasteurize something so living and biological with all the enzymes and bacteria that do so well? When you pasteurize, you're just zapping it. I mean, it's being literally zapped. It's like antibiotics, anti life. It, like, why would you choose dead orange juice over fresh? Like you're saying, it's silly. It's always yeah. silly. And it's living, like, why why is there food. living food straight up? Why is there fluoride in our water? Why do shoes not fit? Why do we have to go to school? Why do we pay taxes? It's I think, it's, I think it's indoctrination. I think it's training. I think it's done that to bring our energy down. They want us to be in a state of starving for energy, almost like a parasitic, like we're debt slaves. And if we're if we have all the energy we need and we're fine and we don't require much because we're always charged up, we don't need them for energy. Mm -hmm. You require they make they put put you in a state through indoctrinations and brainwashing to require them for more energy. Oh, I, I can't go without meat. That's because you don't know how to live without it. You don't know how to live without it because you have been indoctrinated out of what you guys are talking about. I understand it completely and I love it. I love the idea of it. I'm not there, but I'm going to be someday. It's gonna be amazing. I can I can feel it when I go in spurts. Well, yeah, and the other thing too is the I've said this before on this channel, like nobody has to go full fruitarian. No one's asking anyone to do that. No one even needs to. I mean, I'm not. Longo's yeah. not. You know, we eat whatever we want, but put fruit front and center because Darn that is right. the food of the gods. Like, what are the gods depict always depicted eating? Darn Brains, right. Oranges and shit. So, and but then, I have I have an idea about what you were asking about the the pesticides and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like Longo was saying, fruit can kind of package out. It can expel things. The tree, in my opinion, is a filter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've said that many times. Yeah. And so fruit is like the it's the most precious package of that plant. And it's not going to dump all the toxins into the fruit. It's going to put it into the bark. It's going to put it into the leaves if it has to. And you'll see leaves that have crazy bumps and scabs on them and kind of like cancer looking things. But you'll even find that on the fruit. OK, so let's say a fruit is heavily sprayed or the toxins do make their way into the fruit. Yeah. Well, that fruit is actually going to package that up and just push it away. A lot of times you open an avocado and there's just like this little rock on the outside, the outside edge inside the skin. 
it's like, well, that's that's an anomaly. Is that is that this is my question? I don't really know. Ah, the so ability for the fruit to just package up those toxins and stick them out away tumor. from away from it's a tumor. Nice, body does. nice. If we Attaboy. look at the Attaboy. fact that that's what our bodies do when we get a diagnosis, that's Amazing. not our body attacking itself. It's not is not a death sentence. It's literally the body is trying to yeah. save you. Yeah. It's trying to take all that stuff, all that toxic crap, and just package it up and get it out of the way. Get it away from the vitals. Exactly. So I think that's what fruit and trees do naturally. Now, with certain things, you're going to watch out. You're going to want to be careful with pesticides. I drink sugarcane juice. I love sugarcane, but that's a grass. It's not a fruit. It's going to absorb all the water and all the crap that they spray on it. And so I have felt after drinking some sugarcane or chewing on it, itchy lips, you know, a little bit of an itchy response because I'm like, oh, this is not a fruit. This is this is a grass and it's potentially absorbing a lot of what they spray. Right, right. Um, and I, I could go down the rabbit hole of breaking down like the difference between organic minerals and non-organic minerals. Like you're going to want all the organic minerals in the in the. Oh, yeah. yeah. With but, distilled water. That was a great. I wanted to chime in when you boys did that original thing, inorganic versus organic. Right. Because like the pesticides are non-organic. So the, the tree pretty much has no use for them. And it's not going to be in the water, I don't think. All so right, if you're so, evaporating out water, freeze drying, I don't know if you're going to lose the toxins. I don't so, know. So here's what happened. Gary Brecka came out with a study. Gary Brecka's, you know, the new hip, uh, what's it, Dana White's uh, health health guy. And he's hip. He's all in all the social media. Well, he came out and, br and brought everyone to the forefront, a study of, you know, a bunch of heavily sprayed fruits and vegetables and basically the skins were absorbing insane amounts of chemicals. So what they did was they juiced it and then they resprayed the crops and the pesticides still worked. And, and the study was basically showing you how much you were eating and drinking these chemicals. And they did it twice, two runs of juicing. And then they sprayed the crops with the juice, <laughs> the juice that worked again. And there was no pest for two times. You see what I'm saying? So that was something that came out that got me thinking like, oh my gosh, I got to stop. Like yeah. well, lemon peels are amazing. Orange peels are amazing. Get them from the woods. Don't eat yeah. this. Don't go get doing your lemon peels if it's freaking bathed in a chemical bath. Well, yeah, I heard how they did this with strawberries, but I have a question too, is we're all, no, the, well, we're all the variables isolated. Peace, bro. Appreciate don't you guys. Bro. Don't be shy, That's bro. That's all I didn't want to interrupt. Well, you guys. Bro. You crushed doesn't wanna, it tonight. Doesn't want to get it. roasted on the way out. More like. <laughs> yeah, you I'm on neck necrovore, whatever it was. But we'll do another stream soon. Thank you guys. Happy birthday, Florida! And shout out to everybody in the chat. Later. Peace awesome brother. job, Juan. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks man. Mate. Because I I've seen those studies too, where they sprayed the the fruits with the juice of the fruit that had been sprayed, and then they did it again, and there were no pests. But does the non-existence of pets pests indicate that it was that it contained pesticide or right is there an is there a compound in the strawberry or in the orange that repels pests naturally a defense yes. chemical a defense yeah, chemical all, you're saying all citruses do by the fact all onion family does so that's a big clump of the food group right there of right. like of the grocery stores citrus family and um even even all vitamin c rich and acidic uh fruits they'll even usually tell you have anti uh, mosquito properties awesome but, hey let me um, get my charger guys cool um <clears throat> yeah man <laughs> how's everyone doing out there let's see some oranges y'all i want to see a flood of oranges tangerines if you don't yeah, know this all yeah let's get this orange industry back going like let's get the orange energy flowing man we got to bring these trees back to life. Yeah, I'm not buying into the whole, you know, Florida citrus decline. I mean, narrative. it's you don't have to, but it's it's pretty observable. If you just look at it. It's like it's just not producing what it used to. And right. farmers have been paid to destroy their fields and exactly. they're constantly cutting down trees. So, I mean, it's evident in front of my eyes, but I'm not I don't think it's a death sentence. I don't think it's going to ever end. I no, think it's, it's going to only grow from here. The only issue, the main issue here is that we, is that the ma major brands cannot sell um, scuffed or marked up or cankered citrus at the price that they sell perfect round oranges. The biggest issue that they're having is that 
you know, the greening does not affect the fruit, if I'm not mistaken. The, the canker and the greening, or the canker, if the orange has been infected, if the tree's been infected, the peel might get messed up, but you can still eat the fruit. So there's no danger from the canker. With greening, I don't think it's the same thing. The what's the greening? That just prevents it from fruiting in general, or what's that? That that's a Spencer question. We'll have to get him chiming yeah. in on this one. My buddy Jack would probably know too. Shout out Jack Urban Abundance. But um I sent him the link right before this. Nice. Jack probably knows, but um, whatever the issue is, the the canker thing it doesn't affect the the fruit. You can still eat cankered citrus. The issue mm -hmm. is that they can't put cankered fruit on the in the grocery store. Right. Um, it doesn't look good. People won't want to buy it, and there might even be you know, uh, the grocery stores have policies like a, a quota. Like if the shipment comes in and it's too scuffed up. They'll say, no, we're not going to buy that shipment. You know, we're going to wait for the people with the perfectly round oranges. Mm -hmm. So they're having an issue making, sustaining their profits as they have been off the round, sometimes painted oranges. So right. the main issue is that they're, if we normalize the consumption of scuffed citrus, oh, here's, here's the main thing. If they detect cankered citrus, they have to cut down all the citrus within like a couple, you know, hundred yards. Yeah, and that's what direction. destroyed. That destroyed my whole area. I, I used to, every road around me, every backyard used to have a family citrus farm, and they're all you still see the dead trees. Like since I was a kid, like we're talking like 15, 20 years now. It's just sad, bro. And that's exactly what you just explained. They and they took it out of the middleman, the little people's backyards, who made a killing off of their citrus even after greening they forced them out here's a um here's i have to highlight this comment monarch michelle she says citrus hack planting them under oak trees pretty wild to witness them in full health apparently there's a relationship between the oaks protecting them from greening and so on i want to highlight this because i've also also heard that citruses are subtropical fruits that thrive under shade canopy they're, yes. they're understory fruits. So when we just have oranges out in the open, it's too hot for them. And of course, they're not going to last. So if anyone's interested in getting this orange uh, Mecca back to what it used to be, let's get them under canopies, under the understory and next to oak trees, apparently, according to Miss Monarch. 100%. Um, I forage constantly. That's where they are. The best place to find them is on the wall edge walls of oak, for, like canopies, like she's saying. These oak trees, right? So if, if the sun's setting in the west and you have a wall of oaks, like by a field, for about like 50 feet into the woods, you will be littered with all the citrus, tangerines, pomelos. Anything that was once wild will be there. I will get a bushel and make a video of you guys to literally solidify what she said. I will do, do that. that. I will make a video this week. I took a video today of what she just said and sent it to a lady in Ocala. They're littered everywhere in the woods under the oaks, 100%. Yeah. I want to talk about this comment right here. Long ago, the government came into my parents' yard and cut all their orange trees back in the day. Guys, before you had the Patriot Act and 9-11, before you had the NSA and the social media, mm -hmm. you know, data, mining, you know, scandals, all this stuff. Before you had all this invasion of privacy in the name of, you know, safety, before you had the Cove, oh, shit. I don't even know if that's still the hot word. You the Cove. Yeah, before you had the big pandemic, you know, Good scheme word. with the invasions of privacy that were justified in, you know, course of an emergency you had also you had before any of those things right before any of this was really a thing when people were getting invaded by the government so intimately you had the canker scare in florida in the 90s and probably before that a couple times but in the 90s they had a big canker scare it reminds me of the other c word longo 
Cancer. It's the same ah. word. It's the same word. It is same the same word. word. It is same the same word. word. Exactly. Same concept. Same concept. It's, we know yeah. it. You guys just explained it 100%. Yep. The Tropic of Cancer goes right between uh, Florida and Cuba, by the way. Darn but, right. um, shit, I forgot what I was saying. Okay. This happened in almost every neighborhood in Central and South Florida. It happened in both of the neighborhoods that I grew up in. Um, they do that. They were doing that in the 90s, in the 2000s. You know, they have different uh, flare-ups flare of this canker scare, they say, that never really affects the juicing companies, the Tropicana and, you know, them, the Minute Maid. But it always affects, it always comes to the front door of the independent, everyday citizen. Yep. Same way with the co the pandemic restrictions, the corporations for a sun were you know flying high, no no issues, but every American fell the full brunt of the of the regulations. Yep. Well, you had my dad's neighborhood, Chris, crispy two hundred nine's neighborhood, you know, being invaded with an actual, I don't know if it's FWC or you know ATF, whoever came out there with guns, but they brought assault rifles into people's backyards and said we don't need a warrant we have every right to seize the citrus in the state of florida and they went in and they hacked down people's trees they piled them up in the end in the you know cul-de-sacs and burnt them in people's backyards etc and in some cases they touched they brought helicopters they landed helicopters down with men with assault rifles to go seize oranges. Have you ever mm. heard them going after strawberries like that? No, nothing. <laughs> There's a lot of history of going after the herbalists and the raw milk farmers. Um, raw milk, yes, raw milk farmers, big time. And the herbalists in California, like when Big Pharma was just taking off and and stampeding over everybody. Yeah, they, they crush a lot of the little guys. But I think you're right that the oranges might be the most obvious one for fruit. Spencer from Florida would go down with the ship. Mark my words. Let everyone know in the chat if you guys want to go down too. I'm going down with the ship, okay? Just letting everybody know. All right, thanks. Good talk. <laughs> Man. You're going to need a I don't care. army to I don't get care. me out. No, I'm saying to them. I'm saying to them. Oh, oh yeah, we're, yeah. We're letting, we're just dis disclaiming. You're going to need a beeping army to get us out of our orange groves, okay? Our energy just comes back. You can you can play the whole uh, salt of the earth game and the skin suit yeah. game, but this ain't we ain't going nowhere. We, we will ain't going We will nowhere. mow down every Canadian soldier that they send our <laughs> that they send our yeah. way to seize yeah. our citrus. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> the, every the, crown soldier. The streets of Coral Gables will run brown with the maple syrup. <laughs> with the the blood of Canadian para, para soldiers. Oh uh, man! Ba -ba -ching. I love you guys. You, they're not they're not taking because we're gonna win over. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna win over. We're already winning over the state of Florida. I already have you know oh. government officials coming in and and saying, hey, we're on your side, Doctor Longo. When do we mobilize the next you know Flor <laughs> Florida Empire? Mm. But um. They're, it's going to take something like that to get our orange trees away from yeah, us yeah. next time. They're, they're not going to be able to send your you know, uncle, the sheriff, down the street this time around. Why? Because we all went through the COVID. Fuck. It doesn't Gosh. matter. I don't, I don't think it matters. They, they demonetize these videos anyway. It doesn't matter. Because um, we've all been through the pandemic scam. We've all seen it. We've all seen the tactics. Everyone kind of got the picture with the 9-11, you know, oh, hang on. They uh, they can see my what now because of someone else did something over here. Now my freedoms are gone. Well, then you have the pandemic. Now everyone knows damn well how they act, how they gaslight. So they're not going to be able to take our oranges so easily this time. And yes, you're right, Seth. Is the industry tanking? It is. But I think that's manufactured. And yeah. that's artificial. They know they, you know, there are cures. They they had a cure ten years ago that they said, guys, we got it. 
this is it. We're not going to have to worry about... They said that in the 90s. In, right. You know, in the, what did they say? 1994, right here. They thought they had eradicated the canker. They thought they just sawed it all down and burnt it out. Well, but, according um, to the, the chat here, everyone's talking about going under these oak forests and finding thriving orange trees. So yeah. what I like to say is Mother Nature is unfuckwithable. You can't yeah. touch her. Like, you, know, you just can't. You can't control her. You can't put her in a box. You can't put her in a... Yeah. And do not cut down these oak trees, guys. It, I don't care. You know, even if they're old, prune them like little trees. Like, prune them. Don't freaking take out oaks. Live oaks, you know, regular oaks, water oaks. Do, leave the oaks alone. They do everything for Florida. They hold this ground together like no other. Everything thrives with the with the connection of the oaks. It's, it's the incredible. cypress trees probably too, and they all got... Oh, yeah. Yep. Cyper, yep. Absolutely. 100%. <clears throat> Guys, their roots. And, sorry. Eat no, no, continue. Just a quick little thing. The cypress roots apparently are so strong, they'll just bust through swimming pools. Um, so they must have a oh, yeah. crazy root system. And then, yep. you know, big cypress state park. There's probably not any real big cypresses there anymore. Yeah. Let's just oh. talk about cypress. Cypress is a Phoenician stronghold. You know, cypress in the Mediterranean. Cypress, the tree... This goes back to, um, in kind of Greek mythology, Mediterranean mythology, the cypress is this tree of the underworld. It's very slow growing. It's, it's subterranean, like Seth just said. It has knees. This is another, we know it's related to Saturn in a way, or Capricorn in a way. Why? Because Capricorn rules the knees. Cypress has mm. knees. You could even pronounce the CYP as cap if you really wanted to. But cypress trees have kneecaps that stick up, up from the ground. So they're very subterranean, linked to the underworld on both sides of the Atlantic. And the cypress really was the titan, the giant, the old ent of the eastern United States. You have your redwoods and your sequoias over in the west. Well, guess what? What's their closest relative? The bald cypress tree of Florida, which is one of the only trees that, that grows to a comparable size and grows to a comparable age. Uh, they believe that the oldest organism in the world might be a cypress tree in South America, not Methuselah in uh, you know, the Western United States. So the cypress may actually be the oldest they think that might be 5,000 years old. You know, how they date these things without a core sample, I'm not an expert on. But I do know that they core sam they did core sample the senator. They actually core sampled the largest tree east of the Mississippi, and it came back 3,500 years old. Yes, awesome. That's, that's 1,500 years before the reign of Christ. That's, uh, you know... 500 years before some of these empires you're going to read about in, in Eurasia and things like that. Awesome. Yeah, when yeah. we're... I didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. No, all good. Um, which is while we're talking about trees and big trees, like you can't neglect the baobabs. And you have videos on that. And I think I've discovered even more here. Because I don't know really? if you mentioned the ones that are in um, Fruit and Spice Park down in Homestead. Yeah, I, I've put pictures of those in they my were up videos. There? Yeah. Okay. Because then we all, and there's also that one in Bayfront Park. There's one in Bayfront, which is unheard of. People, no one on the internet knows about that. There's no, you know, almost every tree in Florida has some article about it. The one in Bayfront Park, I have not heard anyone write about. No one talk about it being bigger than the one in Hollywood Circle. It is bigger, it's huge. There's also one in... Um, oh, wait, wait, just real quick. It isn't just one in Hollywood Circle. There's at least three there. There's five, yeah. Yeah. There's five or, that go around the circle. You walk yeah. through two of them. US-1, yep. America's number one highway, runs through these two baobab trees. It actually goes into a roundabout. But if you were to get out of your car and go through the roundabout, it would lead you right between these two baobab trees, brother and sister. We're told they're only 70 to 100 years old. 
That's no, ridiculous. No chance. There's a completely like mirrored pair in India yeah. that is the same size, same, you know, like a brother sister pair. One's a little bigger, not not that large in India that are 3000 years old. And it's the same size as the pair in Hollywood, Florida, which is the holy wood of Hollywood, Florida, this baobab. And I'm not sure if you mentioned in the the capital rickshaw, you know, capital rickshaw baobab video you did, how Hollywood is it's called Young Circle, which is where they're at. And that rotary, if you just go due east, it, it goes between these two weird keys of water, these keyholes of water. Or they yes. guess they're like this. They're, they go east and west. They're sideways. Yes. And it perfectly, perfectly flanks the road into which runs the, you know, the circle with the five ancient baobab trees, the holy wood. Yeah. Oh, I've got to show it now. Um, we have at least five or six. There's, there's, a, there's five or six baobabs in Homestead at Fruit and Spice Park. Yeah. Which I, I'm wondering if, if that place is a vestige of some, you know, much, much older, uh, just wild or, garden. Yeah. So guys, the two largest dredging operations on the Eastern coast of America up until, you know, whenever that changed, when they were created, it was the largest dredging effort in the Eastern coast of America. It was dredged by the same guy and same machine. Uh, actually, I don't know about that. They used the machine on on um, Tarpon Springs or West Florida. But it was the same guy. The same guy who oversaw the dredging of the Panama Canal was the same guy who shaped those two things that you're talking about, Seth. So we're told. And... They are so large, you can see them from a satellite way before you can make out any other any other um, water feature on the east coast of Florida. Here, let me get rid of the labels. I can already see it. They're the largest man-made water features on the east coast of Florida. Look at this. Those two right there, you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah so peculiar okay when you see a neighborhood being dredged this wow. cost millions of dollars this little wow. canal right here see the boat see how small that giant well that might just be a regular boat but you see how big a large boat is compared to this small wow that's a small boat that's a large well you know full family boat on the right that's a smaller fishing boat on the left up here that's a normal size canal and a normal size dredging effort that cost millions of dollars. Okay. Let's zoom out and look at what they dug in Hollywood, Florida. Uh, so goddamn big. You could park Noah's Ark in that thing. We've done the math. Why did they do that? Well, hold on. You also it's a cul -de -sac. Have a, it's a cul -de -sac you have a false a giant. coastline. That's a false coastline, too, though. Well, all of this was here. The barrier islands of Florida were here when the Spanish got here. They didn't know what they were, how they were formed, but there was an inland river, which is today the intracoastal waterway, that traced wow. the whole east coast of Florida. This is perhaps the Great Ditch of Atlantis. Whoa, dude. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Florida's the same, by the way. The southern plain of Atlantis as explicitly described by Plato, 555 kilometers southward, the southern plain of Atlantis extended into the sea. 555 kilometers is the exact distance that peninsular Florida extends out into the sea. Florida is 555 kilometers long. Same exact distance as the southern plain of Atlantis. Plain means flat. Okay, but let's just zoom in on this. Huge. Okay, we're going to go to Palm Beach and, you know, just zooming up. You, you don't see anything that big. This is what a normal neighborhood looks like, okay? 
that is big enough for a big yacht to go park down next to next to their house. What were they dredging this out for? It's or, I mean, yeah, it's so obviously not natural. You hold on, you're saying dredging or mining? They dredged this, meaning there was water there, but they went yeah. and they scooped it out so that it was deep enough for a boat to to sail into. Uh, what I was saying was like, imagine a different time. So you're talking about a different point in time where mining could have been done and the valuables on the coastlines. And we're looking at far in the future, easily places they could dredge. You can dredge in easy to dig locations. Anyways, I don't know. I like that. No, I like that. Makes let's, a lot of sense to me. Let's go and trace this line that we're talking about. Um, this is the east coast of Florida. This is Hollywood, Florida. Hollywood, Florida. These two cul-de-sacs, water, you know, liquid cul-de-sacs, yeah, were for sure. shaped by the same guy who did the Panama Canal. We're told. Now, yeah. he, he he might have done neither of those, but it's attributed to him. And this is so large, it's laughable compared to what your normal dredging operations are elsewhere. This is all natural. Don't worry about this. That's a shipping canal, you know. But neighborhoods, this is what your neighborhoods look like. This is your thin, thin, skinny waterways snaking through neighborhoods. Yeah. Not at all. Dude, the, the, the Miami Keys there, like. Hey, what's that golf course? What's that massive square golf course? This is golf a golf course. course. Yeah, so that's and then what's that circle? That's, that's young the, circle right there. That's what that's, the big that's the yeah, yes, bro. That mm -hmm. circle is like part yeah. of that. Oh, Isn't you're gonna love it. it. You're gonna see it. It's shaped like an eye of Horus. Number oh. one, it's I'm pulling nuts. Out now. It's nuts. So okay, oh go God. watch my Kalpa Riksha video. Okay, go go watch my yeah oh yeah my just God. just that one Kalpa Riksha tree. I forget what it's called. Hollywood, Hollywood of Hollywood, Florida. Jeez. Well, let's let's zoom in on this. This this is the two waterways. That's how you cross the barrier island right there. You cross this thin bridge, this thin strip between these two large water features, which are cul-de-sacs. For what I assume is like a ship larger than you've ever seen to be able to turn around and and drop things off. But um. That's a golf course. We all know what golf courses are. Golf course gives the truest meaning to the phrase covered up that you've ever heard. Okay? Oh my gosh, yes. There's no, no, you know, thing embodies the concept of covered up more than golf courses. There are, number one, golf courses in Florida were created for the same, in the same places, type of places that they were created in the British Isles, burial mounds, tumuluses, you know, earthen piles with with burials in them that were that dotted the landscape of Florida and the British Isles. Where is the capital of the golf world? St. Augustine, Florida is the golf capital of America. The same the same domain of the Tumukua, where the Federal Reserve extending up to Jekyll Island. This is Tamukua territory. We know they did human sacrifice, the sacrifice of the firstborn. It was a place that the two thirds of the well of the world's wealth went to vacation. Was Jekyll Island at the Florida Georgia border, and you know blah blah blah. This all goes back to the golf courses because at Jekyll Island you have Indian Mound Golf Course, Indian Mound cottage where John D. Rockefeller lived and they, they drafted the Federal Reserve in part there in the clubhouse but they did um, human sacrifice in the same spot that they signed the Federal Reserve into action in the domain of the Tumukua and Jekyll Island. St. Augustine was also the Tumukua territory. This went down to Central Florida but the point is they built golf courses, you know, they saturated their deeds in the dark magic of an ancient people. And in the same way, they, they took their recreation in the golf courses, you know, st stopping over the ancient war fields, the ancient ballparks, the ancient, you know, burial mounds of this conquered empire 
they would stomp and play and have their sport. And golf is the only sport that is subterranean by nature, that has access to the underworld. And you pierce the veil between above and below. And this is something that the richest and the wealthiest of, of America and the world revel in. They love it. I'm going to get into golfing soon, you know. I learned all this stuff about cigar smoking, and I got into cigar smoking because of, you know, my appreciation for how the natives used it. I'm going to try my hand at golf, too, in an upcoming video with the whole, you know, golf exposed, golf courses uncovered video. I've done videos about it before, but this golf course right here feeds into this whole concept of... I'm going to give you a... Uh, a cr I'm giving you guys a golf course in the middle of nowhere, right across from a CMEX plant. It's the most horribly placed golf course, Citrus Wildlife Management Area. Or wait, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, it's called World Woods, and there's caves that Brett, the scuba diver, that's came on this channel, took me to the caves there. We trespassed. Oh my gosh, legit. Like I was in. Oh, I'm just Where leaving that. Back. Say one more time. The caves at World Woods Golf Course are incredible. Yeah, it, where's where's the golf course? Um, Citrus Wildlife Management Area. So when you go to Citrus Way, so World Woods Golf Course, it would be yeah. Real, real quick, if anyone's like looking at maps of Hollywood, Florida, if you go west a little bit from that first rotary, there's another rotary roundabout, yes. whatever you call it, that has like yeah. badass street. Street planning around it. The streets all arc around the, the rotunda. Floor. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. So no, the rot rotunda is west coast of America. Hey, and that Hollywood. Did you did you follow that Hollywood uh, Florida thing you're just showing? Did you follow that straight across to the Retina building? Oh, here, man. here. Let's let's see here. One step at a time. You can let's, decode let's, this. This will take three hours go. just to decode this for whole real. Thing. Well, Bro. I I also I forgot to say. Golly. Me, me. Let's do this crew right here, minus Juan, because he's such a bore, right? <laughs> I mean, thank God he's gone. Yeah, uh, where's this going? Uh, making dude? Ta tacos or something. But um, <laughs> what you've got? But what I was gonna say is, just kidding. We love Juan. Go check him out. But I want to do one with you two and Jack, and from a, a Urban Abundance podcast. And yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just do like growing agriculture hacks like that yeah. like you know the orange under the oak tree like let's just get it all out on the table and into it let's well, throw out a lot of those hacks and you know facts and things like we, that we've got a lot going on for the channel and soon we're gonna prep them and tease them for something big for you brother so just let them know that it's coming yeah we got big things on the way lots of uh abundance that's the word. We'll That's the word for everyone involved. But um, hey, let's just zoom in here. I want to prove um, this point. This is the Hollywood Lakes. On both sides of of this street are the Hollywood Lakes neighborhood. Now, if you go watch my Kalpa Riksha video, you'll see like the historic, you know, preservation guy, whatever, uh, president of the board, whatever. This neighborhood, you know, they have this little guy who knows everything about the neighborhood, basically. What? And he goes, the Hollywood Lakes neighborhood, every style of architecture known to man is represented in the Hollywood, Hollywood Lakes neighborhood. Whoa. You have Japanese, Chinese, Pueblo, modern, Queen Anne's, Victorian, Moorish, literally, he... Every type of living, like architecture that they build homes out of, is represented in the Hollywood Lakes. You have like your old Dutch, like barn looking houses. You have your like Irish, you know, everything. That's just one little thing. Then you, you know, moving east. What is, hold on, what is the thing in the lower nodule, in the center of the lower nodule? Is there a monument or something? Sorry? The dead center of the lower uh, nodule, the lower tip, you know, the lower, uh, yeah, the lower envy there. Zoom in. You don't have what I have? Keep going. No, no. No way. Look at this. Look, this is what's on mine right now. Lower nodule, guys. What is that? Oh, it's probably a fountain. 
Oh. Or, I mean, okay, if this is representative of Joaquin and Boaz, then one has to be male and one has to be female. That's exactly mm. what's going on, because there's not one here. Look, look, nothing, right? Mm. Back out, I go back in. There's definitely a fountain or something there. What is this? Well, so... Okay. And then let's go to Young Circle Park. What do we got? That's interesting. Here? This also, they look like, like lingams, to say it nicely. Yeah. They yeah, look yeah. like uh, stylized, like Hindu lingams. They're nodes. They're positive, negative, male, female, anode. Yeah. Cat. Oh, it, for are. sure. It looks like they. Um, they're nodes. It looked okay. like a plasma fork. Almost as you if they're a, a Biden tower. You yes, ever seen yes. an electric Biden? Yes, exactly. With, you know, like the thing that the gods of electricity would be holding often in ancient times that uh, you know you've got the trident but this is like the biden of that's what pluto. we're looking at pluto sure. had a biden and biden that's where you get biden scorpio kamala kamala harris scorpio or she might be kamala. Libra. she might or be she's... a libra i thought she and biden were both scorpios yeah they're both scorpios that's what i was saying they're very plutonian and then his name is biden that's you know neptune has the trident pluto who rules Scorpio, the underworld, has the Biden. Biden. Whoa. Biden. Biden. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. We're going east from the Atlantic Ocean, and we're now we're looking at Young Circle. This is Arts Park at Young Circle. Yep. Hmm. Where have I heard about that? Where, oh, where have I heard that in quick passing on the news in the last 20 years or 25 years. Oh, wait, you mean Young Circle where the 9-11 attackers had seafood or dinner the night before the attacks? Whoa, dude, really? You, I forgot yeah. about, oh you, my God. Wait, that you, just adds a whole thick layer to this. Huh. And you you mean uh, Hollywood Park where the mayor, the same mayor who was photographed holding an assault rifle with soldiers in Israel is the same mayor who labeled our ancient baobab trees and commissioned the revitalization of this young circle is also an israeli like uh you know i'm not trying to connect too many dots but we know israel might have been involved in 9 11 and we know that the mayor traveled to israel and commissioned them to build the circle and was responsible for them putting uh, the fountain that reads the life waves of the tree. Okay, we're, we're going to unpack this all, but it's an eye of Horus. It's between these two prods, these two, you know, like Seth said, uh, pillars of masonry. But let's zoom in. It is clearly an eye of Horus. I mean, that's an eye of Horus. Any way you look at it, both ways, wow. you could mirror it, look it up. Look it upside down. Wow. It is an eye of Horus so clearly. It is also, it also makes me think of like the viper's head, like the cobra's head of the pineal gland and the, the building which the Pope speaks out of being the eyes of the viper, if anyone who's ever seen that. But blah, blah, blah. It's the eye of Horus, which is not inherently evil, not by any means. And someone saying, oh, that's a bit of a stretch, you know, Egyptian mythology in south florida you know what the heck well what if i told you that there's a building whose shadow is cast onto the young circle whose number address is 1515 mm. isis and the yeah. way that it lights up or sorry it might it might be 1818 but it's isis and the way that it lights up the eights, only, I'll tell you right the S, now. only the S shines. I think I remember seeing that. And I'm like, I was like, oh, look at the ISIS building. But that's yep. also, I just blew my mind. Just the name Young Circle. If something was ancient, what better title to give it to cover up its ancient roots than Young Circle? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, Joseph Young developed Hollywood. Okay. Hollywood bro, photos. That's bro, where you get the Young. just like ISIS. But hang on. You've got the, the baobab trees are known as the tree of life because they hold mm -hmm. the water of life. The water of life is said to come from the baobab tree. Oh, and hey, 
Anyone out there into Tartaria? Raise your hand, you know, whatever it means. You could debate that, doesn't matter. What link do we have here to Tartaria? Hmm. Baobab trees is where cream of tartar comes from. Cream of tartar originally came from the baobab tree. That is a fact. In recent times, they've done something, they get it from somewhere else, but it is originally baobab powder, which you can buy, which you can buy in a herb market. You can buy it in Hollywood, Florida. You can buy it at the yellow green market. Uh, when, you know, weekend fest, weekend flea market, they sell baobab powder there, right down the street. But, um, Spencer, what were you pointing up? The ISIS building it looks just like it, the 1818. Oh, no, yeah, it's just, it was 1818, but the way it's it's big, it says now leasing, it looks just like ISIS from can like you, 100. Can you put it up, please? I'll, oh, I'll... oh, everybody saw it for a good two minutes, but I'll no, put it up. Yeah, please, I'll throw it up on the big screen. Give me a sec. And then that road that intersects Young Circle that goes in between those two keyholes is is just bigger. It's just a bigger avenue than the other ones. So yeah. it's like a stronger energetic channel. And it does go further west. Yes. And it does and it does there's three more there's two more circles. Yeah. It's the only building that casts a shadow on the park. Yes. Okay. That's Here. so weird. Let me throw it up. Um God damn it. <laughs> here. Fuck. All right, Spencer has to go here. Then we go like this. Boom. Yep, Isis. You guys see it? Isis. And its shadow is cast onto the circle. So you have Isis and Horus being represented here. And then someone else pointed out that Ibis is close to Isis. The ibis is Thoth. Florida and Miami especially are known for its ibises. That's the Miami Hurricanes. Um, but yeah, thank you, Spencer. That's yeah. good. And let's go back to the map here. And let's just trace this. This is Young Circle. I have Horus. There's a Publix on this circle too, which is, is regarded right? as this, the wildest Publix in Florida, like <laughs> the most unnatural behavior what does that mean it's, the it's wildest like, publics in florida like a very drug addict crowd outside okay but um we were just going east to west and let's do that yeah, east yeah. to west you it's find a... one circle two circles three circles and this one branches out to the whole neighborhood. To a bigger circle. And this whole framework, this whole infrastructure was here before the city was even developed. Boom. Yeah, the oldest it, maps that you find of the area have that in there. There's no maps yes. that that yes. depict anything from before that. They were just traced out in like Shell Road or something. What, it was what do you guys like, get from that building? I, I, what, what does that mean? The shape of that building and it being a retina building. Which yeah. building? And then also the third one, the third circle with the arch is the literal. It's called the Retina Center or something. The Retina yeah. Group, Retina Group it, of Florida, and it's like it, an hourglass with something on top. It used to be a military school. One of these circles too, or at uh -huh. the end here, it used to be pretty trippy. That one. There's your Retina building. Um, yeah. yeah. Just so everyone sees what we're looking at, it's kind of masked by the urban uh -huh. sprawl. But if we zoom in. You'll see one circle, two circle, three to circle. Me, to me, that's the end of the uh, mechanics from your nodes, from your nodes to the end. To me, that's the that's the end of the uh, mechanics of this um, system. You guys, you guys ready to see what this building looks like? It's yeah. A, it's a glass like tetra um, mm -hmm. pod or tetra. I don't know what you'd even call it. Mm. Here, let's go around to the show. Oh, yeah, it's like an hourglass shape from above almost, but it's angular. Yep. Oncoming traffic mm -hmm. here. Watch out, guys. Watch out, dude. Here, we should get a good view of it. And this one's called, what is it, Presidential Circle or Academy Circle? I do not know. It's both. I see both labeled here. 
Nah, detective time. Oh shit. Um. Whatever. But oh shit, well, there's one more thing. The US one I want to show. Yes, yes, Seth. Oh, I didn't say anything. Okay. Was that Spencer? Cool. cool. I did figure out something interesting about the rotunda, though, when I was think when I was scanning that a long time ago. Um, everyone's like, "Oh, it was made. It was intentional." But like the, uh, it was more than intentional. It was like old world um, architecture, intentional. But the uh, Biltmore's had the cattle ranch originally that that was built on. And I don't think they would own a piece of land that massive in Florida for no reason. Just throwing that the, out there. The Vanderbilts? Oh, yeah. Sorry. The Vanderbilts. I apologize. I always do that. That's okay. So here, looking at this three circles, guys, we're going to now go. We just went east to west. Now we're going to go north to south. And what we have here, this major artery in Florida, is known as US-1. It goes all the way down to the Keys, all the way up to Maine, if I'm not mistaken, up to Cape Cod. Um, I walked the uh, line US on US-1. I walked the line in cowboy boots on US-1. That's a true story. Nice. So US-1 is America's number one highway. First original number one, numbered number one highway in America. US one, it it's a route, so technically not always a highway, but it's it changes roads throughout the route. But the route goes from Key West to Cape Cod, if I'm not mistaken. No, further than Cape Coast to Maine. Yeah, yeah. And what you get is this this cultural nerve center of America, this you know nervous system network that is the traffic the infrastructure of America gets its original like charge to me. It's original, like it's energized by this process through the Baobab circle. In my mind, that's the way I see it. And that's the way it was explained to me by, um, by wait, why can't I do this? Okay. Hang on. I want to get us all up at the same time. Boom, there we go. Okay. That this was a, this is how it was explained to me in the video. You know, you you guys can watch it live. Me getting taught by Haladara Carl Lobby. Haladara. Shout out to Haladara. He's in Hollywood. I think he's in California now or something else, but um he explained this to me. After I reached out to him and tracked him down, as can be seen in the video, and he explained how US-1 goes right through the two baobab trees. So if we go, this is US-1, it goes all the way down through Miami, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it crosses, it intersects Young Circle right here. That's US-1. Ooh, north, uh, north nice. South. Good find. And it intersects right here. Guess what's right there? We're looking... I'm going to plot that right there. Boom. Right between the two ancient... Oh, yeah, you can see that. Oh, right, shit. Right between the wow. two ancient baobab trees. Wow. You have US-1 running right through Young Park, through the two baobab trees. Baobab wow. Trees. All of this traffic, all of this fr friction, all of this kinetic you know, mm. energy, all of this static electricity of the people in their cars winding and winding and winding always the same direction roundabout it's, it's a roundabout. conspiracy roundabout churning. conspiracy baby Ch churning <laughs> churning churning america does not have roundabouts guys america no they're does not no. have roundabouts we're bullshit we're, bullshit they're building well, them right now they're starting them now i'm telling you right now Good. it's part of agenda 2030 Ooh. they're doing them right now right where i live and it's weirding everybody out they're all over miami i don't know yeah. how old they are though yeah, well, Florida's not known for its roundabouts. It's not worked into American infrastructure. It's, it's you know, going it might, to be. It might be a feature that is, you know, that was, 
you know, or is being added in with the smart cities. I, I'm with you. Like Clearwater yep. has roundabouts and reminds Sosa me of the roundabouts. Reminds me of the native uh, rain dance. You know, similar concepts probably going on. But all this energy, all of the traffic, all the resources going the trade route that is US one, this energy, you know, this is very woo woo, I get it, but there's something to this. These ancient baobab trees being like this anchor point, being this battery center, being this capacitor, you know. Beautiful. Clean, yeah. Clean cleaning out that, you know, keeping that churning process like cool, keeping it, you know, functional. Um, another thing about this park, guys, let's just let's see if we can walk in to the park. I think we can. Sweet. No, you can't. That is the two trees. If we were to walk through there, up through the trees, you would get to the fountain, Young Fountain. And that fountain is hooked up under the ground into wow. the tree. And the tree's life force energy determines the flow pattern on the fountain. Are you serious? I'm 100% serious. And most days you'll go out there and it's just dribbling. Some of the days when we had a meet up there, it was pumping because the energy, if there's more people there, it, the tree wakes up and the no way. fountain goes higher. Most days it's just dribbling. Yeah, you can look, go see I, it for I, yourself. I want to go for a meetup then and, and let's film it. Let's make, we, let's prove it. We did it. Oh but shit, I want to see it. You also have, that was installed by a Japanese artist that was hired by the mayor of, of Hollywood. Whoa. Who may or may not have been involved in. Who may or may not. <laughs> who, uh, you know, the 9-11 attackers ate dinner at Young Circle before they did their attack holy crap okay and i think they might have even been eating seafood and they're muslim like you know something that they're not supposed to be eating perhaps i don't i don't remember the specifics on that mother but some, fakers but someone pointed that out to me like you know a lot of muslims don't eat seafood kind of like a lot of jews don't eat certain seafood yeah they were also going to the strip club and doing drugs and like just... right <laughs> US one. I'm looking at US one. Isla Murata. It literally says Islam. Islam more yeah. Ada. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. And uh, one more thing about US one is that ninety five, which we know goes also from Maine to Florida to Miami, uh, ninety five ends at US one and one continues. So the the ninety five terminal is also kind of an electric term. Uh, it, yep. it terminates at right at US one, but basically. Mm. Coral Gables Coconut Grove area. Yes. Yep. The Coconut Grove Farmer's Market, uh, Haladar said, was is so eclectic and so kooky because of the energy getting expelled. All of America's like spinal column, like spinal cord, goes down and then dumps, expels out right there into Coral Gables Coconut Grove. So Bro, I, was, I was at that farmer's market yesterday. I was working in there the whole day. And it's just, yeah. there you, it's such a, nexus there's such an energy vortex just in that one little park all the uh, vendors crammed together and everyone's meeting and there's so many like weird synchronicities that happen there it's pretty wild oh i love it i right. love that for sure um another thing about the park uh the trees one tree in particular not the two that we're looking at there's five of those baobab trees in the young circle around the circle, you know, all spread out in a different corner. The largest one is the main tree that the fountain is pointing towards. And there's actually like six strings, almost like a guitar or something like six stripes or seven stripes, maybe uh, pointing, leading to the, let's go back to the street view. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Um, if we go back to the street view, this is Young Circle. They blow glass right there in that big building. There's an amphitheater here where band, where bands play, um, which is also, Seth, huge connection to the Bayfront Park Baobab. Another what do Baobab trees have to do with amphitheaters? Right? Amps? Amp? The theater? You know? We're getting... Also, right now I'm here. seeing... I'm yeah, I don't mean to 
derail this because this is a beautiful connection, but I also see a fish from above right here with the, the fin on the left, and then the hump is his body, and it yeah. tips down to his Yeah, almost neck. looks like a dolphin jumping out of the water to me, too. Yeah, but no, I mean, amp the amplification of energy of the tree, you know, with humans kind of helping that, you know, or amplifying the vibe of whatever the humans are e emoting playing that music. It is it is interesting that there's amphitheaters at both of these Baobab locations. Yeah. Now, is there I a wanna... golf course nearby? Where's the nearest golf yeah, course? Yeah, we were just looking at it, Seth. Look at this. Yeah. Boom. That's it. <laughs> it's practically touching it. If yeah. the, uh, you know, that might even be the ISIS building in between the, the two. But mm. I've, I've slept next to this golf course on the, the street in my van and so tranquil so quiet like you can't have a better night's sleep than next to a golf course um so to the tranquility i can attest to you know the energy the positive ions whatever from the fountain and the golf course or negative ions who knows but looking at this circle i want to drill this point home um that's the middle walkway this striped area almost like the neck of a guitar or something pointing out and then this is the fountain, this little slit eye of the needle looking thing that even has almost like a thread going through it. This eye of the needle is the young fountain at Young Park. Um, I actually might have a different name for the fountain, but it's Young Park, fountain in Young Park. Young fountain, fountain of youth, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, Potent yeah. Potential link there. And the fountain, the literally each of the jets is attached to one of these like stripes in the center. And it's like a, you know, like vertebra going through the center of this oval. And then each of those fountain heads is attached to one of these stripes going down to the bottom left. Now these stripes wow. here lead to, lead to another tree. The baobab tree, the largest baobab tree. That's this patch right here. You can't tell because all the leaves are off. But that's the baobab tree. And what you're seeing is underneath that walkway, this strip of stripes underneath that walkway, is wiring that goes into the tree. Bruh, this is and, crazy. And the tree controls the jets. Its life force energy determines the wow. flow of the jet. Wow. And then, and then there's six poles, six poles around the tree that okay. are speakers. And the six speakers around the tree are turned into music. You know, they play music that comes from the tree, just like the water. What do you mean? Like wireless, like yes. wirelessly, now, wireless power induction? Now, yes. Now the tree does not play notes itself but the tree has fluctuations in energy in, you know, pulse. They've, you're talking about the tree wireless. That. You're talking about the tree's wireless power powers the speakers. No, it's wired. There's an oh. actual node. There's a, you know, Jeez. it's plugged into the tree under the walkways. They That's plugged into it. Freaking and crazy. The, the life force energy of the tree is measured and determines not only the flow of the fountain, like it's like a fountain Did, show you ever see like a, sh a fountain show where like yeah yeah it's like yeah. a symphony it's like a firework yeah. display yeah. like there's a little you know uh there's yep. a little uh it's like a um what do they call it when you plan a dance it's a uh, choreographed like fountain show but wow. this isn't choreographed it's hooked wow. up to the tree and it can fire off at different ends or it can shoot really high or dribble very low based on the tree's life force energy. There's no way that water's chlorinated, right? It's probably just fresh or salt or what? Well, What's the deal know, with that water? I don't know if I don't know if the water is connected to the tree, but the pulse is Of the course pressure. it is. Well the no I'm saying the pulse <laughs> comes from the, the tree. If and that pushes that's the where, water up. Right. That's where the discharge is. Yeah. Now you, the, the the speakers around the tree play music and I think it sounds like a harp. It's been turned off for a little while because they haven't gone and fixed it because they're spending your taxpayer money on terrorist attacks, I assume, 
they're not fixing their parks, you know, but <laughs> you've got these six speakers that surround uh, this tree right here and they play the music played by the tree. Now the Hang on. My AC's gone. Um, they don't play, the tree doesn't play notes itself. The tree had its, has its energy measured and that triggers different programmed harp noises. So it's not a pre-recorded track. It's actually the tree playing, you know, cueing different noises on its own. That's insane. And that tree, and Translating, another thing here, transmuting is what it's doing. Let's look at this whole layout of the, you know, the bird's eye view of the layout. There's this third pathway leading to the welcome uh, poster, or, you know, the sign that has a picture of, I think, Mr. Young on it, but it has something there. I don't know what it is or why the squiggly line goes there but that implies like electric energy that implies like a lightning bolt a zigzag and it goes from halfway between the fountain and the tree on the striped walkway <coughs> to the en entrance center all the shapes here were carefully thought out guys carefully yeah, thought out. yeah that ain't random the, the, every detail is taken into account and that's US one, America's number one highway, running right through this whole, you know, system here. Give me one Dude, second. There's, there's more gravy with the Baobabs in Homestead because if you look up Fruit and Spice Park, well, first, don't even do that. If you look at the just a zoomed out view of Miami, there's this diagonal line. It's the 874 that cuts through Kendall. We're looking mostly south Miami. Um, so if you look kind of around the Kendall, you'll see 874 runs northeast to southwest. Right at Three Lakes, that turns into a railroad. And I think we were talking about railroads before the show because Henry Flagler was a railroad mogul. You know, he allegedly built the entire rail system Meh. in my Meh. allegedly. Meh. So follow the railroad from Three Lakes southwest and just keep going, keep going, keep going. Cuts through Aladdin City. As soon as that railroad turns from going southwest to south, Boom, there's Fruit and Spice Park. Exactly, like right there. And that's where there's a group of five or six, I would say ancient, but uh, very old baobab trees. And the railroad, I mean, is it is that not a energy channel, right? Oh, yeah. Well, what goes up and down railroads? Goods and services. Goods and services are money. It's energy. And so it's a transfer of energy. They just created their own circuits and grids. So absolutely money is energy. Energy is money. It's all the same thing. Well, and also railroad ties are just iron and which are extremely conductive. So it's like quite literally, oh. you know, cables of like yeah. uh, current. You want to hear something even uh, crazier? Just, you know, to, it's almost ridiculous at this point, just gravy on top of gravy. We like you know, crazy. It's, it's like, uh, you know, extra large gravy cup from kfc no meat no potatoes just the gravy oh god just KFC. That's what we do. <laughs> just yeah just, uh, just <laughs> shower in the, the mud oh. but um mud bath gravy bath alabama mud that's a mississippi mud bath right there um, <laughs> the alabama gravy train <laughs> yeah that's the southern spa treatment Ew. blah 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 now you stay Thank you for bringing up the railroad ties, Seth, because what did uh, Henry Flagler build his entire St. Augustine complex out of? Kakina limestone with railroad ties as the um, rebar. Like, they didn't have rebar back then in 1888. Fucking when they were building Hogwarts out of thin air for no reason yeah, right. in North Florida. Uh, they made Dude. with yep. railroad ties as the Bullshit. skeleton of the building. So if you hammer into the walls, which I don't think we can do, or I don't think anyone's done, you'll see railroad ties as like the, the steel beams inside. Yeah, it's like rebar plus. You yep. know, it's like giant rebar. Yeah, and that's a building that had electricity from the beginning. 
uh, with a couple hundred rooms. Bunch. Uh, it had two water towers with an electric steam dynamo system installed by Edison, we're told. Cisterns. And it had the railroad ties. Guys, I want to shift gears here for a Shit. second. Um, did anyone catch the hail today? Uh, yeah, just right next to me a little bit. Yeah, he was hailing in Lake Worth today. That is a that is usually a byproduct of some sort of seeding. Sometimes silver iodide, you know, the crystallization formation of si silver iodide when injected into the sky into these clouds, just a little bit. Um, the crystallization formation is just identical to that of water. So a byproduct would be snow. A byproduct would be hail. And uh, yeah, when you have rapid cooling in times like these, from these little short rainstorms, it's almost always some sort of spray. And yes, there's far more, not all sprays are created equal. There are oil slicks you can spray in the ocean to steer hurricanes. You will choke a hurricane out if you spray a layer, an oil slick out in front of it and a hurricane moves a different direction. They've been doing that for a long time. You've got silver iodide for, you know, cloud seeding, which is in the Department of Agriculture, all that shit. So anytime you see a flash ice cold rainstorm in Florida, it's really, really cold. It's almost always seeding or just a spray that they shouldn't be spraying up there that is similar. The end. Okay. No, dude, it's global warming. Come on. So, yes. <laughs> yep. Dude, global warming is a conspiracy theory, not because it's fake, but because they don't want it to happen. We need to warm this bitch up. Okay, we need to defrost this little, you know, blueberry a, out in yeah. Neil, Neil Disgrace Tyson's you know space space universe i mean we're too cold we're a we've all blueberry. seen we have seen the antarctica the tropical paradise in the wall in that old old map i mean yep that was antarctica beautiful. was once tropical so was the north pole you know you have you have Bro. mango banana and coconut being discovered deep underneath finland but here i've been in florida for 27 years you know that's how old I am. Spencer's been here for longer. Spencer maybe has some more insight into this, but as long as I've been alive, I've only ever seen it hail once in Florida. Um, in Boca Raton, I was driving to the gas station with my mom, and it started hailing. And it hailed for like 30 seconds, or, you know, a minute, and it was done. But it was, they are big. They were almost golf, golf ball sized. This one was not as big, but it oh, hailed I was gonna say, today, you kidding, guys. Um, it hailed today in Lake Worth. And here, I'll play this. It's pretty damn low for hail. Florida gets hail where I'm at in Central, but not, not down south very often. Yeah. It's almost always weather modification regardless, just so you guys know. Hmm. Isn't... You know, God's the greatest weather modder of them all. So, well, Earth is always trying to reach homeostasis. Always. Mother Nature. Mother Nature is always trying to cleanse and heal itself. Like you were describing the orange earlier. That's how Mother Nature is. This is expelling. This is unnatural. Yeah. Hail is not a natural phenomenon, no matter how many times they say it in academics. I go out and I grab a piece right here, I think. This was today. This was like Bro, a couple hours ago. That is so south. That is so freaking south for hail at this time of year. I saw a piece. I was like, I'm going to get it. You got you a piece? Yep. Did you eat it? Hey, did you see my buddies that put it in their uh, cocktail? I told them they wouldn't make a chemtrail cocktail, and they did, and they drank it. Yes, that's hilarious. <laughs> Let's just hope they didn't kill any kids driving home. Alcohol, huh? So funny. Let's. I'll just have my little chemtrail cocktail, and you know, hopefully, I don't beat my wife. Hopefully, I don't kill my friends and family with my car. Huh? Yeah, margarita hour. Hilarious, guys. Wow. Stay, stay off the sauce, folks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I'm just kidding. I think I appreciate the humor in it, but alcohol is nothing to be joked about. It is the destroyer of life. It is the solvent of the devil himself. Okay. Spirits, 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 spirits. 
<laughs> oh, I'm a little better with a couple beers in me. Ha ha ha. Kills a family on the way home. Have you ever <laughs> seen? Hilarious. Biofield? Oh, it's tequila hour. You know, uh, Sunday's brunch day, day drinking on Sunday. Ha 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 ha. And then you just hit a kid with your car. Hilarious. Anytime I see a little alcohol joke meme t-shirt, all I think about is, oh, how'd that guy get home? He drove drunk home. All you dirty drinkers know you drive home drunk. You, you all know it. That's why you all have such a dang guilty conscience when anyone speaks the truth in front of you. Because you all know how poorly and how badly you offend. Okay? Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, she's a little prettier with a couple beers in me. Hilarious. Hilarious. I ate, once I ate psilocybin, one time, like, I was just on a mild, just casual trip and not even, like, at my house. I was actually semi in public enjoying myself. I realized, wow, does that literally just totally open up your, it's like having an open door policy to your house. Your spirit's like, you have no aura whatsoever. It literally dims your aura. Your frequency gets so low and, and you're just like an open door policy. It's for spirits, for energy. It's stupid. It's, it's, uh, I realized it was not only poison and toxin, but it literally lowered your state. It's, it was crazy what hit me when I was tripping on psilocybin. I drank my whole life. I drank heavy in my 20s. Yo, I hope there's somebody like collecting this hail and t running tests on it. I want to know what's <laughs> in there. There's somebody that uh, messaged me saying that they were going to do it. Actually, there's a few of them, and I get so many messages. I just can't follow up with them, but I need to go back and find that. Thanks for reminding me. I used to do that. I used to collect rainwater after heavy spray days and do my little tests just with meters and microscopes i could i didn't know what i was looking for okay <laughs> you know seth i got some i got a bottle for you that'd be happy to you know put in your uh, put in your hands it's radium water from radium springs yeah baby in georgia which uh many famous rich millionaires presidents have been known to go swimming for its healing properties yeah, interesting. Because um, I noticed that the sulfur, basically, the smell goes away after a while when you when you harvest this water, like, or uh, you collect the water from Punta Gorda, for example, and let it sit or let it even capped and just it's, it's sitting there. It doesn't taste as eggy after a while. So I wonder over time, how does how does the composition of the water change? You know, I'd want to do it as fresh as possible. And also, I'd want like a real lab to be able to do it. Or have have someone who knows what they're doing do it, but yeah, so many mysteries out there, boys. <laughs> Lab is bowel backwards, so oh, when they hey, are doing oh. their little yeah. Oh, someone in the chat a while ago, I forgot to share this. You would have loved this. Have you ever heard of the word sporange? An old word, sporange. A sporange is an old botanical term for sporangium, the portion of a fern which in which asexual spores are created. And then the the uh, there's another one with the fruiting something, somebody in the chat, and it was like, there was three definitions. And it's a very old word, sporange. Orange with an SP on the front. That was well, a great it, comment. Longo, you did mention that oranges have that anomalous ability to fruit and blossom at the same time, which kind of has to do with the sporing nature that Spencer just described. Yes. And they also have said that both gold and silver are represented in the orange tree. That the blossoms represent the silver and the gold is represented by the orange itself. And there's a, there's a way better way that that has been put. I'm giving a very crude description of, of this, but there is like an ancient Chinese proverb of, or about the white of the oh maybe that's what it is sorry the white of the blossom being the moon and the gold disc of the orange being the sun beautiful beautiful sporangium any organ especially in fungi in which asexual spores are produced 
That's the origin of that sporange word. Mm -hmm. Huh. Ferns. Interesting. Um, how do you ever feel about the sun and, you know, sun and the moon, sun, gold, moon, silver, male, female. The sun is the projector. The moon is the receiver. The sun is the one. The moon is the zero. The, the, the male is the one. The female is the zero. The male is the one. The female. Everything is charge and discharge. And, you know, I mean, I'm always a, that's why gold and silver coin is the only lawful money to this day that is actually true and lawful money that holds true value in the U.S. code still to this day. And I think it's just far, I mentioned it a few times, but it's far more, far more physical than people understand. They don't understand the value of gold and silver in the human body. Like there's alchemy that's extremely mm -hmm. important with this stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't know old world structures. I think uh, what I do know is that my favorite video on the moon is on this YouTube channel by this guy called Better Known as Wrong Think. And mm. I would highly encourage anyone who wants to explore the mystery of the moon to type in Better Known as Wrong Think and watch his two latest videos. He only has three on the channel. Yeah. Guys, anyway. good comment here. Or at least a comment what do we got? I appreciate responding to. The, the reasoning's a little off, but it's an honest question that a lot of people have or you know a, a honest you know um realization we're kind of looking out and deducing that you know why is it this well, way <clears throat> in finnish you find this too and in certain you know very small amount of cultures or small amount of mythologies you get the sun being feminine and the moon being masculine oh interesting now this is not actually true. All societies there's ever been have attributed sun masculine, moon feminine. When it comes to the moon, however, Finnish being the best example of this, the light fishing community, the light side of the moon is considered masculine. The dark side of the moon is considered feminine. Oh. So, so Yes, there's a masculine element to the moon because it's sunlight from the sun. But the light side of the moon, so the part of the moon that you see is considered the feminine aspect. So you're only ever seeing the, the masculine side of the moon. Now, the sun being feminine would take a whole episode to unpack. And it's a very good rabbit hole. I'm planning on doing something with this with a friend of mine who's a woman who's very into, uh, you know, Germanic mythology and things like that. And then I'll probably try and get Mario from Symbolic Studies on that one too. We're going to get into the sun and moon, masculine, feminine, mm. and just set the record straight once and for all. Charge and discharge, <laughs> baby. No, nothing, to that. nothing gets me more riled up than... The 13 month calendar. Yes, I know. exactly. Blah, blah, the, blah. Nothing gets me more unriled, more riled up than unwarranted confusion. Like, just because someone's one little thing goes against the grain does not mean you flip the whole system. Yeah. Just look at, look at the clock in Prague. You have zodiac, sun, and moon all on the same clock. Come on, relax, right. people. But um, that's a good comment. Thank you for that. But like I said, it's more. There's more to it than that. It's not just because you're right. You're absolutely right that certain cultures say the sun. I think even German, certain German, um, you know, ethnic groups in Germany, their model is sun feminine, moon masculine. But there's more to it than that. And at the end, you know, if you follow it down deep enough, you'll see they too say sun masculine moon feminine what do you say what does dr narco longo say sun is masculine moon is feminine every way you look at it i mean <laughs> the only way that you could ever make an argument is that so, the sun is is the giver of all life and has to be both masculine and feminine because it provides everything like a mother or provides everything like a father and it nourishes everything like a mother but you know you've already got that in the moon the moon is what tempers the sun 
So the son is Ooh, good word. Because Tempor. the wife, the wife tempers the man. You know, you we don't choose women. Don't select their husbands based off of how womanly they are. They select them off of how much they contrast their womanly nature, their feminine nature. Wow. They want they want the largest contrast, the, the most masculine man. So the sun is hot, emanating fire and air. Is it are its properties? Fire and air and ether. This is the father. You know, fire, air, ether. Father, F A Thur. F A Ether. Father, that's the son. Okay. Father, son, same thing. I know it's confusing. Not really. <laughs> but you've, Not really. But you've, but you've got the moon being the receptacle of the sunlight. Receptacles. Man never changes. Man wakes up every day with the same attitude in a perfect world. Woman changes. Through the month, woman changes. Has a higher has a higher energy point of the month and a lower energy point of the month. Men do not have a monthly cycle. We have you know monthly pro we have monthly processes, but our hormones are in a twenty four hour cycle. You have an entire um, lunar cycle, so to speak, in your twenty four hours as a man. You have a full up and a full down in a 24 hour cycle. When the woman it's spread out over the bed 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 out that was in five eight dude that was in five eight that was sick this is so oh man so annoying hey yeah you gotta put some of those on repeat just get a clip and put it on your uh instagram or something whatever I'm over it. <laughs> Whatever. Massad. He's fucking <laughs> punching in yeah, keys man. on me, scrambling. Like Rolex. Relax, like Rolex. Spit too much truth, man. The gravy train's overflowing. I think so. I think so. We're almost at three, 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 three. Did we do it? Did we make it? Two more minutes. I've got something I need to read before we. Please do, man. Go, buddy. I, um, I can go, I can go hard all night long until midnight. I know. <laughs> and I've even been longer than that. Not long go long, but long. Keep See talking, you, guys. Keep talking. I'm, I have to pull something Man, out. Well, happy birthday, the, Florida, dude. Fill the air. <laughs> I'm glad you guys had me on. I'm almost, uh, almost having imposter syndrome since I just, I just, you know, came here. But uh, that's okay. I appreciate you guys and I appreciate all everyone listening. So, dude, these are the I'm telling you, I've, I've done quite a few lives uh, this year for the first time in my life for about a year now. And my favorite chats by far are long goes. Oh, that's nice, man. Well, they're the, they're just the wildest, most you never know what comments have. It could be absolute junk. And then you could get something that'll change your life. And just like a freaking <laughs> five sentence comment or a five word comment. Yeah, yeah, some gems. But yeah, I, I would love to do a, uh, an episode with with Jack or something, and just get get deep and dirty. You know, literally dirty with with the plants and, and growing. I think everyone, not I wouldn't say everyone, a lot of people now are moving toward that idea of just homesteading and, and growing their own food and being self sustainable. And I mean. This channel is sort of like a love letter to Florida. Like, what better place to do that, you know, than the state with this, the warmest, most hospitable climate and the the best freshwater springs? But I hope everyone's growing some good food out there. Um, guys, I was at uh, my donated thirteen acres today, um, dropping, uh, trying to drop a Shark Tank level deal with a with a with a shark. Don't give them too much info. All right, yeah, we're we're a couple months out. A couple months out. Give us two months. Shit, just give us a freaking website. When that website drops, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna take care of the channel. Everybody in this chat, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, you guys are boring as hell, dude. You guys could never be stand-up comedians. <laughs> Fill the air, dude. You got to learn how to make a uh... feeling. I'm just teasing. It's the most annoying part of streaming. 
What what's the most annoying part? Just like filling dead, the gaps. No, just like dead silence. Oh, there's no dead it's silence like... here. <laughs> I'm re I'm in, I, dude. Let me just read this chat. Man crush on Longo Daniel. So you got a guy that's crushing on you in the chat. But hey, silence yeah, silence is what gives space to the words, you know? Good point. I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. Hey man. Silence matters. Where my where my food forest people yep. at? Earthling Drew in Ocala. That's he was he was uh you're in Ocala, Earthling Drew. Food forest, it's happening, man, right now. Um I got quite a quite a bit this year I'll start fruiting in my yard. And then Drew. um 13 acres has been donated to me that's got a full water cycle with sinkhole, two sinkholes, aquifer flowing under a peninsula. I may or may not have found some things that I don't like to talk about because then the uh, federales will show up <laughs> and level the place. But uh, yeah, there's some cool stuff out here. I'm in Seminole country, just south of Ocala. It's almost like this whole state was Seminole country because... I was driving today around Miami, and there's a little village called Seminola. Yeah, yeah, Seminole you know? County. I mean, literally, um, I've said this before. About a nine iron in this direction from my the barn house is a marker where the last stand was with the Seminoles, and they they took out a general here. They just attacked the family in the middle of the night, and this is where the uh, last battle was. And um, there's a monument right next to my backyard. Dade, Dade City, Dade County area. It's crazy. Naya State. You know, I mean, and you always got to remember the Seminoles. Why did? Why were they the last man standing? Everybody wants me to, oh, you got to get a backup doomsday plan. And I'm like, I'm a prepper. I love conspiracy. I don't think there's going to be much of an election because this is very strange. It's very, very weird. It's like a bad sitcom we're watching right now. And I just don't even entertain it. Like idi idiocracy. But I won't leave Florida because... The most recent um, interaction the people had, from my understanding, was the Seminoles were the last man standing. Why? Jackson had to borrow money to take him out because he couldn't. It cost more money to take out the Seminoles than the whole freaking war, supposedly. Why? Because they could thrive in the swamps. Everything they needed was there. Everything you need to thrive and survive is in these Florida swamps. I just scattered skim Seminole pumpkin all over the... Uh, yeah, countryside under these oaks and a bunch of tangerines. It's like, what more do you need? It's a giant filter. It's like, uh, like you know how every all these carnivores eat the liver? It's like, oh, it's the best thing. It's like, these swamps are the filter of this very electric freaking electric peninsula. Man, we got this uh, banana tree Yeah, on the farm, and uh, it's right behind the outdoor shower, and it collects all the runoff from the shower, like all the grimy, you know, skin oil and, like, she, yeah you know just soaps and just dirt and grime and those bananas are getting so massive dude. It's the biggest healthiest looking ones we even have on the farm yeah. like bro the uh trash. i got a there's there's a spirituality to trash to refuse to run off to you know the good needs to digest that bad to to you know return it to a good state in, in crude you know terms like we didn't come and I'm, I'm linking this to like you know should we be eating those bananas yes i think we should like you know no matter how dirty whatever we didn't incarnate into a body to be pesticide runoff you know just free we did not incarnate into a body to obsess like a bubble boy our and body I, is a I, filter, I, baby. I know we that, are that, a filter. I know that's not what you're saying at all, Seth. I know you're, you're just saying. We you know, are a filter, uh, baby. Like the extra minerals make the banana or making it bigger. I was just, you know, saying there's something to filth and something to like piling up your trash. A lot of times people say, ask me, like, why is America still here? Like, aren't we like the most depraved, like disgusting civilization, you know? Which I don't agree with at all, but it's it's a it's a way that a lot of people view America. Sure. Like, sure. Aren't, aren't we doing so much wrong? Why hasn't God flooded us off the earth yet? You know, why is He allowing it to persist? And even though I don't agree with that, I always say back, and I'm gonna try and make like a talk out of this. We throw away more trash 
than anyone else on the world, any, anyone else on Earth combined. And we pile it up in mounds and we burn it. Okay? Okay. In ancient times, that was called religion. That was called sacrifice. That was called offering. We offer the most refuse, unused food. That's the, that's the key takeaway here. What is the sacrifice? You give the unused portion to nature. Some well, what's, the best, what's the best fertilizer? Is shit and compost. Yes. And we... <laughs> oh, man, our, where's this go? <laughs> you know, the, just, think, 22. Just, just think about here. Let me, I got to change my mic. I think it's super low. But um, we give, we waste the most. And we have been so ingrained. This is like super contrarian. But we've been so programmed to think that waste is like the worst thing ever. And that waste is like combating waste is the holy grail of combating like like uh, global warming. Is kind of what I remember school being like, like recycle everything, you know, eat everything on your plate or else the kids in Africa are going to die. And basically, we, I don't believe in this concept of waste. I really don't if it came out of nature and it came to its fruiting body you know the lettuce the onion whatever and it doesn't get eaten and it gets returned to the earth what was wasted what was well yeah i don't see anything wasted that's complete guilt trip you know this whole recycling industry that's bs too so you're talking about plastic i'm talking about everything because we we pile our trash up in heaps and people are saying you know, should we burn it all? Should should we try and like press it into you know playground equipment? You know, there's all these different talks about what to do with the waste, and I don't see it as waste. And I think piling it up is actually not that bad of a solution. It's what our ancient ancestors or predecessors did in America. They all the shell heaps and the mounds in America. Yes, they arranged them certain places, but ultimately they were just. Ultimately, they were just trash piles. They didn't have Kit Kat wrappers. They didn't have organic orange. trash they piles. Didn't, Interesting. Yeah, well, they didn't have trash wrappers. They didn't have inorganic stuff to throw out. They only had trash, and that's what we call their temple mounds and their middens. You know, it was made up of trash. Huh. Religion of trash is. We're worshiping their in, trash mounds. Well, trash mounds and worshiping waste is not something unique to modern America. Is all I'm saying, and there's okay, okay. Wa- waste is a demonic principle that I don't believe in. It's a guilt trip. It's, a it's guilt worse. Trip. Yeah, it's totally. It's much worse to force yourself to eat something because you think you're going to waste it otherwise than just compost it or or get rid of it. Because if you're forcing yourself to eat something, it's not good for you. You know, like feed yourself, fuel your body, and then return the rest to the earth. Yes, yes. Alistair Crowley, when he was asked, always he was asked, metaphysical. He was asked earnestly, "Hey, what's the you know what is the true spirituality behind, um, what's the what's the you know occult view, the true stripped down all the secret societies? You know, is there a secret that they learn? Is there something?" Alistair Crowley was asked, "What is the secret to nutrition? What's the spirituality behind it? You know." forget the counting calories and forget the yeah fruits better and forget all that stuff he was asked what's and uh, and forget the diet he wasn't asked you know what diet's the best he, he he wasn't describing that even though he had gone vegetarian for you know uh, 6 months uh, multiple times in his life he'd gone vegetarian for 6 months if not longer um regardless he was asked what's the go to rule with nutrition and he said, the only rule that you should ever follow with nutrition is you should cook it, prepare it yourself. That's it. And he said, Stre- you know, stressing the preparation of your food is better than stressing what your food is to begin with. And he believed your own hands are best tailored to your health. Yeah. And, you know, if you can't, you know, next best thing to you, of course, would be your mother, who you came out of, and is you, is you, you know, 
Yeah. That's why mom's cooking always tastes the best and is best for you. Um, I fully agree with that. Prepare everything yourself. So if the world's darkest, most evil, disgusting, apparently, whatever these people say about him and same things are said about Donald Trump, as far as I can see, is he's still looking out for you and saying, well, eat what you make. Don't, you know, and I always find the same thing, Seth, that I know people, I've met people, I've been very close with people who are so guilty when they have extra food. And they think they're doing something wrong. They think they're hurting society. They think they're hurting the earth. And I think that comes from like bank accounts. Offending, offending their parents. Exactly. No, right. no that comes this. from finance. That's all no, American well, finance. The, I agree. Yeah, it was pushed on people. It was pushed on people. You yeah. Eat everything. They want consump. They want overly consumptive people. That was fat, money. You know, they want fat people. Ultimately. They want sick, clogged. Ooh, why do they want arteries. fat people? Why do they want fat people, Longo? Because they're ugly and disgusting and are okay with anything, just about. They're okay with disgusting architecture. They're okay with disgusting cities. A fat person will not give a shit about where they live. A fat person who mm. looks in the... A fat, ugly person who looks in the mirror and sees nothing wrong will see nothing wrong with brutalist architecture. Gotcha. City block after city block after city. That that's something yeah. that I don't hear anyone talk about. Yes, you've got your, you know, you should be healthy to begin with. You should be able to run a mile, if you need to. You should be able to outrun a dog that's chasing you. You should be able to run. Bullshit. To, such you a family doesn't. No dog. In the truest sense, fat people cannot hold their weight. They cannot nah. pull their weight. Damn, you they are, are harsh. A li- <laughs> they are a literal drag on society. Okay. okay. Wait, I, I just want to interject real quick, just because people in the chat maybe have extra weight on their body. Everyone manifests disease differently. And if I if my body wasn't a, a string bean body type, I'd probably be fat because of what I've gone through my whole life before I had an awakening. So it's not necessarily yeah. your fault if you have extra weight. And everyone, you know, has it, skinnier people have other types of disease that you just can't see. So but I hear what you're saying, Longo. I mean, it makes total sense. Like, this, yeah. there is this this energy that's trying to dumb us down. They want us to have a guilty con- conscience. Guilt is a huge thing. I mean, that was the social engineers at Tavistock studied that, and they came up with austerity and these guilt complexes to just keep us, you know, subjugated. I, I, I'm a broken record when it comes to uh, the psilocybin talks, but literally that year that I did it, one of the things ever since... I can count on like my hands how many times I have eaten out somewhere on t- on these two hands in the last two years, and I don't enjoy other people cooking for me anymore. And I realize it now. She says like I don't want anybody else cooking because I know what my body wants and needs in certain times. And when I do it, it's so much more. Uh, maybe it is metaphysical, and I'm just now realizing it now that you say it. Definitely have a physical connection to that, without a doubt. Uh, I don't quick. want to be served by somebody else anymore. Comment here. Crowley banged animals, too. <laughs> now, I would like for you to provide me the source on that. Would it, hey, per- would it, perhaps, would it perhaps be the gentleman whose wife left him for Crowley? Hmm. I think it is. I think it's the guy whose wife went to Crowley's ashram. You know, his little temple in Italy or whatever, the little, uh, what do they call it, the Abbey, and Crowley took his girlfriend, okay? I would be pretty pissed if that happened to me too, and I might slander someone that hard with that, especially if they were already accused of Satanism in the world press, even though they've never been, never been charged with a crime in their life, Aleister Crowley. Okay, so who said that? It wasn't Aleister Crowley. I don't think he ever did that. I think he would love the fact that you think he did that because he was the troll of all trolls. He, you know, South Park doesn't, doesn't, you know, South Park and Family Guy pale in comparison to Aleister Crowley, the greatest practical joker of all time. And the same people who are triggered by Aleister Crowley are usually the same people who are triggered by Donald Trump, unless they're Christian, 
and they're just triggered by Crowley's critiques of Christianity. But the same could be said of Nietzsche, uh, you know. So, if anybody wants to hear Longo go deeper on Crowley, we did a we did a stream on fasting. I think it's called Holistic Health 101: Fasting and the Occult, and it's like the last maybe hour of that conversation. We, you know, I pretty much asked like, "What's up with this guy?" And then we were able to kind of hash out a lot of the stuff, which I learned a lot from. So go check that out if you haven't heard us go deep there. Uh, uh, you know, and I'm not the biggest fat shamer there ever was. I'm definitely not as, uh, you know, you know, uh, steadfast as Longy here. But realistically, when you when you say you've been pure enough to where you can experience and feel auras, you can be next. You know, no offense to anybody. I don't yeah. I, I really don't care if you're offended, but um, literally your aura is affected by this insulation. And yes. it's not it's oh, not yeah. it's it's like. If you like this plastic shirt, right? For example, yes. a plastic shirt like a trash bag, you can literally say this is still the psilocybin shit. Like I could see an almost, I could see auras in a fog one morning, barefoot under a tree. Like literally, I saw a woman's aura in the fog, and all of these people around her that are already cracking bud lights. And it was like there was one woman, and I'm like, did I? Am I looking at an aura? Until this day, I believe I actually saw it, and it was yes, the sun was coming, but it was she was glowing. It was incredible. But if, you know, if you're just loaded with visceral fat and all this, like all this lard around you, you are insulating yourself from flowing and being that beautiful Taurus field that this, like we talk about this in all the architecture, the structures, mind, body, and spirit. Like, yeah, it's sloppy. It is sloppy, of course. So absolutely everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. Circuits are not working optimally in these types of systems and, and settings. Just to be fair, skinny, dehydrated people with acidosis, they don't have a good aura either. No, that sucks too. Especially the, the chain smokers in front sure. of the Seven Eleven. Like, there's like yeah. nothing. It's almost like yes. necrosis. Gray. Void. It's like gr yeah, necrosis. Energy gray. vampires. Yeah, yes. so bad. All, it's so almost, bad. almost all fat people are sympathy, sympathy addict, uh, energy vampires. Almost mm -hmm. ninety nine percent, and. I would say that extra 1% are so few and far between that you might live your whole life and never meet them because most overweight, obese people to where you would remark on them and say they're overweight are energy vampires. As I saw some comments saying, I agree 1 million percent. Okay. You can be, oh, and of course this is personal for me. You know how many times I've been, you know, called skinny or something? You As are skinny. Sure, but I'm also a 150 pound apex predator who can, who will, Spikes your ass up. who will beep, you know, liver king in a heartbeat. Actually, not a heartbeat. Give me a day. Yo, can I'll we be, line this I, up? For I've said, time? I've always said this, guys. I've always said this. Let's, I will let's beat, line this up. I will beat anyone in a fight that is not already a distance runner. Okay. Anyone who can't run farther than me. I will beat in a fight. It's just going to be an old-fashioned, archaic human type fight. Whoa, a, dude, you've not, thought deeply about this. Not in a cage. Beautiful. Not That's with fun. mitts. Not with not with gloves. In an open expanse, like the state of Florida. Oh, I'll beat you in a fight. Just give me the state of Florida. Or give me, you know, an entire uh, farm to oh, work with. Oh, God. You're and funny. I will outrun you. I will outpace you. Outbreathe you. Slow you down. And then strike, ex you know, yes, execute you, you at you were, your weakest huffing and puffing like every apex predator human has ever done throughout time. Man did not become the apex predator by overpowering the gorilla. No, no. They by overpowering the bull. Even if you could overpower the bull, you could sit there and try yes. and gnaw into that hide as long as you want and you'll break all your teeth. Why? That's like chewing through a leather shoe. Okay, you can't do that. You can't chew through a squirrel if you if you wanted to. Okay, so you will outlast I, all of you. I love this. By the way, I don't care about this, but this gets the gym goers <laughs> so furious. This gets the gym the gym goers. Bro, look how skinny he is. I you'd be out in a second, Longo. You'd be out in a second. Oh, where's, my, where's, my girl, where's my where's my girl where's my girlfriend in my where's my beatable girlfriend in my creatine powder? You know, uh, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, stop taking pictures of my of my naked body for a sec. 
we've got to go get this Longo guy. Let's get out of the gym, <laughs> out, out from in front of the mirror. We got to go. Let's take a break uh, from trying to pretend like we're lumberjacks who earn their muscles. You're still helping. emotional about this, and I love it. Well, what's emotional? I'm not crying. I'll say this to any of their faces. No, that's care. not what I'm saying. I'm passionate your, your about energy, things. your energy. It's fun. Yeah, I love it, it. It doesn't matter. There's there's no okay. By the way, you know, Seth, you make great points about skinny people not really being much different from fat people. You know, it's just different, different. Um, different ways to harbor. Right? Yeah, different ways to harbor disease. Well, Dude, well, when I see a, a tall, skinny person that can keep going, I rem I think of a spear. I think of a spear in herds, like there's nothing you can't outlast, especially we're vertical beings. Like I, I've literally had dreams about what Longo's talking about. So when the lacrosse player, when the lacrosse player comes at you two hours later and you're just gassed, okay, <laughs> yeah. Wait, what, so, what was your point there, Longo? What was I going to say? It was good. Um, you, you referenced that, you know, I was like, to be fair, like yes, people yes. are just like, can be as Thank sick you. or whatever. Such yeah. a great, such a great point. Likewise, there is no difference between a fat person and a muscular gym gym guy. Gym people with your sculpted muscles, you're just fat people who are working yourself into exhaustion every day so that you don't get fat. If you were to keep up your caloric intake and stop going to the gym and and just live the life you normally live without creating a false artificial you know, survivalist like gauntlet that you lift and lift and hoist and all this stuff, you know, it's just such a waste of time. No talented person. I love saying this. No talented person has ever wasted an hour in the gym. No talented musician has ever spent two hours in the gym sculpting their body. Okay. Every talented person there's ever been, has picked up an instrument, spoken to a crowd, etched their stone, carved their, you know, craft, used, you know, every smart, talented person there's ever been avoids the gym like it's a plague, okay? It is the greatest waste of energy. It is the greatest, it is the most vain pursuit there is. Most gyms have a... But, One so. have an entire wall that's a glass mirror, so you can just stare at yourself. Narcissistic losers. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm skinny. But guess what? Your girlfriend wants to bang me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> guess what? If your theory about being in the gym is so correct, why have I had an endless, endless? You know, I'm not trying to be indecent here, and I'm a very, you know. I'm not fornicative by any means at all. But why have I had no problems getting smoking hot girlfriends my entire life? And I think Seth's probably in the same ballpark here. So, um, so, hey so guys, how do you feel about well, hang on, hang on, Spencer. Hang on. I know I might I know I may not be doing it for you guys out there, but I score just fine with the opposite sex. So I'm sorry I'm not getting you guys quite there, but I'm doing A-OK, -okay. okay? And judging from how much the ladies at Palm Beach tipped me and pursued me and the men, I would guess I'm doing just fine. And I don't need to be <laughs> thick or any thinner than I am. You are all insecure when you hear this and say, go to the gym. Go to that, go to that, no, 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 no. I'm gonna be performing my talents with lithe, nimble fingers. You can keep straining your tendons, hoping that this one muscle gets big and then that one gets big, but you know, I hope I get that one too. Oh no, I forgot that one on Friday. Oh no, I didn't eat this many calories on Tuesday. You're a girl, you're a little girl on a diet. Oh, I hope these shoes look better when I go pump with my bros. Yeah, great. I'll be running on the gym, Dude, making love, making love for five times the length of you huffing, puffing gym bros. I'll be running with my girlfriend. I'll be running with your girlfriend probably someday. And, <laughs> you know, you'll be in the gym dying, desperate. Oh, God, if I miss a day. 
Oh God, if I miss a day, I'm going to look like a slob. Oh God, if I miss a day, I'm going to turn into, oh, I hope I get my calories. I hope I sacrifice enough, you know, pork and beef to the gods of protein. You know, it's, it's, I, it's disgusting. I, 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 and by I, the way, the more... What about the Greek god statues? What about like the statue of David? So, what are your thoughts on like this? The, the right. people are just more naturally, more naturally ripped. That that's a people, standard yeah. mesomorph body type, a standard, um, uh, not uh, pitta, pitta body type. That's just how people look when they don't have to, you know, you don't you don't have all this excess or deficiency. And no. just so, just what about, the, what said about in, the Greek gods? I'm just wondering because like those guys weren't they weren't like. Well, they what did they eat? Like what did they eat, Spencer? Body uh, listen, no one's debating what they look like. You're, you're, not you, and, and you know. No, I'm asking you, what you think sorry about. If you catch, sorry if you catch a stray bullet here, but it, you're looking at it, it from the wrong way. You're looking at it from the wrong way. We know it. No, they I'm look asking like. you what you think about them of that time, like why and they they were eating lentils, olives, honey, and everything else that Mediterraneans have been eating for right. thousands of years. And guess what? They wrestled. They drank water with vinegar, yeah. so they had no it. body. They had no body fat. Water with it. vinegar. Um, that was their monster energy drink. Every morning they had water with vinegar. That was the drink of the Greeks and the Romans. Okay. And all this wine you hear about was mostly just water with vinegar and a couple herbs and a trace amount of alcohol to allow the herbs to bleed and dissolve into the rest of the ingredients. Hello. Yo, there's so, um you know, are you gonna say one more thing? Jacked. Yeah. Dates, yeah, that? super. I was just saying powerhouse. if you eat dates every day, you will be jacked. If you eat pineapple every day, you will be jacked. Don't look at me. You know, I look like what people who spend ten hours well, on the computer look like. I, I think it was you know. way better food too. I mean if they, you know, I don't know, different times cause like the food is completely Here's different. Here's what it is. Here's what it is, Spence. There's vitality is an equation. Vitality equals power minus obstruction. Everyone yeah. is focused on increasing their power yeah. to increase vitality, but no one is focused on decreasing obstruction. That's mm -hmm. all you need to do. Get the obstruction out of the way. This is the perfect equation. So if we just focus on cleansing ourselves, mm -hmm. we'll develop the natural physique that we were given by yeah. God. Bro. So, like I'm, I'm well versed in biomechanics because I was a gym junkie my whole life. And I feel best these days when I eat less, drink salt water for three quarters of the day and do literally just like mobility stuff. I'm always in the barn house doing when I do mobility stuff, all the circuitry feels better. Like, like I'm literally always doing like you see Longo moving around like literally when I quit lifting weights like, you know, what he's been calling out this whole time. My life changed. My mobility. See where my knee's at right now? Like, years ago, I wouldn't be sitting like this. You know what I'm saying? Mobility changed, is much more it practical. It changed my life when I started actually moving instead of just, well, how did you just word it? Your phrase was um, um, in the power. way. No, they choose power over obstruction. Dude, obstruction is amazing because think of highways. Think of electrical circuits, pathways. You know, I'm I'm more muscular and I still eat, eat meat. Yes, and it's like yes. I'm weaning. Spencer's, I'm wean Spencer's jacked, guys. I'm weaning myself slowly away from that lifestyle via via actually my uh, work choice now and like everything. And it's it's easier and easier when I learn more tricks. And every year, it's like it's like damn. It, every year I learn more tricks that make more sense. And even diet wise, I get it very much so. And I love the idea of it. I've told him that many times. Yeah. People who go to the gym and lift weights are actually not that strong, uh, as this comment points out. They can push away from their body, usually, mm -hmm. pretty hard. They can even pull towards their body pretty hard sometimes. But when it comes to sustaining their body weight, um, only a very small percentage of these actually buff guys can go climb a tree or climb a rock wall, like this comment says. You're looking at Strength. one biatch. Strength, I'll climb you. It, yeah, strength is not. No, I won't actually. Liver like king, it. strength. By the way, strength is rock climbers. That is strength. If yeah, you tree can, climbers. If you can lift four hundred pounds, great. Can you do it all day, like a gorilla, <laughs> like a bull? No. But we're, we're, we're not hours. meant. We're not meant to carry four hundred pounds. We're also not meant to sit at the computer and edit videos all day. 
right? So yeah. there's, there's a middle ground where humans are climbing trees, we're walking, we're carrying stuff, we're carrying our kids. That's the practical strength that we, that's all we really need in this life, right? We, and who needs yeah. to bench press or deadlift 500 pounds? Like, why are we actually trying to do that? Yeah, and just so you guys, you know, know, I'm right about everything I'm saying. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, can prove, <laughs> I can prove that to you. Uh, and well, I'm saying it because it's not just coming from me that, you know, this comes from the Navy SEALs website themselves. OK, let's just see what do the most badass, all the actual badasses, all the guys, all you guys who go to the gym, you're just little girls in boys clothes. You're just trying to make your biceps bigger instead of your butt bigger. You're just trying to make your back bigger instead of your tits bigger. You're pathetic little girls who, you know, if for real, stop staring in the mirror. Why do you care what you look like? Girls care about power. Girls care about intelligence. Girls care about wealth. Girls care about all this. And yes, what girls care about matters a lot. And they don't care about the lifting and the hoisting and, you know, the vain pursuits. Completely. And, you know, muscle people are so self-conscious, so insecure. You will never find a more insecure, self-conscious, you know, estrogened out person, man, than a gym goer. Always. Okay. Not to beat a dead horse, but let's bring this up here. What's wrong with the, uh, what's wrong with the volume? I do not know. Here, let me mute you. Is Henry still there? My check one too. Henry's not out. Do you hear what I hear long ago? You're you sound pretty messed up. Can you hear me okay? It's messed up. My check one too. Is it Massad again? Can you guys hear me? Thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me okay. Thumbs down I can if hear you don't hear me. It's, it's weird. messed up. Yeah, Spencer, I think it's just Ooh. you. There it goes. It's back. Yeah, Seth's, Seth just had to knock out some push-ups real quick. Yeah, for sure. That's another thing, guys. <laughs> guys, uh, you know, by the way, I, you know, this is all in good fun. Like, I love riling up. You know, even if, even when I tell them I'm, I'm like, joking, they're st they'll still get so f fuming angry in their, you know, mom's basement because they're spending all their money at GMC. But whatever. Yeah, my testosterone is overpowering Spencer's uh, Wi-Fi connection right now. But uh, let's just bring this up. Something's you don't up. you don't have to hey. take it from me, Spencer. Hey, let me leave. Gonna... Let me leave and come right back. Keep me back in, Longo. Yeah, please do. Oh, I'm glad that last sentence is in there. That little blurb. You know, I'm like, wait a minute, bread, cracker, cereal. You know, those are definitely. Yeah, guys. Carbs, but. Like, I'm so, I'm sorry if you're out there and you eat meat and you think you're getting like the holy grail of nutrition. You're not. Now, we could make this a whole argument about can you get jacked on a vegan diet or not. You can. And if you don't think so, you're just too lazy to figure the truth out. You know, you'd rather steal the nutrients straight from the animal, which has already digested the, the leaves, <clears throat> the grass that it eats. You'd rather steal the nutrition but blah 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 even the navy seals concur with what i am saying from the navy seal website and literally the only issue or like counter argument to this would be that the navy is like is doesn't want to give out what they actually feed the navy seals so they just say this like that's the only way you could look at this and not agree with what we're saying here fruit is the preferred energy source nutritional source source of everything you do not need protein to build muscle the way that you you were told in school 
Protein does not give you energy. You know, and protein is such a broad, vague word. It means nothing. It literally means nothing. Protein, you know, there's... Whatever, let me just read this. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, do you put salt on your fruit? Either you guys put salt on your fruit ever? Not on fruit. What? And ever. Fuck no. no. Why would I do? I mean, avocado and like a I, guacamole. I mean, I have, anytime we had watermelon, I would put like a high quality salt on it and I would go work out and get the biggest pump. I, I'm just making that sure? Well, you know what? Salt causes edema, which is swelling. So you're going to look like you have a pump when your muscles... No, 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 no. I don't think high-quality salt causes edema. I think shit salt causes edema. And I've, like, literally experienced true hydration for the first time in my life the last couple of years. As opposed to, like, plain, like, just craps. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not... I'm talking Celtic sea salt, maybe Redmond's from Utah, this ancient seabed salt with all these trace minerals. So I'd never, I'd never really focused on quality salts with all these trace minerals. And once I started doing it, I started feeling way better. My teeth started growing, like feeling better, stronger. I swish with salt during the days, but I work outside. So like when I say I'm like, you don't take any salt working out on the farms. No, I've been on a low salt wow. diet uh, for a while now. Wow. I've been awesome. doing like no salt for stretches of a time feeling, feeling so much better. No Wait, shit. Just, That's amazing. I feel the this. opposite. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, there's there's opposing. That's you know, a, well, my body this, type, too. I still have all this yes. muscle, too, though. So I have a way more like, freaking salt. Uh, salt. What's it called? Obstruction. Salt is masculine. You'll notice men crave saltier foods and spicier foods. Women crave sweeter and cooler foods. My Women wife will, and I. You know, all things being equal generalizing here but women will almost always go for the salad at a fancy restaurant or like a cold pasta dish or you know something like that or even you know fish as an alternative less so you know fish is rarely rarely served as salty as meat is you know fish has its own kind of flavor you, you you'll flavor it with lemon or something but rarely do you put a bunch of salt on fish so you'll see women tending towards cooler and moister and sweeter foods. And I think they should err on the side of that too. I, I really do. I think they should err on the side of, you know, if you don't know what to eat, this is something I would like, you know, we can give all this nutrition advice, but ultimately I'm not, I'm not, we're not here giving well, advice you, to like Seth. We're not giving no, advice Seth's to, a, like the to an audience of 400 Seths. We're giving this to an audience of 400, you know, not going to say average Joes because the Florida, you know, the old world Florida community chat room. Yeah, is they're not above, average Joes. Above and beyond, above and beyond, you know, genius level IQs, a bunch of, uh, you know, thin life Greek gods I know is, is in the, the chat room. No fat people for sure. But um, even this chat room being a miles ahead of everyone, we should give tips for the everyday Joe. Yeah. You can air. I say this a lot too. If you don't know what to eat, you know, if you if you like, um, you don't know what to eat. For women, air on the side of cooling, moist, and sweet. For a man, I hate to say, you know, Seth probably won't want to hear hear this, but for men, you can air on the side of you know saltier, so to speak. We have a higher threshold for for the salt. I want to yeah. know, Seth. Seth, what may, what is the uh, ultimate reason? So the edema is the uh, main and ultimate reason why you're not a, a salt guy. No, I just witnessed the edema firsthand. Like after I did my extended water fast, 21 days just on water, you know, weeks refeeding just on fruit, and then I was just craving. Man, I had these crazy cravings and, and went a little hard on the salt, and uh, my legs just swelled up completely. And yeah, this was, that was, this was even a warning. Yeah, it was totally extreme. And it was, but um, it's what happens to everyone who. What kind of salt was it? Fast. It's happened to everyone. Exactly what kind of salt was it? I don't even know. It's probably cheap, to be honest with you. Dude. But, dude. but that's not the reason why I'm doing no salt. The reason okay. why I'm doing no salt is because I just feel better when I don't eat it. And when I eat uh, salt, I'll wake up the next day feeling dehydrated, feeling slower, feeling sluggish. 
and I just okay. feel more hydrated. There's an Instagram channel. You can follow her, check her account. It's called Hulk Salt Health. And just I just read so much about salt preserves things. I mean, salt salt can kill cells. It's um, antibiotic. It's and biotic is life. It's anti-life. It's um, I don't really want to preserve and pickle my body. You know, and yo, and I've never, I've never of- heard this approach recently, and I'm very, I'm very interested because it's done so many things positive for me in the last two years. Yeah. And, but it's also, I was very, extremely cognitive of removing all shit salt, mass produced anything in sodium, and eating real raw foods, and yeah. only having the most high quality. I have like five times types of the highest quality salt you can buy yeah. at the house, yeah. and it's like. When I tell you my hydration levels, like what I do is I rescreen pool cages for a living in Florida. And so like I'm gassed out there. You you see how much like I have way more mass than you guys. It's like it's like I'm carrying a backpack on top of a pool cage. Just it, it is it is tough sometimes. But salt is like it's crazy. If I put that high quality salt in my water and when I have it with fruit, dude, I am not hungry at all. And I can do athlete level shit on so how do you know it's not, how do you know it's not just the fruit so hang on it's a good okay. question yeah sorry answer and and one yeah. little quick thing is that the word salad right has the word yeah. sol in it so greens yes. are the highest and most potent form of naturally occurring organic salt study the difference between organic salt and inorganic salt one our body yeah. can use and one our body can't and oh, all oh, the organic salt taking... sources are fruits yeah. vegetables greens especially oh so yeah. you're Orange so you're saying so you're saying the salt that's being harvested on these seabeds the celtic salt how that's harvested are you considering like we are the salts of the earth you burn any of us what's left is the cell salts cell right salts, yeah. so like we've read the salts of the earth so so you're you're considering like um ancient seabed salts inorganic because i'm i'm in with inorganic and organic i get it you're talking about like plants have metabolized this and that's the salt that our body wants Yes. yes. Gotcha. Also, guys, let's let's. Uh, Sorry. You know, Happy birthday, let's, Florida. Let's go back. I, I, no, it's I okay. That's I okay. No, we're we're in great territory. But I just want to say, um, salt comes from sol, 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 sol water. Salt is the sal. You know, this is, it's, the soul condensed into matter, crystal. That's why when there's nothing, oh, yeah. every, everything left after when the body's cremated, all that's left is the cell salts. It's the literally the only thing that makes you you. All the material would return back, you know, would evaporate out and back into nature, up into the sky. But your cell salts remain. So and I see. Even so, if you're incinerated. Yeah. So hang on. Salt Sorry. is just like orange juice and why is orange juice so solar by nature orange juice is very salty very very salty if you uh drink lemonade lemonade has almost no salt like very little salt whereas orange Mm. juice is this huge dose of salt many salts you know if you consider other uh minerals salts it has so many salts in it and in the words of hilton hotama it's uh orange juice is god's own distillery orange juice is water distilled into its perfect state rich with all the salts and sugar right so blah 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 we need salt in some capacity but the art the debate we're having here is external salt like salt outside of a naturally occurring food you know right 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 now i would say i am in favor of salt being being a you know, consumed outside of just how it's available in plants and fruits. And one of the largest, you know, evidences or what would support this is the fact that if you leave, and there's a way to dissect this, so don't say I'm saying it's only this way, but when you leave a salt lick out for animals, they'll lick that thing for like an hour straight. It's the minerals. They're they'll getting the over, minerals. It's well, general. yes. That brings me to my next point is animals are not dehydrated. They're always as hydrated as they should be. Typically, you know, they're eating what they should. The the grass is hydrating. The berries are hydrating. They can go days yeah. without drinking water and still be hydrated. Yeah. 
humans are not on that wavelength. You know, you you stop drinking water for a couple hours. He may be. Well, yeah, you you can no. get there, but I'm no. saying if you if you stop drinking water for a couple hours, you're gonna get dehydrated, and so yeah. our our tissues, you know, store hydration because of salt, cell salts. So the animal, another th way that salt licks work is salt is salt is the, uh, you know, God works on a system of um, charge and discharge. No, God is an incentive incentive based creator we need to re we need to reproduce so god made sex feel better than anything so that we make sure we reproduce no matter what you'll forego other needs in order to reproduce even you'll find men running straight into sudden death running straight into a, a you know certain death in the pursuit of you know a woman you know you will you, i know you will boy the same the same i forgot what i was gonna say but um he started um, thinking about it he started thinking about it seth yeah yeah <clears throat> we always get riled up on the protein thing and the salt thing it's so divisive like it'll divide no, any group. no, no, I it'll, love it. no and, and i love it too but it will divide any group of people into the really and the, i didn't uh, i didn't yeah, know me. that i have well, a question for you seth so i look at um so salt is a crystal. Wouldn't you call it a crystal? I would. It's piezoelectric, you know, in any sort of uh, scientific sense. And I know you, you've mentioned organic versus inorganic, meaning metabolized by plants. You gave me the thumbs up. And then there's sugar. So sugar to me is also a crystal. And for some reason, you guys may think I'm weird, but when I was tripping on psilocybin, I thought about this stuff. And I thought for some reason, my brain told me that they were like two different types of uh, charge like one it's almost like one was charged and one was discharged whoa that's cool that's, that's awesome does that make sense that's and so really it's like cool. and because they're aren't they like polar opposites in the sense of what's happening well and think about food that you like it has a good balance of both sugar know? makes sugar makes you acidic and salt makes you alkaline that's charge and discharge that's positive and negative so maybe if you know how to use them both correctly and, but I would agree, though, always organic. So it's like now is an orange the perfect combination of salt yes. and sugar? Yes. It's yes. a perfect charge and discharge. It's a perfect tourist field. So what yes. you're saying fruits is making complete are. sense to me right now. Yeah, all fruits and vegetables have that perfect balance. Coconut water, extremely high in salts and and sugar. And like that's, it's, it's bro, that's what I drink. We are electrolyte, you know, electrolytic. Yeah. And like we electric want salt lights. in our body because we're electric and... So we got to get our electrolytes. We got to get our salts. We got to get our sugars. But I would recommend to do it in the most organic, plant-based form possible. Wow, electric lights! I thought about that when I was tripping too. I'm like, electrolyte, electric lights. What is piezoelectricity? And, These crystals and, are yeah. piezoelectric. They have light in them. And I think the oceans are the electrolyte of the Earth system. Absolutely. And, the sun and the moon, not, and the anode and the cathode. But we don't need to drink that because take a sip of ocean water or take a couple glasses of it and let me know how you feel but bathing in it makes me feel great that's in 100%. hilton otama oh but that's oh but that's Bath the exterior of my shell so the salt so water on. that's the chart oh my gosh dude here oh one my sec gosh. mr boston the invitation is extended okay oh shit that was a, oof, that was a old, <laughs> how uh, we're, we're four and a half hours in this is great I stand. Hey. I stand by what I put in the chat, Mr. Boston. Come join in. Come, let's have a chat. Let's that see will... how well you know God, little boy. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Come dude. call in. Come call in. Uh, you could look at it that way. That one person who loves loves Crowley. I don't remember saying loved. I think you love something else, and it's not me or Crowley. Okay. You have, dude. The what, do you, what do you say? Well, hang on, Mr. Boston, come call in. Number one, let's see how ugly you are. Or, <laughs> yo, or, yo. Or, you need your own you stream are. to fight your uh, overweight your listeners, man. Uh, you guys can drop out if you want. Um, <laughs> Mr. Boston, he, Seth, he does. Come call life. in. He does. No, I love it. It's fun. Tonight, now. It's it's amazing, Mr. Bro. Boston, come call in. And for real, <laughs> this is twenty-seven, you know, baby. Hey. 
I have dignity. You can call it an ego. I call it dignity. And I care. No, it it's passion. Yeah, it's dignity and passion. Yeah. I'm not, you're not yeah, scared. You, you want to you wanna say it as, you know, someone who loves Crowley doesn't know God. Um, that's one hell of a stupid assumption. And wow. you're, you're making a chain of events here that makes no sense. You know, just because this happens does not mean that happens. There's no direct link. In fact, it only displays how low your IQ probably is. You live in Boston, so it's got to be pretty low. Um, come call in so we can, number one, see what you look like. Let's put a face to these claims. Jeez. And then you, now I could make the argument, one who stands up for someone as wretched as you might think Crowley is, is someone who knows a pretty good amount about God and is at least trying to win his favors by sticking up even for the wretched. I will stick up for someone like Crowley. And guess what? If someone said something bad about you, Mr. Boston, a hundred years from now, and if I truly weighed the measure, if I measured the weight of your character, I would defend you a hundred years from now if people were tarnishing your name. You can take that to the bank or go bang your sister. I don't care. Okay? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> hey, Seth, Seth, can I? I think we got somewhere on Old World Florida tonight that I never. Whoa put the correlation to with the orange longo says the orange is very salty right what does it also have the sweet it has both the positive and the negative that's what you it, get on this channel you get the sweet the, and, and has, the salty exactly okay. and it has the water which is a carrier bro in the fluid the that electrolytic is, fluid that is why the orange is so spectacular think about it it has both it has an ultimate charge so maybe we should be focusing on the foods that have the sweet and the salty in them, which is the most electromagnetic torus field like producing. I mean, am I, is this like. So Dan, the life regenerated McDonald's calls fruits like anti-gravitational because of their hydrogen content or something like that. And H3O2. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man. Of water. No, you're, you're, you're totally right. And you've got helping, you've helped me get somewhere new too in seeing this as a broader electric system. Oh yeah. And so it's not just the orange; it's watermelons and grapes and tomatoes and dude. everything, dude. Um, but and I, I, think, I want right, to stress so the greens. The greens dude, are high in salt. Too. They're low in sugar, but high in dude. salt. If you need more sodium in your diet, go for some baby spinach or some shit. The soil. Our fruits are missing the salts because the soil sucks, dude. Interesting. Oh, that's okay. So what if does the sun create more sugar through photosynthesis, oh and does the earth something from the bottom the salts salt. of the earth that's the know. dielectric bro that's the dielectric we are missing the salts of the earth because our soil sucks we have no soil it's depleted so all we have is the sweet we don't have the dielectric you yeah, I, oh my god i also want to like um people always say uh, our soil is depleted which soil are you talking about are you talking about soil Not that mine. grows your vegetables because the soil that grows my vegetables is fucking amazing and that's why you do so well I bet you, dude. Well, only because I take it into my own hands to yeah. compost and create compost, you know, and to actually like dude. amend the soil, build your, everyone has to build our own dude. soil. Soil is up to us. It's don't just say, oh, it's depleted. No, no, no. Just compost your kitchen scraps, compost mm. your biomass, mm. chop down your fast growing plants and build your own soil. Which as we've said, ultimately is what Longo? Salts. What is everything? What is Florida? What are we standing on? I'm telling you, dude, I'm, I just had a revelation. I may eat psilocybin again, and I haven't in a, a, a good while. Cracking codes over here. I'm, I'm super happy about that right there. I never even never even clicked. And and here, just one more thing. Uh, the, the jury's still out for me. Like, uh, as far as salt, I may go and want to eat more salt someday. Like, this is an experiment for me, and I don't have all the answers. Mm, but mm, um mm. so yeah we're all learning together this is great i've never had a meal that makes me more electric than watermelon with a high quality salt on it i'll tell you boys that right now yeah it like i am i could i could literally probably take on longo yeah <laughs> yeah i don't uh you know sorry don't mean I don't, to get you riled up again no it's okay hey that'd be a um a I don't PR know about move? salt. I don't know about salt. Well, hey, 
I'm down. By the way, guys, I'm down for a creator for a creator clash scenario. Okay, you guys can get a chance to fight me. You just have you just have to earn fifty thousand subscribers talking about something that you're passionate about in, in order to be on my level, to where then I would then fight you in a creator clash type scenario. In Whoa. the yellow corner. So I'm down. And if there's someone yeah. out there with fifty K or more subscribers, you know what? You know what? For your sense for your sake, Mr. Boston, I'd let it go down to thirty three thousand. You know, if you made it up to thirty three thousand, you know what? Maybe if you even make it to fifty 50 subscribers if anyone even cares about what any word you'll ever say in your lifetime uh, you will make this happen and i'm not going to boston sorry dude. okay but um you know dude. that's extended to anyone but blah 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 here we should close it down close it down let's, uh, Mongo's get let's wind it no i'm just we love you, buddy. Okay. It's all good. No, in Let fact, in fact, in fact, I'm gonna, you know, thank I you guys for you. having a good night. I'm gonna stay here for another ten minutes and let uh, Mr. Boston come in if he'd like to have a chat. <laughs> yeah. Dude, don't worry, Mr. Boston. I can't hurt you through the through the webcam, dude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> come up on, man. This is a legendary channel. I am such coward. So honored to be here. That's hilarious. Mr. Boston yeah. called me a coward. Yeah. Hey, Longo, I've been a long time fan, buddy. I, I truly believe you're um you've got a long career road and career ahead of you wherever you're at. And it does I don't care if it's in a van twenty years from now. Um there's no way you're not advancing and you're gonna be on on something for at all times. So I'm here, I support you, buddy. You can't hurt my feelings. I appreciate that, man. Hey, too easy. You don't want to inflate my ego any more than it's been inflated. It's not possible, so no, I'm not worried no. about it. Just one, one last great message that I love out there, okay? That everyone out there needs to hear, okay? Ego is a good thing. Ego is a good thing, okay? Europeans, the, you know, any group of people that, that is succeeding generationally is not obsessed with destroying the ego. Destroying the ego is a concept created by people who have monkey DNA who are still transitioning to human. Yeah, go sit, go ascetic for 40 days and, you know, fast yourself into oblivion. Fasting is great. But this culture comes from people who are halfway human. Not all the way human, still purging themselves of hominid DNA. So, I forget why I was saying that. But um, ego, good thing. ego, yes, ego. I am ego friendly. Okay, this whole eco friendly, you know, initiative is just ego worship. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about corporations and logos and things like that. You know, green initiatives are green initiatives like money. Ego is eco. All that to the side. I'm pro ego. There's no more communist, anti-life, victim, victimhood mindset than this whole destroy the ego narrative. Y ego is your identity. You are who you are. You can, you can strip it all down and, and get some great you know, mindset changes by stripping all that away and you know, you know, understanding things, con contemplating things. But do not destroy your ego. Slaves have no ego. Concentration camp you know, victims had no ego. The, the, there's, there's no rising above. There's no, the ego is, when it's, it's extinguished, you have a slave population. Ego is your exuberance. Ego is how you dress, how you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself. Ego has become so vague, like, you know. So what, what is your definition of ego? Like, you should, yeah, per personality and ego. I've always... It's the eagle. To... Ego comes from the eagle. It's ruled by Scorpio. It's ruled by Jupiter. It's ruled by Sagittarius. This is It's exuberance. It's magnificence. It's so soaring higher than everyone. It's soaring too close to the sun. Wait, wait. It's higher being... than everyone. I didn't like that. Higher than everyone. Like, yeah. better than everyone? Is ego... I don't care. Being everyone out there should think they're better than everyone. Everyone really? out there should think, absolutely, or else you should... I should, you can't say this, but this is what I say to people in, in real life. 
you know, if you don't think you're the best, you probably don't want to be living. If you don't think your country's the best, you shouldn't live there. You know what I'm saying? If you don't think you're sure. the best, you shouldn't inhabit that body. Give it to Ooh. some other soul that's waiting oh, to come in. You know. Um, oh man, the way you just did the country one to you, because like, I guess it is relative. If you think about it, if you don't, if you don't think your country is the best, don't live there. And it's like, oh wait, if I don't think I'm the best, yes. don't ego, be here. Eagle comes from Jupiter. Dang not, boy, it is eagle ego. You the, cocky ego, smart guy. I like it. The ego is the eagle energy the jupiterian energy which rise you know soars high and is all about abundance and you know excess is okay excess is okay don't be ruled by excess but you can have more than you need that's that's called abundance that's mm -hmm. a good thing where i'm from that's a good thing in the the, yeah. the spirituality i'm a, a used to this whole pseudo new age american guilt trip like eco you know, environmentally driven, you know, pseudo spiritual religion that is going around, like the whole manifesting and the whole, you know, shadow work and, you know, destroying the ego. This is communist garbage that was sent to America under, the, gu under the guise of like a yeah. Buddhist, Buddhist, you know, enlightenment. The Buddha did not say life is suffering and you should destroy your ego. The Buddha said that you have to be, well, I'm not quoting him, but the life of, of life is suffering quote is that material existence is suffering. There's a constant state of decay. You can't escape that. So be okay with it. Then persist, then enjoy your life. Okay. Wow. M make the realization, then persist and enjoy your life and revel in the suffering of, of life, you know? Okay. Eager, ego, eager, eagle goes back to eagle. The only people who have issue with an ego are Satanists, satanic people who, why? Because Saturn is threatened by Jupiter. Yeah, they want really? you to just, yeah, they want you to destroy your ego. Yeah, throw your ego out the window so that they can take you over with a new world order. I can yeah. see that. For yeah, sure. you can't, you can't take over th 300 million <clears throat> Ted Nugents. You can't take Dude, over 300 million. Out. Kanye Wests. Yo, those people's egos are so big, they are unconquerable. I'm not saying we need 300 million Ted Nugents or Kanye Wests, but we need 300 competent, confident, empowered egos empowerment. At the end of the day, it's how empowered you are in your individuality. I can be in the military and I can feel strength among my five you know, 500,000 brothers in arms who are charging into battle, but I have no individuality. They, they strip the ego out of you in the military. Question. So, so, you know. Even if it's at others' expense, someone else's expense? So is ego on top at all costs? No, no that's unchecked. No, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're adding on to what I said. I'm saying that it's not a bad concept inherently. Yeah, absolutely. It, it has to be present in men, especially. Men need egos. Women don't yeah. really have egos. Yeah. They have sympathy meters. Mm -hmm. Men have egos, okay? Men need, a, men thrive off of recognition. People need recognition. You know, you can even form the word ego out of recognition in there. Yeah. Know? It's the sun. The sun and Jupiter are ruled by ego. Jupiter is expansive, the sun is bright. There's a place in society for these things. Wow. Men need egos. Men need to look different from each other. Aren't you sick of going outside and seeing every dude with the same, like, shaved, like, tinged soccer cut short to their hair? You know, maybe a little hair on the top, like, you know, uh, what are the they fade, the, uh, the fade faded, with the little, boo, yeah, with the little you know, boo in the front. All the geometric fucking, you're a little girl. Brutalist. Little, your little brutalist girl, architecture like, on your head. Exactly. It's, you know, obsessing over. It's so, <laughs> it's so metrosexual, you know. It is. To, That's why I said Trying to keep it short. you keeping it short. Well, now you're, now you have to monitor this like week after week. Now you're just a girl. Bro, you're you just a girl a wearing a, tonight, Okay. Boy. My hair looks as good as it does with nothing. Nothing. No care. No extra effort. Ocean water and maybe olive oil once a week. <laughs> Sorry, once a month, not even. Um, whatever. Hey, one second. This that reminds me, like my whole life, I've heard 
what gives you the right to judge or like judge me? Don't you shouldn't judge people. And I have always freaking said, I'm judge. like, I, I would say, so don't assess what I'm looking at. I would be like, you don't want me to assess what I'm looking at and think, okay, I'm yeah. not going to judge what's going on. Listen, when I show up anywhere, yeah. I know what the fuck's going on in every single direction and nobody is going to out judge me yeah. because when I'm in that parking lot, I know what's going to happen before it happens. And it's just like, oh, I was judging everyone. Yeah, because that guy's more likely to do this. This lady's going to trip over that curb. That gas pump's going to take me the longest. Don't be judging. I'm just assessing. Well, that's, the, yeah, like that's someone... the difference between yeah, judging right. and assessing or observing. Where a judgment sure. is like a, um, you place yeah. a judgment onto somebody and then you sort of like color their being yeah. by... I you know, yes, but so judging, it's called perception. It's called right. perceiving. I'm perceiving yes. my environment. You just happen yeah. to be in front of my fucking eyes. Judge, judgment is what God does. God is a judge. Judgment is godly. Okay. It feels natural. Well, lack sorry, of it. it doesn't I want to address. I want to address this comment here. Ego is Lucifer. Lucifer is knowledge and light. I think you're connecting dots that don't that don't connect here. Okay. Mm. Ego is not Lucifer. Ego is either Sun or Jupiter, if not both, because there's a link. Venus is Lucifer. And if you're thinking of ego as vanity, well, it's not vanity. Venus rules vanity. So Lucifer could be vanity, but ego is not Lucifer. That's it's a very crude way to understand things. Ego is not Lucifer. Venus is Lucifer, and you can be vain. But ego goes back to Jupiter. It's about worth. It's about sense of self, not just appearance. Ego is something else. Sorry. You're wrong. Ego, egg, too. Creative. You know, creation. There's this creative spirit. The, you know, how many species out there peacock for their, for their mate? They try to outshine the others, you know, to get chosen. It's not always about power or might. There is this, you know, you know, the aspect of masculinity in other species you peacock you know so blah 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 a lot of good stuff <laughs> good work today fellas you want to wind it down seth i've got so, a man a good little thing i'd like to close with here i hope spencer will join back in <clears throat> this is something i'd like to close with we're going to close now with a selected reading from Long Life in Florida, which also goes by the name Live Longer and uh, man, Parts of Man's Higher Consciousness, they're kind of interchangeable, by Hilton Hotema, who is really named George Clement, okay? This is titled Empire of the Sun by Hang on. This is by T.J. Brooks, the Assistant Commissioner of Agriculture for the State of Florida. And this comes out of Long Life in Florida by Hilton Hotema. And we'll close with this. Why is Florida destined to rise to greater heights than any other state of this nation? Because she has the same isothermal zone as did ancient Thebes and Luxor when they flourished in the valley of the Mystic Nile the same as that of Babylonia, the Magnificent, with her hanging gardens on the banks of the Euphrates when she ruled a continent, the same as that of Jerusalem, the holy city of Palestine, with its fabulous wealth and templed shrines when Solomon reigned in all his glory, the same as that of Athens when she was the intellectual capital of the world and crowned with architectural splendor the hills of classic Greece, the same as that of Carthage when she disputed the sovereignty of the world with imperial Rome. The same as that of Naples, nestling between Mount Vesuvius topped with Delphic flames and her beautiful bay of which the poet said, with dreamful eyes my spirit lies beneath the walls of paradise. Florida, where millions of fruit trees are bowed with golden globes and ruddy moons and graped and grapevines stagger with their own purple clusters, where gardens furnish the tables of a nation with bounties of fresh food 
when frost locks the northern soils in ice. Florida, where palm trees bend to the ocean breeze and inland jungles show the same primeval, primeval forests, with flowing beards and druids of old, the same as they did when De Leon and De Soto penetrated them in vain pursuit of gold and of the fabled fountain of youth. Florida, the sun parlor of a continent, the playground of the world, the empire of the sun. The tourist's bivouac, the sportsman's paradise, the birthplace of a nation, the citizen's choice of all lands. T.J. Brooks, probably around the 1950s, he probably said that, around there. That sums it up, doesn't it? That's, I could not put it better any other way. And that's why I always choose to recite this rather than come up with something like it, because this guy put it as good as you can, you know. Seth, in closing. Thank you, brother. And uh, yeah, Florida's been good to me, and Old World Florida's been really good to me, and uh, my brain's a little fried, man. We've been doing this for almost five hours. I don't even know what to say other than I love all all the people listening, and um, I hope you get some good good uh, organic salts in you. No, see, I, I'm my brain's just dribbling out right now, so I'm just gonna say thank you and good night. That's okay. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, I've got plenty in the tank, and nice. Mr. Mr. Boston, I'll I'm gonna put the link out here. And I'll be waiting around for a couple minutes if you'd like to call in. Henry, Shagler, and Spencer and Juan, thank you guys for joining in. Go check out Seth. Go follow his channel. Buy his book. You can buy his book at the Dancing Elephant Bookstore. Here we got Spencer in for the last Shagler. goodbye. Channel buy his book. You can buy his book at the Dancing Elephant Bookstore. Yo, here we got Spencer in for the last Shagler. goodbye. Channel you got to mute the. Book. Buy his book at the Dancing Elephant Bookstore. Oh, yo. There it goes. Nice. Thanks for joining, rejoining us. We we're just closing it down. I don't know if you heard. I listened to it. It's beautiful. I love that piece, man. Agreed. Um, go check out Spencer, Spencer from Florida, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere else. Seth Balin. Go check him out, The Fruit Companion. And thank you guys for joining. Thanks for putting up with me and my triggered vegan rants and my <laughs> my estrogen fueled uh, crisis you know just kidding guys oh, I'm doing just fine hormonally and actually most of you gym people probably have more estrogen than me i know i do topic for another time um yeah thank you guys for real thanks for standing by me in my uh great conquests against my own viewers <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hey you're just getting started buddy no no seriously man um, yeah. I, guys just for this so the chat knows the goal i mean with seth on here tonight for me just so everybody knows i'm working on really big projects and really big deals for florida agriculture and farms and fruit i know these boys have talked about literal living fruit fresh from farm I've made more deals bigger, way bigger than anything I've ever done in my life in the last couple of weeks. And we're going to be doing a lot to make sure that you guys get freaking real permaculture food. It doesn't matter. We want fresh food and I'm doing a massive freeze dry project for myself because I don't want to be rescreening pool cages the rest of my life. And I want to actually spend more time with viewers and listeners because I've been asked many times and I want to help Longo you know, in, t when, in times when his cats get UTIs and things like that. So we're going to start moving fruit in Florida, which is what we're all meant to do. So get ready. Give me a couple months, guys, and we'll have a big yep. launch night. It'll be awesome. Yep. Super pumped. All right, guys, we're going to take a little intermission here. Right we're on. Take an intermission, and then uh, we'll start up with just me and Mr. Boston. You know, right one-on-one on. On, one on one bout, but Seth... Spence, thank you guys. Happy good birthday, night. Florida. Good night. Have a good night. All right. See you, boys. Great time. And chat. Electric. Love it. Agreed. All right. Now for the real, now for the main event. Wasn't that boring, right?
Finally, those guys are gone. Uh, Mr. Boston, please file in. Uh-oh. <laughs> this better be him. <laughs> Gallon. Oh, hey, what's up? Is that Mr. Boston? Um, I'm not seeing him. <laughs> That's not you. It isn't. Why'd you call in, bro? I just clicked on the link. <laughs> I th I think Sorry, man. You. Come on, Mr. Boston, show your face. We all know it's you. <laughs> Flip the light on. Where is he? Just kidding. For real, though, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Sorry, Callan. Please call in on a Thursday sometime. We'd love to chat. No worries, man. I will. Peace Have a good night. Thank you. I appreciate the initiative of of going in uninvited. Thank you. The link is public, but only call in if you are Mr. Boston. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Go pee real quick. I've been standing for like five hours. All right. Be right back. What's up, guys? Just uh, came back from the bathroom. One of the longest pees I've ever taken, probably. <clears throat> I mean, it was a lot of pee. It there was so you know uh, there was so much pee that uh, you know Mr. Boston's mom couldn't even keep it all in her mouth. You know we were trying to, but it was just too much. So. <laughs> Mr. Boston, please come call in. Um, stand by, you know, come stick up for what you said. If you're going to tarnish, try and tarnish people's reputations. Come call in. Come call in and let's see how evil defending Alistair Crowley makes you. Right? You know, that's what a dumb assumption. What a dumb sequencing of this idea to that idea. Come on, right? So you say that I don't know God because I love Aleister Crowley. I don't know if I love him. I defended him. I defended him like any honorable man would do when someone's being spoken poorly about behind their back, behind their dead back, okay? Someone who's taught me a lot, a lot, a lot. Someone who told and instructed, gave away everything he knew for free. Uh, yoga, astrology, by the way, were the two things that earned him his title of evil. Way before he ever, you know, stole anyone's wife or started any cult up in the mountains of Italy. Almost anything bad you hear about him is slander from people who are jealous, people that he humiliated, took their girlfriend from them. Yeah, he had multiple partners. I don't condone that. There's tons of things Crowley did that I would never do, that I would never tell anyone to do. But guess what? The same could be said for a 
ton of rock stars whose music I enjoy. You know, a ton of even public speakers, political figures. You don't like everything behind closed doors, okay? And this is a le this is lecturing that a kindergartner should know. You know, Mr. Boston, I'm assuming you're like 10 years older than me, I'd assume, based on your boomer outlook on things. Uh, come call in, rectify the situation yourself, or run away and act like the coward that you labeled me to be. Come call in. Come stand by your ideas. Come stand up for your ideas. Okay? I'm here. I show my face. I talk. And by the way, this is fun. I wish you could take my heart, my blood pressure, okay? Chill as a cucumber. This is fun for me. I would like for you to call in, so that this is so this is very pretentious. I don't like talking to myself in the camera. Come call in so I can talk to you. Oh, look at this. I don't want to talk. I offer to, f to fight in real life. Wow. Okay. So, you don't want to stand by your ideas. You don't want to stick up for your ideas. You don't want to talk to me. You want to fight? Go fight some loser at the gas station. And by the way, I might win that fight, by the way. I might win that fight. I'm six foot two. I might be skinny, but I can run farther than you. I can do more push-ups than you. And I might win that fight. Guess what? You stand a lot to lose in that fight. If you're big and muscular and you like your meat, you stand a lot to lose in that fight. Even if I lose that fight. Even if I lose that fight. It would be because you're bigger, you're stronger, perhaps. Okay? But if you lost, if you lost, you know how humiliating that would be? Yeah. Okay, so you stand a lot to lose from this fight, by the way. Whereas you could just come in, call in, stick up for what you said originally. Not challenge to a physical fight like some dumb brute. Yeah, you're as dumb as a gorilla, as far as I'm concerned. Come call in, put a face to your accusations. And for real though, I'm not going to spend more than a couple minutes. I know how bad this, you know, this is not fun. But come call in. It's probably because he's so ugly that, you know, ugly people, people don't listen to them. People don't value what they have to say. Usually God makes dumb people ugly. Usually ugly people are dumb. That's just how God works. Okay? I'd wager that you're probably both, which is why you don't want to show your face and would rather, what, sneak up behind me in a Boston alleyway? Okay. Real smart. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay, so you're still in the chat room like a little girl. Okay. Can you imagine being a full grown man and not going into a chat room with a skinny hippie that you insulted? The only reason someone wouldn't join this chat room, assuming they meant what they said, is that they're overweight or ugly. I guarantee you, Mr. Boston's one of those two, if not both, and we can probably assume he's super low IQ on top of that. My IQ? Mensa. Mensa IQ. Okay? Now, you're not going to see that, right? But you can tell that by talking to me, okay? And we'll see how smart you might be if we can talk to you. If you don't f come into the room, no one will ever know how smart you are. We'll just be forced to assume you're a coward with empty, meaningless words who's triggered by someone who knows way more than you about a lot of things. And I'm just talking about Crowley, not me. Crowley knows a lot more about you, about everything, about God. He was a mountain climber. You're just weak and pathetic and triggered by someone who won at life, as far as I'm concerned. Climbed, I love this, climbed many mountains, bedded many beautiful women, powerful women. Yeah, you're just sitting there in an old world Florida chat room on your 
computer keys. Your mom birthed you into existence so that you could wake up, you know, live your life, and then file into an old world Florida chat room and watch for five hours? I think I won. I think I've won. I think I've said everything. Even if everything I said was pretentious and obnoxious and very teenagery of me, which it may have been, I've still won. I've still won empirically, okay? You're watching my videos like a groupie and you're, you're disagreeing with the things I say out loud through your computer. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna go, you know, hug my beautiful girlfriend, Mr. Boston. I hope I see you next time. I hope you're here next time. Tell your mom she's a one hell of a champ for getting down all that, all that, uh, piss. <laughs> I don't know, I think I should make a few more Mr. Boston's mom drinking piss jokes. I think he liked that one. <laughs> and you know, you can say you don't like me, you can say you don't disagree with me, you can say, you know, you say, you know, I'm skinny or I'm wrong about veganism or the, this and that, you know, this and that. But I stand up here and I show my face. Everything I say, everyone knows whose mouth it came out of, right? Everyone knows where to find me, just about. If you, if you, not that hard to figure out where I am at any given time, literally. So I don't have much to run from, hide from, anything. What you see is what you get. And me at 150 pounds on a good day, you know, a thin hippie, taking my morning runs on the, on the beach every once in a while, I think I might still put my money on me in a physical altercation with you. And should I have to defend myself in a self-defense scenario? I think it might be a piece of cake, right? Judging by how you won't come into the chat room, I don't think you'd be much to dispense with, okay? All right, and I have an ego. Oh yeah, I got an ego. And I'm pretty pretentious, but I show my face, I stand by what I say, and I'm extending the offer to you. If it comes down to a back alley brawl in Boston, it just might. But how about you file in now? Whatever. He's still in. Where's the link? Now you want the link? The link has been up for 20 minutes. I'm going to post the link. But don't play any mind games with me. You know, beep. Fucking get in. I thought I was about to go to sleep. Okay. Make sure you have Google Chrome. Let's go right here. We'll duke it out in the bookstore. I'll go. I'll go read some Crowley. I'm gonna read some Crowley in the meantime while we're waiting for for uh, for Mr. Boston to pump his mom's stomach out of all that piss she just drank. Jesus. I'm somewhat of a urine therapy guru myself, you know. I don't. I, you know. <laughs> Are you actually coming in, dude? You're just flexing for the chat. Mr. Boston's mom has been getting that secondhand orange juice for years now. Okay, years. 
In fact, if she had been on my urine, urine therapy, <laughs> if she had been on my urine therapy regimen in the years leading up to Mr. Boston being born, he probably wouldn't be so goddamn ugly and stupid. So one more time, if Mr. Boston's mom had been on my urine therapy re regimen before he were born, he probably wouldn't have been born so stupid, ugly, triggerable, low IQ, choosing to live in Boston. And, you know, people don't get me triggered. I would choose to do this with my time. I, you know, ask anyone that knows me, I am like, you know, and by the way, I actually am a fighter, by the way, I'll scrap, I'll duke it out. I've never lost a fight. Okay. So I'm thin. Yeah. But if you're larger than me and you lost a fight to me, which is a good chance you would, that would be pretty embarrassing. Wouldn't it be? Okay, the link's been posted for five minutes. At this point, I think Mr. Boston's just trying to get me to stay up too late. Okay? I sleep like a baby every night, by the way. All right, Mr. Boston's not coming in, I'm going to assume. The link's been posted for minutes. He's not coming in. He's just trying to rob me of my precious sleep. I sleep very little, by the way. Whatever. All right. Good night, everyone. 300. I can't believe there's 360 people that are still here. Still. You tried to join. That is such horse shit, Mr. Boston. You didn't try to join. Yeah, I haven't seen you. When people try to join. No, no, no. It wasn't muted. No, no, no. You're lying. You're lying. When people try to join in, they pop up in my screen, and then you put them in to the chat. And if they're muted or if there's something wrong, they don't. They still show up. It just says, device is not selected, or something like that. You didn't file in. You're a liar. I didn't know if you're a lying or a truth-telling person before this, but now we know you're a liar, as on top of the dumb, slow, Stupid. Probably shorter than me because you haven't remarked on, on being taller than me. Probably whatever. For real though, dude, you weren't muted. You didn't even come in, so you weren't muted. That's a lie. Don't be a little girl. Little girls lie. I'm going to go to sleep. How about you call in on Thursday if you actually intend on calling in? I'm going to... The link's still there, dipshit. The link's still there. It's still up there. And yes, I talk to people like this in real person. This is not just a screen persona. All right, whatever. If there's 300 of you that are still watching, thank you. You know, I, I'm glad you guys are down with Old World Florida enough to, you know, sit through 10 minutes of just like this garbage, but. I do care, and if someone challenges me, I want to meet that challenge. I don't just sit, okay? Mr. Boston challenged me, slandered me. I'm inviting him, he's not coming in, he's lying. You're saying you joined the chat room? You didn't join the chat. You're typing in the chat room, how are you joining? Yeah, scared of showing his face. The link is up, the link is up. Are you stupid? The link is up. It's on the screen, obviously. Whatever, dude. You lied. You didn't join the chat room. The link's been up the whole time. You weren't muted. It's on the screen. What do you mean, where? It's on the screen. Whatever. Call in on Thursday, please. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to go enjoy my night. Everyone have a good night. Thank you, guys. Okay? Never claim to be the most humble or the most cool-headed, okay? Th that's just what you get with the package. That's who I am. 
Um, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. Get Google Chrome and join the link. You're, you're such a, what do you mean there's no link? It says, come on, my dude, then the link. The StreamYard link is right there. Call in on Thursday. I go live almost every Thursday, or try to. Call in on Thursday. I'm going to sleep. Long live Florida. Long live Atlantis. You know, does it surprise me that goblins in fucking Boston are bothered by what I say? No. The Northeast is filled with little goblins like Mr. Boston. Little goblins with piss-drinking moms like, like uh, Mr. Boston. That's what the Northeast is filled with. So... <clears throat> Everyone have a good night. Thank you out there. Mr. Boston, you're just tripping, dude. No one buys the no one buys the the ruse that you're going with. Where's the link, bro? Put it in the chat. It's in the chat. It's on the screen. It, I put it in the chat 10 times. You're so dumb. It's pissing me off. Hey, Alex, join the chat. I see Alex Landry, my my buddy. Join the chat. Call in the chat. Someone else call in the chat so you can see how easy it is to call in. Anyone click on the link. Anyone out there, please copy the link off the screen and call in. And I'll put you in and so we can prove how dumb and slow Mr. Boston is. <sighs> Anyone, that guy, okay, that guy just called in. Remember the guy who came in was wasn't supposed to call in? He called in and I threw him in right away. He entered the, the room and I threw him in right away. Look at this. I just told Alex to join and Alex is in 30 seconds later. I threw him in right away. He entered the... Thank you, Alex, to prove my point. My buddy. Good seeing you, man. I'll come on your uh, podcast sometime soon. Good seeing you, man. I, I just got back in like two minutes ago, so I'm sorry about this unnecessary drama or whatever was going on that's ridiculous. no it's it's not a it's not unnecessary i'm i'm stirring it up it's all me it's intentional you know but, oh. yeah. cool beans then enjoy your sleep and um yeah look forward to scheduling that interview <laughs> thanks alex right. Peace, bro. good night man you too bye the link's right there dude he clicked on it. He's in. I mean, come on. Alex just joined in in a sec. You can join in in a sec. Okay. The guy who joined in, and I didn't even know who he was, I put him in the chat room immediately, thinking he was you. All right. Have a good night. There's no one in the... There's no one filing in. I can see it. You're not here. You're not trying to get in. What do you mean you can't? Click it. Type it in. Type in and what do you need? A, a fucking, you know, like linked link that just you click and you're in? You know, just copy and paste it and put it in. I, dude, I've put the link in the chat so many times. If I put the link in the chat, you do realize it's the same sentence that's right there. Okay, call in on Thursday. I'm going to go to go to sleep. Mr. Boston, please call in on a Thursday sometimes. Stick up for your accusations. You're just wrong. You're just wrong. All right, have a good night, everyone. Long live Florida. Long live Atlantis. Thank you guys, 350 people. Love you guys, appreciate you. Have a good night. Let's pray for Mr. Boston. Let's pray that his penis uh, goes back outside of his body because it's been retracted into his body out of terror, out of fright. Ever, ever since I named him by name in this live stream, his little wiener retracted into his body. Okay, so let's pray to God that he gets some help on that issue. Okay, let's pray to God that he wakes up and, you know, calms his heart. And doesn't cast judgment on people for no reason. Yeah. Do I know how Atlantis fell? Yeah. Pride. Pride. Mr. Boston. All right. Come call in on Thursday.
Corruption and worship of wealth. Wow. What a wise sage you are. Such a tragedy that such a beautiful mind is attached to such a disgusting, feeble, you know, pruned, ugly, just shell, body. If you're not even filling in, I'd love to see what you look like. I'd wager that Mr. Boston's still in the chair room. He hasn't joined in. But I would wager that Mr. Boston, even when he joins, even if he joins next Thursday, will not show his face. That's a bet that I, that I will... Uh... All right. For real, though, I've got to go to sleep. You guys... Come call in on Thursday. Put the link in the chat. The next link will be out. I'll put the next link out days in advance, okay? I'm going to sleep. You guys have a good night. I sat here and I waited for you. 20 minutes. You're saying drop the link? I just dropped the link, and you're you're joking. You're just baiting me. You're saying, oh, I'm trying to get in. I'm trying to get in, but I can't get in. That's BS. I'm sitting here. I'm watching. You have not filed in. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you.